It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1, Prologue, On My Way Home, I was transferred to another world when I was a kid. My dream was to be a firefighter. The reason was simple. I saw a documentary on TV about firefighters. I thought it was cool to rescue people from buildings that were on fire. However, that was just the admiration of a child who was ignorant of reality. As we grow up, we learn about the other aspects of these heroic jobs, and after considering our own aptitude, it is not unusual for us to stray from our dreams. In fact, that's probably normal. I, Kukauzaka, was one of those ordinary people. Now, at the age of 29, I have become a common salaryman. I've been working for an IT company, and there have been a lot of flare-ups. For example, the design of a system was delayed, the person in charge of the project disappeared, or there was a problem with the person in charge of the customer side. A firefighting unit existed within the company as well, which specialized in putting out fires and I was a member of it. It was the so-called fire extinguisher. I felt a great sense of accomplishment when I somehow managed to solve a problem, and it was not a bad feeling to be thanked and praised by the people around me. But at the same time, I felt frustrated at the fact that we were always on the back foot when it came to problems. The rescue team would be sent in only after the project had gone up in flames, but the damage would be much less if we could make a preemptive move at the early stages of the problem. However, the world does not work that way. While you're trying to kill one fire, another one pops up. As a result, we are always on the back foot. Doesn't our company have too many flaming projects? It's going to explode and blow up the whole company. Wouldn't it be better if we really blew up? Oops, I accidentally said it out loud. I was on the last train of the day after a late night at work, and I hurriedly looked around but there was no one else in the same train compartment. Thank goodness. I didn't want anyone to think I was crazy if they accidentally heard me. I guess I'm tired. Ever since I started working, I've been spending my days going back and forth between home and work. It would be better if the salary were higher, but unfortunately, it was a black company. I'm just being used up at a very low salary. My hobby was gaming but I was so busy that I couldn't even play app games on my smartphone these days. In the meantime, I was being left behind by the latest trends, and checking out the new releases had become a chore. It was a long time ago. I used to go around app stores and news sites looking for interesting games, but now I don't have the energy to do so. I guess it's because of my busy work schedule and my age. I'll be 30 next year and I've become an old man. I missed my school days when I used to stay up all night playing games. If I could go back to those days, I would love to. While I was thinking about this, I was falling into a deep sleep on the last train. Where am I? The next thing I knew, I was floating in darkness. I had been on a train a while ago, but what the hell happened? As I tilted my head, a semi-transparent screen suddenly appeared in front of me. It looked like a message window from a video game and there was a text on it. You will now be summoned to another world. Please choose your desired job from the following options. Hero, a warrior with a great destiny. Demon King, a dark ruler who paints everything in his desire. Sage, a magician who overwhelms everything with his extraordinary magical power. It's a strange question, I thought, as I considered each option. A hero? I don't feel like I can fulfill my great destiny. No thanks to such a nuisance. Demon King? Being a king sounds like a pain in the ass, and I'll probably just be defeated by a hero. It's a death flag, no matter how you look at it. A sage? No, I'm not smart enough. If I were smart, I wouldn't have gotten a job at a black company. In conclusion, I don't think I want to be any of the choices. Is it possible to choose none of them? As I muttered this, the message window disappeared and a new window appeared. The hidden option for choose none of them has been selected. Congratulations. You've found the hidden choice, and you'll be given a non-standard ability. Dot huh? Hidden choice? Non-standard ability. As I was puzzled by the unexpected turn of events, the next message appeared. You will now be transferred to a different world. May the blessings of the gods and spirits be upon you. At the same time, there was a big change in the scenery around me. The darkness suddenly cleared up and I saw that I was in a forest. Chapter 1, I got a cheat skill in the different world. Before I realized it, I was standing in an unfamiliar forest. The forest had a warm atmosphere, with the sunlight peeking through the trees. In the distance, 
I hear birds chirping. What's going on here? I couldn't grasp the situation at all. Where did the train I was on disappear to? The tracks were supposed to have gone right through the middle of the city, so why was I suddenly warped into the forest? The first answer that came to mind was that I was dreaming, but everything was too real, from the leaves swaying in the wind to the smell of the greenery that tickled my nose. Dot is this really a different world? It was hard for me to believe but I checked my appearance. I was still dressed in my suit. But to my surprise, the contents of my pockets were all gone. My smartphone, wallet, keys, handkerchief, tissues. Nothing was left. I suppose it's better that I still have my clothes, but I couldn't help but feel a bit discouraged. I wondered if any of them had fallen somewhere. As I looked around, something unexpected suddenly popped into my vision. It was a status window, just like in RPGs. It shows my name age, gender, race, level, HP, MP, and skills. Level 1, HP 50, MP 1, O O O, and a total of 8 skills, transmigrator, full assist, creation, dexterity, artisan's divine eye, item box, dismantle, and, appraisal. The MP is unusually high compared to the HP, and the number of skills is also incredibly high. Could it be that this is from the aforementioned non-standard ability? As I looked at the status window, a new window appeared near MP. MP, this is a numerical value of Kakazaka's magic power. This is a relative value where 100 is the magic power of an ordinary magician. 1% of the maximum value is recovered per second. Just next to the MP, when I looked at their, transmigrator, in the skill list. Another window appeared. Transmigrator, rank 99, a special skill possessed by those who have transferred from another world. In addition to significantly improved physical ability, mental strength, intuition, and growth potential, it also grants knowledge of the language of this world. The rank is determined by the difficulty of the original world. The higher the value, the greater the compensation. The maximum value is 99. I read the description of the MP and there transmigrator, over and over again, amount of magic power, magician, another world, transmigrator, previous world. I guessed from these phrases that I had really come to another world. Isn't this some kind of imaginary fiction? Well, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't happy, and my excitement and anticipation were much greater than my anxiety. This is the first time in a long time that I've felt my heart dance with joy, and I read the descriptions of the other skills. Full assist. A skill that assists the user in various aspects of their otherworldly life. Thanks to, full assist, my status and other information are displayed in a window. It seems to be in an RPG-like format to make it easier for me to understand. It also seems to translate the language of this world into Japanese automatically. After reading through all the explanations about, creation, dexterity, artisan's divine eye, item box, dismantling, and, appraisal. Another window appeared. Do you want to activate, full assist, and perform a fast installation of your skills? This will allow you to handle the skills freely. The answer was, of course, yes. I nod, and the window disappears in the flash. A few seconds later, I felt something flow into the back of my head. It was only for a moment, but before long, I realized that I naturally understood the characteristics and usage of each skill. It was as if a new application had been added to my brain. Installation is complete. Thank you for your time. Apparently, the installation was completed successfully. Now that the skills are available, let's do an experiment. First of all, let's try item box. This is a skill that allows you to store items in a subspace, and the size of the subspace depends on your skill rank. In my case, it's rank X, and the capacity is unlimited. It seems that in order to store things, it is necessary to touch the object. Let's try the tree there for now. I reached out to a nearby tree and thought of storage. Immediately after, a circle of light with a radius of about one meter appeared around my feet. Inside the circle was a pattern that looked like a magic circle, a combination of circles and triangles. It glowed with a golden glow. At the next moment, the tree I was touching was enveloped in light and sucked into the magic circle. It had only been a split second so far. The magic circle disappears, and a new window appears to replace it. The window lists the contents of the, item box, and at the top, it says Haikino Tree X1. It must be the tree I just stored. It's not Ingoki, Japanese Cypress, but Haikino, 
which is slightly confusing. Regardless, let's try another skill. The next one is, Dismantle. This is a skill that dismantles the carcasses of monsters so that they can be used as materials or food. It seems that it can also be used on the Hykino tree. When I used it, the Hykino tree turned into five pieces of Hykino wood. Now, for me personally, the skill that comes after this is the real deal. Creation. Speaking of what kind of effect it has, the description goes like this. Creation. Rank 1. The power of the god of creation resides in Kakauzaka as a skill. This is the highest level of production skill. It consumes materials and creates new items. Items created with this skill are given special effects and have a much higher quality than normal. The higher the skill rank, the wider the range of items you can create. The phrase the power of the god of creation tickles my chayuni heart, and I have a feeling that some amazing items will be created. I'm looking forward to it. Now. The Hykino wood that I just stored in there, item box, seems to be able to be used as a material for, creation. In a new window, the recipe for, creation, was displayed. Hykino wood x1 Hykino stick x5. It wasn't doing oki, Japanese cypress, stick. It was a Hykino stick. It's a slightly familiar phrase, but let's make it anyway. Creation. I didn't need to say it out loud. But I was shouting it with all my energy. Although I wasn't really aware of it, I might have been getting excited. When I checked the item box, I found that the Hykino wood had disappeared, and five Hykino sticks had been added in its place. Hykino stick, a stick made from Hykino wood. Hykino wood is sturdy and flame resistant, and its characteristics are further enhanced by the effect it gives. Granted effect. Durability and combustible S+. I've created an item that seems to be an excellent construction material. As I was thinking about this, another message window appeared. Due to skill experience acquisition, creation, is now rank 2. The recipe will be increased. Oops, it seems that my skill rank has been increased. I think it's a little too easy. But I'm honestly happy that the number of recipes has increased. But still, a lot of windows have been opening and closing since a while ago, but as expected, they're getting in the way of my vision. I wondered if I could do something about it. When this time, a voice echoed in my head. It was an inorganic, clear, announcement-like tone of voice. Switching from window mode to image mode. What is image mode? As I tilted my head, all the windows that were open until then disappeared at once. Instead. The same image appeared in my mind. It's a strange sensation, but it's probably more convenient because it doesn't block my view. Oh, I remember there are more recipes for, creation. As if in conjunction with my thoughts, a new window opened in my mind. Hykino wood x1 Hykino wooden axe x1. When I executed it, I found a Hykino wooden axe had been added to the, item box. It looked like a weapon, but I wondered what its performance would be like. This is where the, appraisal comes in handy. It will tell you the general information about any given item or monster. Hykino wooden axe, a sharp wooden axe cut by a skilled woodworker. Its sharpness is close to that of a metal axe. Granted effect, throwing critical A plus hit correction S plus T slash N, on the Hykino wooden axe description, it's actually written only as Hykino tree, comma but I just probably change it to Hykino wooden axe to avoid confusion. Oh. It looks kind of strong. Based on the granted effects, it seems that throwing it is the right way to use it. Let's give it a try. In my mind, I open the list of, item box. When I selected the Hykino wooden axe, a small magic circle appeared around my right hand side. This is connected to the subspace of the, item box. I took out the Hykino wooden axe from the magic circle. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2021 slash 09 slash 000024.jpg. It was the first time I had ever held a weapon that was actually a weapon, so I was at a loss as to how to handle it. This is where the, dexterity, skill comes in. This is a skill that allows you to use any item at will. When I activated it, I felt a strange sensation. The wooden axe in my right hand fits perfectly as if it were an extension of my body. I intuitively knew what I needed to do with the wooden axe. I set my sights on a large rock some distance away and threw the wooden axe. Ha ha. The wooden axe spun around and hit the rock, making a loud sound. The result was astonishing. 
The rock was split in half in both directions. The wooden axe stands on the ground beyond it. Dot, isn't it strange that a tree can split a rock? It's unthinkable from an earthling common sense. But if I had to give a reason, it would be because of the granted effect. Throwing critical A+. Plus. This is a different world, and there may be laws at work here different than on Earth. So, what should I do now? From a safety and information gathering aspect, I think I should look for a human village. However, there are RPG-like statuses and skills in this world, and it would not be surprising if there were RPG-like monsters. What if I run into a powerful monster? The Haikino wooden axe is powerful. But it's dangerous to be overconfident. Dot let's raise their creation. Rank a bit more here and get some more equipment. Creation, creation, creation. And so I use the Hykena trees that grew in the surrounding area as materials and continued to gain experience for creation. As a result of my efforts, it's already reached rank 5. Is it possible to rank up any further? I muttered to myself as I gazed at the surroundings. Where the view had completely cleared up. Thanks to the various tests I've tried, I have a reasonable understanding of creation. The following is a brief summary. First, experience values are gained only when you use a new recipe for creation. Second, when the experience value reaches a certain value, the rank will be upgraded. Third, no experience will be gained by repeating an existing recipe over and over again. Currently, there are eight recipes that use the Hykena tree as the material. In addition to the Hykena stick and wooden axe, there are also wooden swords, wooden spears, wooden hammers, tableware set, table, and chair. Each of these had strong effects, such as slash enhancement S plus or stun enhancement S. Incidentally, stun enhancement S is an effect granted to Hykena's chair. Why, of all things, would a chair have a stun effect? Another world is scary. Dot it's time to move on. The sun was still high in the sky, but night will eventually come. I wanted to avoid camping out in the open, and if possible, I wanted to make it to the village. While the sun was still up, I made my way through the forest, brushing aside the grass that grew all around me. I didn't know the exact time because my smartphone had disappeared somewhere, but I'd probably been walking for about an hour. Normally I'd have been eager to rest, but somehow I didn't feel tired at all. It made the walk more enjoyable and I had more time to appreciate the scenery around me. This is the power of the minor science of the forest. This was a joke, but I'm sure it was because my physical abilities had been boosted by their transmigrator skill. In addition to that, my five senses were also sharpened, my vision was very clear, and my ears were also clear. I thought I heard someone's voice and stopped. I focused my ears in the direction of the voice and concentrated my attention. However, this time, I heard a man scream more clearly. I couldn't understand what was going on, but I was sure that there was a person in there. Let's go check it out. I had a feeling it was going to be dangerous, but it was better than wandering around the forest with no idea what to do. I took out the Hykena wooden axe in case something attacked me. This is because it is possible to attack from a distance with the granted effects of throwing critical A plus and correction S plus. With the axe at the ready, I walked in the direction of the voice and eventually, the forest cleared, and my vision opened up. It was a meadow, about 20 meters away from the forest I was standing in. There was a road running through it, and a wagon was being attacked by a monster. It was a giant bear, and from the neck down, it was covered with an armor-like object. D don't come. Get away from me. There was a small, fat man holding a sword with his back to the wagon, probably trying to protect his cargo. Swords and shields were lying on the ground around him, and in the distance, I could see three men running away in a panic. All of them were wearing light armor. They were probably the bodyguards of the wagon. I activated, appraisal, on the bear. Then the following information flowed into my head. Armored bear, a bear-shaped monster with a steel-like outer body. It craves combat. It craves combat. It's a dangerous bear. Hey, that person clinging to the cargo might be the owner of the wagon. Judging from his merchant-like attire, he was holding a sword but his stance was clumsy. It was apparent that he was not used to fighting. Fortunately, the bear was preoccupied with the merchant and didn't notice me at all. If I wanted to escape, now was my chance. Realistically speaking, I should probably get out of here as quickly as possible. However, I have a lot of cheat items in my hand. If I use them, 
I might be able to help the merchant. Dot abandoning him here would leave a bad aftertaste. I gripped the Hykena wood next tightly. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 2 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 2 I made an acquaintance with a wealthy merchant. I used to admire firefighters. More specifically, they looked like heroes when I saw firefighters rescuing people from buildings that were on fire, and I wanted to be one. Although I have given up on that dream, I want to be the kind of person who can reach out to someone in need, and if there is someone I can help, I want to help them. The armored bear roared loudly and was about to jump at the merchant. Watch out. I immediately ran out and activated my dexterity skill. At that moment, I was transformed into a skilled axe user. As I ran, I swung the Hykena wooden axe and threw it sideways. The wooden axe flew like a boomerang, spinning at high speed, and chopped off the head of the armored bear that was bearing its fangs at the merchant from the side. The armored bear's head falls to the ground. Its body stood there, spurting blood like a fountain from the cut surface, and then it collapsed with a thud. Immediately after, I hear a voice in my head. By acquiring this experience, you are now level 8. Your HP and MP have been increased, and your physical abilities have improved. I was originally level 1, but this was a sudden increase. Could it be that the armored bear was actually a boss class monster in the RPG sense? My HP had risen from 50 to 120, and my MP from 1000 to 1700. The amount of increase in MP is outrageous so I'd like to learn some magic at some point. Now, the armored bear was completely dead, its neck and body were cleanly separated. The merchant was puzzled by the sudden turn of events, but when he eventually noticed my presence, he bowed his head and sat down, slumped over. He must have lost his nerve after being freed from his fear. I rushed over to the merchant and extended my hand to him. Are you okay? Why yes. Thank you for saving me from that dangerous situation. You saved my life. The merchant staggered to his feet and thanked me. I'm embarrassed to be called a lifesaver, but it's not bad to be thanked. After a few words of gratitude, the merchant introduced himself. I would like to thank you for your help. My name is Chrome. And as you can see, I am a merchant. My name is Ku. Um, you um, how should I introduce myself? Would it be okay if I honestly said that I came from another world? If possible, I would like him to lead me to a human village, so I don't want to be misunderstood as a crazy person. When I turned my gaze away in trouble, I saw a wooden axe lying on the ground. The blade was wet with blood from chopping off the head of the armored bear. I picked up the blood-stained wooden axe, held up armored bear's head and introduced myself as follows. As you can see, I'm a woodworker. No, good grief, you don't look like a craftsman at all. Unfortunately, this was a natural reaction. I want to ask myself, what kind of freaky murderer would use a blood-stained wooden axe? Well, does that mean that the wooden axe was made by Kusama himself? Oh, yes. That's right. That is exactly right. I nodded hurriedly and went along with Chrome's words as best I could. If he thinks I'm suspicious, I'm screwed. It's made of wood, but it's incredibly powerful, isn't it? I didn't think it was possible to defeat an armored bear with a single blow. Is an armored bear a powerful monster? Oh my. Don't you know that, Kusama? That being said, I'm new to this world. I lack all kinds of common sense. The armored bear is an A-ranked monster. Once it starts rampaging, it can destroy a small village in just a matter of a night. Even if you try to kill it, its body is as hard as armor and cannot be damaged by ordinary attacks. However, I managed to decapitate the armored bear with ease. The reason why I was able to do this was probably because of the throwing critical A plus that was granted to the Hykino wooden axe. It's truly a one hit kill, a critical hit. It seems like I've accomplished something pretty amazing. Yes, I think you could say that. Anyway, the sun is going to set if we keep talking here. I have a mansion in the city of Un just up the road and I'd like to invite you there now if you'd like. I owe you a debt of gratitude for saving my life. So I was taken to the city by Chrome San. The best way to get around the city is to use wagons, but it seems that when the armored bear attacked, not only the guards but also the coachman and horses escaped. It can't be helped in this situation. Let's walk. Are you sure you don't want to bring the wagon? Leaving the goods behind is regrettable but there is no way to carry them. Let's just say it's a good thing I survived the armored bear attack. Chrome San left the wagon taking only the minimum amount of luggage. However, he seems to be reluctant to leave the goods behind, 
and his expression is somehow gloomy. I'd love to help him, but... R. Yes, Chrome San, if you want, I could carry them in my item box. Oh, Kusama, you have a very useful skill, don't you? Dot, but isn't that too much luggage? And won't it be caught by the capacity limit? No problem. I have unlimited capacity. I touched my hand to the luggage and chanted the word storage. In my mind, a magic circle appears on the ground, and the wagon is sucked into it. When I opened the list of the item box, in my mind, I found that Chrome Sans Wagon X1 had been added. It seems to have been stored safely. Oh, he seemed too surprised to speak and repeatedly blinked for a while. Speaking of item box, I heard that the limit capacity is to carry only one table, no matter how high the rank. Who exactly is Kusama? Well, I'm just an ordinary woodworker. Maybe. If defeating an armored bear with a single blow or having an unlimited capacity, item box, is normal, then the world must be ruled by woodworkers. I see. It seems that my abilities are quite out of the ordinary. Dot I'd like to understand a little more about the common sense of this world. After collecting the corpse of the armored bear and the Haikino wooden axe in their item box, I spoke to Chrome San again. I've been training in the mountains for a long time. That's why I don't know anything about the common sense of the world. Oh, I see. Chrome San nodded as if he was convinced. Apparently, he believed me. Okay, for the time being. I'm going to try to gather information under the guise that I had been living in the mountains and lacked common sense. I walked down the road with Chrome San, asking him questions about the world. It was a very meaningful time. Every time I get one piece of information, full assist, is automatically activated, and it supplements every detail. For example, when it comes to skills, there are two main types. One is the talent type, it greatly increases your aptitude in a specific field. For example, a person who possesses swordsmanship is skilled in sword fighting, while a person who possesses persuasion is skilled in negotiation. The other is the different ability type. This is a kind of special ability. The best example of this is their item box, which can store items in subspace. These skills are inborn and cannot be acquired. As for the number of skills, the upper limit seems to be one or two per person, or at most three. In my case, I have eight skills which is far beyond the upper limit for most people. You can say that it is truly out of the norm. It's not just my skills that are out of the ordinary. When I checked Chrome Sans status with appraisal, I found that there was no section for level in his status. I asked him why, but he just replied, what do you mean by level? When I was wondering what the heck was going on. Full assist, explained in detail. In this world, the only one that has a level is Kukauzaka. Every time you defeat a monster, you gain experience, and when that amount reaches a certain value, a phenomenon called leveling up occurs. As a result, you will gain benefits such as increased HP and MP and improved physical abilities. For other humans, levels do not exist, and no matter how many monsters they defeat, they cannot expect this sudden growth. So leveling up is a privilege only for me. I might as well aim to become the strongest in the world. Eventually, I could see a city surrounded by walls beyond the road. It was the city of Un that Chrome San had told me about. I wondered if there were elves and beastmen in this fantasy-like world. I'm starting to get a little excited. Just before entering the city of Un, I was told by Chrome San about the escorts he had originally hired. I usually send requests to the Adventurers Guild and hire high-ranked adventurers. They say it's safer along the roads, but you never know what might happen. Apparently. There are adventurer guilds in this world, just like in video games. Their job is to mediate quests such as escorting and collecting. If you complete a quest, you are paid reward. I was wondering what to do, but this time, there happened to be no high-ranking adventurers available, and the mercenary guild approached me. The mercenary guild is also an organization that mediates quests. Originally, it was a single organization called the Adventurers Guild, but apparently, it was split into the Adventurers Guild and the Mercenaries Guild due to infighting in the higher-ups. The two guilds have been battling for market share for years because they both do the same kind of work. I thought this was a good opportunity to ask the Mercenary Guild for an escort, but I didn't expect them to run away in the middle of the mission. Tohoho, 
Kronsan smiled as if troubled. That's a terrible story. I wonder what the mercenaries were thinking. If they are going to leave their client unattended and run away, they should not have taken the quest in the first place. I'm also a little distrustful of the mercenary guild that would give the job to such irresponsible people. Eventually, we arrived at the city gates. There seemed to be some kind of trouble going on, and there was a small crowd of people. I looked over and saw three younger men talking rapidly to the guards. A A armored bear, there's an armored bear. We fought desperately, but our client, Chrome San, got confused and ran into the armored bear. In the end, Chrome San was killed by the armored bear. Dot damn it. Damn it. If only we were good enough. We could have protected Chrome San. The three young men seemed to be the mercenaries that Chrome San had originally hired. In order to cover up the abandonment of the quest, they are probably making a false report. But did they just pretend that Chrome San is dead? If it's Chrome San, he's here now. Oh, Chrome San? The guard who had been listening to the three of them said, What do you mean? Chrome San was supposed to be killed by the armored bear. No, no, I'm alive. His tone was calm but his eyes were not smiling at all. Thanks to Kusama here, who saved me, I survived. A, hey, are you going to turn the conversation to me here? Not only the guards but also the onlookers looked at me, making me feel uncomfortable. H hi, I'm Ku. I'm a woodworker. I killed the armored bear. I took out the armored bear's lifeless head from my item box. They might not believe me if I just say it. So it's better to actually show them the proof. I it looks like you're not lying. The guard's voice was a little trembling. That's probably right. Anyone would be surprised if they were suddenly shown the head of the bear. I may have gone a little overboard, but you say you are a woodworker. Oh, so that's where they got confused. The onlookers in the surroundings were also wondering, how can a mere woodworker defeat an armored bear? Who is that guy? Isn't he a skilled adventurer or mercenary? They whispered to each other. Dot well. It's a big world, you know. There may be such woodworkers in the world. The guard cleared his throat. He then turned to the three young men and said, By the way, according to you, Chrome San is dead. What does that mean? T that's you um uck. The three of them stammered, unable to find an excuse. There was an awkward silence, and then Chrome San spoke up. They did not fight the armored bear. They abandoned me and ran away. I see. So they were lying to hide their abandonment of the quest. The guard glared at the three younger men with a grim expression. Abandoning a life-threatening quest without consent is a very serious crime in this country. Dot I'm sorry, but we're going to have to detain you. The guards called out to his other colleagues and were about to rope the three young men in. But then, ho uh, the most muscular young man of the three suddenly started to act up. He pushed the guard away and pulled out his sword, and slashed at Chrome San. Damn it, it's because I took the jobs from you. Die and pay for it. Wouldn't that be too selfish? He not only abandoned the request but also lined up a light to protect himself, and when it was discovered, he resorted to violence. There was no room for sympathy. I took out the Haikino's chair from my item box. While activating the dexterity skill, I lifted the chair to flip it over and caught the young man's slash with the back of it. Wow, don't get in my way. Let me kill that chrome. No, I refuse. I flicked his sword away with a twisting motion and struck him on the head with the leg of the chair. Ugh. With just that, the young man fainted and fell to the ground powerlessly. Phew. The chair has strengthening A plus and stun enhancement S. But I didn't expect them to be useful here. I looked around calmly and saw that everyone was staring at me. What the hell was going on? Then someone shouted out loud. Not bad, bro. That guy is the B-rank mercenary dox, right? That dox alright. Just because he has their swordsmanship skill, he's always bragging about it. It's nice to see him like that now. That scum dox, it serves him right. From that point on. All hell broke loose. It seemed that the people of this world were very friendly, and they even started to hoist me up in the air. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 3 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 3, I was invited to Chrome Sands Mansion. I had defeated the B-ranked mercenary, Dox, and was being carried off by a bunch of happy onlookers. But now I was being interrogated at the guard station. Well. It's no surprise. Without going into details, I had gotten into a fight right in front of the guards. Fortunately, the guards seemed to be quite sympathetic towards me. You don't have to be so cautious, Kusan. What you did was clearly self-defense, and you will not be charged with a crime. However, 
We really need to question the people involved. I'm sorry, but I need your cooperation. The interrogation was so relaxed that I almost forgot the meaning of the words. The fact checking went on and on, and in the end, it was almost like a casual chat. I can't say this out loud, but there's actually been an increase in the number of troubles involving the mercenary guild lately. Is that so? The adventurers guild is a tight-knit organization, but the mercenary guild is a bit. Could it be possible that the mercenaries may try to avenge Dox? It's okay. Dox was hated by the other mercenaries as well. The mercenary guild's members must be overjoyed right now. Hey, hey, is that okay with the mercenary guild? In many ways, it's a good for nothing organization. By the time the interrogation was over, it was already late in the night. Normally, you would need some kind of identification to enter the city, which I didn't have. Fortunately, thanks to Chrome San's help as a guarantor, I was able to enter the city of Arn. Thank you, Chrome San. You saved my life, Kusama. It is only natural for me to do this. Please stay at my mansion today. Are you sure it won't bother you? No. I'm fine. It must be difficult to find a place to stay at this time of night, so don't hesitate. If he said this much, it would be rude to refuse. I decided to head to Chrome San's mansion. As a side note, while I was being interrogated, Chrome San reported the incident to the mercenary guild and told them that he would never work with them again. I thought that was a good idea too. When I left the guard station, I saw a neat little carriage parked there. An elderly man in a butler's uniform stood beside the carriage and bowed politely when he saw Chrome San. Grandmaster, I have come to pick you up. I'm sorry for the trouble. Dot this is my butler. Kusama, let's take the carriage to the mansion. The streets of Un were more modern than medieval, with magical lights illuminating the night. It was already late in the night, but there were many people walking around. The people's clothes were quite sophisticated, and from my modern eyes, they didn't look out of place. It seemed that the level of civilization in this world was reasonably high. As soon as they saw this carriage, the city residents rushed to clear the way, and I wondered if Chrome San might be a very influential person. When I thought back at the city gate, the guards were very polite to Chrome San as well. If I considered that I had such an influential person feel indebted to me, my life in another world may be off to a relatively good start. I'm grateful for that. The carriage soon entered a quiet residential area. It stopped in front of a magnificent building amidst a row of large mansions. Well, let's go, Kusama. Um, sorry for the inconvenience. When I entered the mansion, I saw that the entrance was lined with men and women who appeared to be servants. As I thought, this guy is really rich. After returning the luggage and the wagon to Chrome San from there, item box, it was time for dinner. The menu was quite luxurious, starting with appetizers and soup, followed by fish, meat, and dessert like a full course of French cuisine. The meat dish, unroasted chicken, was incredibly delicious, with the juices overflowing with umami every time I bit into the tender chicken. I stayed at the mansion for the night. The guest room was as luxurious and spacious as a high-class hotel and the bed was very comfortable. I laid down to relax and thought about the future. If you ask me if I want to go back to the modern world, even if I could go back to Japan, what awaited me would be the busy life of being a company employee. I don't have a girlfriend, and my parents died a few years ago. To be honest, I didn't have any regrets about that world. This world is much more appealing than modern Japan. Going to a video game like Different World and having a great adventure that couldn't be done in modern life. I'm sure everyone has imagined such a situation at least once. I myself am thrilled beyond belief at this point in my life. Now that I'd been released from the company, I wanted to travel freely and enjoy the other world. However, that's a goal for later. I'd just arrived in this world and lacked common sense. First of all, I should get used to living in this city and getting accustomed to the other world. Now's the time to solidify my foothold. Oh, well, I need to think about a house. Too. If I wanted to live here, naturally I'd need a place to live. I don't want to stay out in the open or live on the streets. Oh, that's right. I also need to find a job. Without money, I couldn't make a living. There were many things I had to worry about, but I couldn't figure out all of them by myself. There were just too many things I didn't know. I felt bad for Chrome San, but I'd have to trouble him with some more questions tomorrow. The next day, after breakfast, I asked Chrome San for advice. As for accommodation, to my surprise, Chrome San said he could get me a place to stay for a month. This is my way of thanking you for saving my life. You've been living deep in the mountains for a long time, 
so you probably don't know much about life in the city. It may be difficult for you to start living alone suddenly. How about spending some time at the inn first and getting used to the atmosphere of the city? Chrome Sand's suggestion made sense to me. Living alone in a strange place was very unsettling. In that sense, using the inn as a base for living was a good idea. If I have any problems, I can just task the staff. Since the inn is run by my trading company, I can guarantee the quality of service. If you have any problems, you can always ask me. That's reliable. I mean, his trading company. When I asked the question, I got an unexpected answer. When we first met, Chrome Sam claimed to be a merchant, but in fact, he was not just some ordinary merchant. He was the chairman of a large trading company called the Scarlet Trading Company. The reason why he was traveling alone like a peddler was that he wanted to remember the feel of the field itself. He was very self-conscious. However, this incident prompted him to decide to hand over the position of chairman to his son. The gods in heaven must have prepared a relationship with Kusama as a retirement gift for me. I'm not much of a good person, you know. It is just that I have good skills. Chrome San complimented me greatly, but it was difficult for me to accept such praise straightforwardly. After all, it's all thanks to my skills. When I was summoned to the other world, I just happened to have strong skills that allowed me to play an active role. It's not something I've worked hard to achieve. I feel a little guilty, and I sigh a little. Then, Chrome San said with a serious expression. As an old man, I would like to advise you that there is a big difference between drawing a good hand and mastering a good hand. There are plenty of people who are blessed with skills but can't use them, or can only use them in ways that make the people around them unhappy. When I heard this, I immediately thought of the mercenary docks. Even if he is there, swordsmanship, skill, it will be the end if he abandons his client. But Kusama is different. You used your superior skills and even saved my life. You should be proud of that. Thank you very much. I'll keep that in mind. As I bowed my head, I thought about the values of this world. The concept of skills existed in this world, but it probably had more to do with people's values than I thought. Now that the talk is over. I'm going to ask him about work. I also told him that I would like to see the world. If that's the case, I think it would be best to register with the Adventurers Guild. With your abilities, you should be able to climb to a higher rank in no time, and you should be able to live an above average life. Also, once registered with the Adventurers Guild, an Adventurers registration card would be issued, which also served as an ID. I understand. I will register with the Adventurers Guild. I think that's the most suitable way. Dotto. Yes. I heard from a veteran adventurer that you should wear armor when you register. If you look weak, you will be treated poorly by others. You should also avoid using honorific or polite language. Since being an adventurer was a Yakuza kind of business, I guess it's important to keep one's reputation. If that's the case, the suit is a bit delicate, and I'd like to get some armor somewhere. As I walked back to my room after leaving Chrome San, I had a flash of inspiration. Armored bear. If I were to put armor into Japanese, it would be armor. T slash N. He used katakana at first and kanji at the later. I know it sounds like a pun, but could I make armor out of armored bear? I opened there, item box, in my mind. There, item box, contents are quite chaotic, including weapons made of haikina materials and dishes, tables, and chairs. The corpse of the armored bear is also stored there. First. I activated, dismantle, as a preliminary step. In addition to the armored bear's head, I also obtained about 10 armored bear pelts and armored bear steel shells. The steel shells were probably the metal-like material that had covered the armored bear's body. Now that I had new material, a corresponding recipe came to mind. Dot apparently, as expected, the armored bear's materials can be used to create armor. My hunch is not completely abandoned. Feeling a bit proud, I activate creation. After a few seconds of pause, a new item was added to my item box. Armored bear armor. Armor made of armored bear material. The armor is not very heavy, but its strong steel shells provide a high level of protection. Granted effect colon physical defense enhancement a plus monstrous strength s plus hearing enhancement a fair physical defense enhancement a plus can be considered as a positive adjustment to defense. While the monstrous strength S plus can be considered as a positive adjustment to attack power. I'm also grateful for hearing enhancement A. Hey. It seems to be able to detect the approach of a monster right away. In summary, this is equipment for battle. For now, 
let's get dressed. I was about to take out the armored bear armor from there, item box. At that moment, an inorganic voice echoed in my mind. Would you like to equip the armored bear armor? It's a very RPG-like message. I said yes, and then something unexpected happened. The suit I was wearing seemed to disappear, and the next thing I knew, my entire body was covered in leather armor. My chest, shoulders, elbows, and knees were heavily protected by the steel shells. The instantaneous change of attire was like a hero's transformation. I've never worn armor before, so it's nice to have it automatically equipped for me. There was a mirror in the room so I could check my appearance, dot it looks wild. On my left shoulder was the lifeless head of the armored bear. This was a decorative stuffed animal, hollow inside. It has nothing to do with the armor's defensive capabilities, but it has an angry expression on its face and is very intimidating. If I wore this, I wouldn't be taken lightly and it would be the perfect outfit for my debut as an adventurer. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 4 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Chapter 4 I took the registration test at the Adventurer's Guild. I had just finished trying on the armor and returned to my suit when there was a knock at the door. I answered the door and found the old man's butler standing there. After lunch, the Grand Master will be leaving with his carriage. If it's alright with you, Kusama, we can drop you off in front of the Adventurer's Guild. Of course, there was no reason to refuse. I had just arrived in this city and had no idea where anything was. After an early lunch, I got into the large carriage with Chrome San. As the carriage left the mansion, we soon approached the center of the city. It was still just after 10 o'clock in the morning, but the stores along the street were all packed with people. There were street vendors everywhere, shouting cheerfully. In the plaza-like area, street performers were putting on a show, and the crowd was applauding. It's quite a lively place. Is there a festival going on today? I asked, and Chrome San shook his head. No, it's always like this in Arn. It's the biggest city in the area. There are rumors that so many people are moving here that they can't expand the city in time. The city was surrounded by thick walls so I wondered if this meant that they would have to expand the walls. It seemed like a lot of work. The Adventurer's Guild was located in the center of the city, near the large fountain square. The building was made of brick and looked very sturdy. Thank you very much, Chrome San. It's the least I can do. Dotto. Yes. Please take this. As I was exiting the carriage, Chrome San handed me a small leather bag. The bag was heavy despite its size. There was a clinking sound inside. Chrome San. This is. Yesterday, Kusama carried the wagon's luggage with your item box, right? This is the reward for that. Please use it as a deposit to start your adventure. I opened the leather bag and found it filled with gold coins. It's quite a lot of money, isn't it? Are you sure? Of course I am. You've done a lot of work, so you should receive a fair reward. Dot well, to be honest, it would be great if you could become a patron of my trading company. I'm sure Kusama will eventually become a high-ranking adventurer, so this is an investment with an anticipation toward that time. Ha ha ha. Chrome San laughed jokingly. He was probably trying to make it easier for me to receive the gold. I understand. I'll try to give as much of this money as I can back to the Scarlet Trading Company. Yes, by all means. Please be our patron. Now, if you'll excuse me. If you have any problems. You can always come to the mansion. Thank you very much. Chrome San, you can always call on me if you need my help. We shook hands as we said goodbye, and I got out of the carriage. After seeing Chrome San's carriage off, I walked to the edge of the sidewalk and looked into the leather bag. There are a lot of gold coins inside, but how much are they really worth? I activated the appraisal function and immediately found the answer. The total amount was 80,000 comza. Comza is a universal currency unit and it seems that the value is about 1 comza equals 1 yen. In other words, I was handed 80,000 yen out of the blue. I don't know whether to be grateful or sorry, but I'll try to use the Scarlet Trading Company as much as possible for shopping to repay the favor. Now that the money issue is over, let's go to the Adventurer's Guild. I opened their item box and put on the armored bear armor. I also kept the stuffed head on my left shoulder. It looked incredibly intimidating. When I touched it, its fur was surprisingly fluffy. I opened the door to the Adventurers Guild and walked in to find a large crowd of adventurers gathered in the lobby. Some of them had unusually long ears, beast ears, or tails. Apparently, there are elves and beastmen in this world. When I see this kind of thing, 
I feel like I'm really in a fantasy world, and I get excited. There was a counter in the back, so I decided to head there. I suddenly noticed something strange. The adventurers, who until a moment ago had been going about their business as they pleased, now kept their mouths shut and glanced at me. Their appearance was like that of herbivores trying to get past predators. I was wearing armored bear armor to prevent them from taking me lightly, but I didn't expect to frighten them. Hey, that's an armored bear armor, isn't it? Is that the bear killer they're talking about? You know, the one that beat up that shitty mercenary at the city gate. I know that story. He showed the mercenaries the lifeless head of the bear and threatened them, saying, this will be you in three seconds right? Thanks to fearing enhancement to grunted to my armor, I can hear the whispering. I heard that yesterday's incident has already become a rumor among adventurers, but what is a bear killer? Please don't give me a strange nickname. I mean, isn't the story developing in a strange direction? I indeed showed the bear's head, but I didn't threaten the mercenaries. It's just a rumor. What does the bear killer want with the adventurers guild? Is he trying to beat us up? If so, we'd all be dead by now. Dot is he an adventurer by any chance? If that's the case, is his rank A or S? Uck, I'm curious. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm a new adventurer. The guild had three reception areas, but the middle one was empty. There was a man sitting at the counter on the left, but he said, oh, I have a chronic illness. I wondered if it wasn't a chronic illness but cowardice. All that remained was the counter on the right where a petite girl was sitting. She was probably in her late teens. Her chestnut brown fluffy hair was pulled to one side in a honey braid. Her golden eyes sparkled, giving her an impression of being lively. Her face was a little young, but she looked well put together, and she had an amiable smile on her face. Welcome to the unbranch of the Adventurers Guild. Anasan, you're looking fabulous. Apparently, this receptionist is quite a big deal. I wish someone who ran away from me because of a chronic illness or cowardice would learn from her. I looked at the receptionist's name tag and saw that it said, Milia. This is the general counter. What can I do for you? Yes, I need to register as an adventurer. As I was about to ask her for help, I remembered Chrome San's advice. Oops, I forgot that adventurers don't use polite language. I'd like to register as an adventurer. Is that okay? You want to register? Milia's eyes widened in surprise. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were an adventurer who had been active in another country. No, I'm just rookie. Sorry to disappoint you. No, no, I just misunderstood you myself. Please don't worry about it. Milia said and took out a sheet of paper from under the counter. It says Adventurers Guild Registration Application on it. The first thing you need to do is fill out this form. After that, you will have to take a practical test. Okay. Can I use the pen? Sure. You can use it all you want. I took the pen and quickly filled out the necessary information. In addition to my name, age, and agenda, I had to fill out some checklist options, such as do you have any chronic diseases and do you have a criminal record? At the bottom of the form, there was an appeals section, where you could freely write your best weapons and skills. I thought about it for a while and then wrote down that I was not good at rough stuff. Is this okay? Yes, let me check. Milia then read the application form and tilted her head at the last part. You're not good at rough stuff. Um, you're kidding, right? No, I'm serious. I don't like to fight much if possible. I is that so? I will accept this for now. The next step is the practical test. The instructor's schedule is, oh, he's free at this time. What would you like to do? What does the practical test do? It's a mock battle with the instructor. It is just. Melia thought about it for a moment and then told me awkwardly. The person in charge of today's test is a former A-ranked adventurer. He always says he's stronger than an armored bear so it might be a little tough. Melia led me to the underground training ground. Then, for some reason, a large group of adventurers followed behind us. What the heck is going on? As I tilted my head, I overheard the chatter of the surrounding crowd. The bear killer is taking the registration test, huh? Are you kidding me? A monster who can take down an armored bear one-on-one -on -one is a rookie? Young people these days are so far from being human. Since we're here, Let's go observe the test. I'd like to see what he's capable of. Today's instructor is, oh, Jai San. He's the self-proclaimed stronger than armored bear guy, right? But he's really killed an armored bear, hasn't he? Let's see who's stronger. Since we're here, how about a bet? I bet on the bear killer. I think he's gonna win, too. Hey, hey, 
We can't make a bet if we both have the same choice. I let out a small sigh as I looked at the excited adventurers. It's not a freak show, you know. However, the bear killer versus the self-proclaimed stronger than a bear guy sounds like an interesting matchup, and if I were an adventurer, I would have probably joined the bet as well. Before the instructor arrived, Milia told me about the practical test. Oh geez, you don't have to beat the instructor in the practical test. Milia began to talk with the tension of a late night shopping show. She's amusing, isn't she? I never get tired of watching her. As long as you can show the minimum level of competence as an adventurer, it's okay to lose to the instructor. Dot well, I have a feeling that Kusan will win this one. Well, I'm not going to let my guard down. I'll give it my all. I took out the Haikina wooden hammer from my item box. It was a giant hammer. If I hit it correctly, it would crush any adult into a pulp. I gripped the hammer, which was very heavy. It probably weighed over a hundred kilograms. However, thanks to the armored bear armor's granting effect. Monstrous strength S plus, I was able to lift it with ease. Because I have the dexterity, I can use any weapon for the first time like an expert. Nevertheless, I wanted to try out the weapon at least once. I held the hammer over my left shoulder and took a full swing. Like a baseball bat. Whoosh. The wind pressure was quite strong, and the adventurers in the surroundings began to make a lot of noise. Wow. How can he swing such a heavy looking hammer so lightly? That's the bear killer for you, isn't it? Today's instructor is dead. The next thing I knew, the mood in the training area was like that of a wake. That was when the instructor appeared. He was a middle-aged man, wearing silver-rimmed glasses. So you are the bear killer everyone is talking about, huh? I hear you're pretty strong, but you're still young. I'll show you that there is always someone better than you. As he said that, the instructor took off his glasses and picked up a wooden sword that was placed at the edge of the training area. He looks like a seasoned veteran and I'm sure he's quite skilled. This is an opponent I can't let my guard down against. The instructor and I faced each other at a distance of about 5 meters. We were surrounded by a crowd of spectators. Then you two, are you ready? Milia shouted excitedly. Let the test begin. As I lifted the hammer, I looked at the instructor. The instructor held his wooden sword in front of him and said with a relaxed expression on his face. This is not a contest but a test. You can attack me whenever you want. I understand. Then I'll take your word for it. I kicked the ground and started to run, and with the momentum I had, I swung the hammer full sideways. However, the instructor jumped back and avoided the attack by a paper-thin margin. Your attack is too wide. There are too many gaps. The instructor grinned and swung his wooden sword down as a counterattack. But that's exactly what I'm aiming for. I activated my item box and stored the hammer. Since I let go of my weapon, my body became lighter. I jumped sideways and quickly avoided the instructor's slash. Dot what? The instructor's eyes widened in surprise. Now is the chance. I took out my hammer again from my item box, and took a second full swing. Smack, with a pleasant sound. The instructor's wooden sword snapped in the middle. The top half of the sword flew into the air and fell to the ground. That's it. Milia's voice rang out energetically. This match was won by Kusan. The testing room was silent for a while, but then it was filled with loud cheers. Wow, that rookie has beaten the instructor. Not bad. As expected of the bear killer. That was an interesting match. The instructor put down his broken wooden sword and approached me with a smiling face. I'm completely defeated. Nice work. Kukun. Thank you, sir. You are not hurt, are you? Of course. By the way, the skill you used was, item box, right? I never thought there was a way to use it like that. The world is really a big place. I learned something. Thank you. The instructor said that and held out his right hand. I extended my right hand to shake his. You have passed the test. I expect great things from you in the future. Congratulations, Kusan. You are very cool. Milia shouted and the rest of the crowd applauded and congratulated me on my success. And so, in this lively welcoming mood, I took my first steps as an adventurer. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 5 Part 1 Here's the chapter, enjoy, Ed, Blast. Chapter 5, I took my first quest with a senior adventurer. Part 1 After finishing the test, I came back to the guild counter. Milia, the receptionist handed me a silver card with a smiling face. Congratulations on passing the test. Here is your adventure registration card. 
Please make sure there are no mistakes with your name or agenda. The guild card is a thin silver metal plate about the size of my palm. On the front of the card is inscribed, Adventurer Registration Card, Kukosaka, age 29, male, human, adventurer rank F. Even so, Kusan, I'm surprised that you were able to defeat the instructor in one blow. You're really strong, aren't you? No, it's just because my skills are strong. I'm just a small fry, you know? Or that's what I'm about to say, but then I stop myself. It would be disrespectful to the instructor who fought me to be so demeaning here. However, I don't feel comfortable boasting about my strength, so I just say, oh well, the guild's rules can be found in this booklet. If you have time, I can explain some of the important points. I think my explanation is easy to understand, so I recommend you listen to it. Is it really that easy to understand, or is it just a feeling? But if she said that, I'm wondering if it's really easy to understand. I have time. Can I ask you to explain? I understand. First of all, there are seven ranks for adventurers, S, A, B, C, D, E, and F, respectively. Rank advancement is determined by the guild, taking into account the number of requests you complete and your history of achievements. On the other hand, if your completion rate is too low or you haven't received any requests for a long time, your rank may be reduced, or you may be expelled. And by that long time, I mean how long? C, D, E, and F ranks are 3 months, and B ranks are 6 months, and S rank is 1 year. Exceptions will be made for illness or injury, so please be sure to notify us. In addition, false reports to the guild, betraying the client, and falsifying the guild card will be punished severely so please do not do so. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Next, regarding requests, please bring the request form posted on the quest board and your guild card to the counter. Requests are classified by rank, but you will only be able to receive requests up to your rank. Please note that you will be charged a penalty if you fail to complete the request within the time frame. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. After all, the Adventurer's Guild system had a rather game-like feel to it, the explanation continued for a little while after that, but I didn't feel much discomfort. Last but not least, if you reach B rank, you will be paid compensation if you are injured, and after you retire, you will receive a pension based on your achievements up to that point. With your ability, I think you will be able to move up in rank in no time. Why don't you aim for the B rank first? Dot and that's all for now. Thank you for your attention. Millie about as if she had just finished a lecture. I gave a small clap. I think it was a clear explanation, and the last piece of information was important to me. If I reach B rank, I will get compensation money and a pension. If I'm thinking about the future, I'd like to get at least a B rank. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Is there anything you don't understand? There is one thing I need you to tell me. Yes, yes, what is it? For example, how do I prove that I've defeated a monster when I've accepted a subjugation request? In some web novels, you might have to cut out the monster's body and submit it as proof of subjugation, but I wonder how it works in this world. Ah, I'm sorry, I forgot to explain. The Adventurer's Guild has a special magic tool that can be used to track your achievements. However, we're still working on it, so I'll show it to you later. Do you have any other questions? No, I'm good for now. So. Kusan is now a member of the Adventurer's Guild. I'm looking forward to working with you. Me too. Oh, by the way, don't you have to pay a registration fee or an exam fee for the guild? We used to charge a fee, but because of that, we lost a lot of people to the Mercenary Guild. That's why it's free now. It seems that the rivalry between the Adventurer's Guild and the Mercenaries Guild has affected things like that as well. Personally, I think there should be registration and testing fees to prevent strange people from becoming adventurers. But this is a different world. The culture of this world is completely different, so free of charge may be appropriate. Kusan, why don't you take a quest right away? I don't mind, but please don't make it too difficult. I'm just starting out. That's okay. I've chosen a job that is suitable for a new adventurer. This time, the one I recommend to Kusan is here. Milia spread out the request form on the table, again in the manner of a late night shopping show. It's a gathering type quest and the client is the pharmacist's guild. You need to collect at least 50 bundles of nose grass from the nearby forest. Nose grass is very commonly used as a raw material for medicines, but it only grows in monster habitats, so the adventurer's guild has agreed to collect it for them. As for the reward, 
it's 400 comza per bundle of nose grass. So the reward is at least 20,000 comza. That's a lot of money. The demand for medicines is high, and since you will be collecting them in a monster's habitat, you will also be paid for the danger. Now, here comes the important part. Kusan, please listen carefully. And what on earth is that? As Melia leaned forward from the guild counter, I couldn't help but listen. In fact, when new adventurers go on their first quest, a senior adventurer accompanies them. If there's anything you don't understand, you can ask the senior adventurers any questions you want. That's pretty generous support. That's how we differentiate ourselves from mercenary guilds. Now, what do you want to do, Kusan? If you are ready to accept the quest, I'll go talk to the A-rank adventurers who are available now. Do you think it'll be that easy to get them to accept? Fufu, you can trust my bargaining power. Well, in the first place, Kusan is rumored to be the bear killer, and all the high rank adventurers are very interested in you, you know? Is that so? It's not surprising. In addition, Kusan easily defeated a former A rank instructor in the practical test. You have become the talk among others as an expected super rookie. Of course, everyone has their eyes on you. If you put it that way, it makes sense. Since I came to the Adventurers Guild, I've done nothing but stand out. I understand. Can you go find me any rank adventurer for now? Yes, leave it to me. Milia walked out of the counter and ran briskly toward the lobby. Shortly after, she returned with a female adventurer. She was a beautiful woman. Her hair, tied up with a yellow ribbon, was long and red shining like the setting sun. Her eyes were a beautiful crimson, shimmering as if they were filled with melted jewels. Her face looks somewhat fragile and cold but there is no doubt that she is beautiful. The first thing that attracted my attention was not her large breasts, but the two thin horns that extend from behind her ears. In my opinion, they look like dragon horns. This is Iris Nout Fafna, an A-rank adventurer from the Dragon Folk tribe. Ooh, clap, clap. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2021 slash 09 slash 0040 dot jpg. As Milia clapped, I was convinced by myself. The dragon folk tribe is one of the most common races in fantasy, and their appearance varies from story to story, but in this world, they seem to resemble humans. Their skin is white and translucent and there are no scales to be seen anywhere. The only dragon-like feature was the horn on her head. She gave a slight bow and spoke to me in an indifferent tone. You must be the rumored bear killer. Nice to meet you. You can call me Iris. I'm Kukauzika. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to your guidance. I bowed deeply to Iris. Dot o number. I inadvertently used polite language because of her seniority. I heard that adventurers don't use polite expressions, but I can't seem to get rid of my Japanese habits. Iris stared at me for a while, but then she gave a small laugh. You don't have to be so formal. We're all adventurers here, so just talk to me like you normally would. I understand. No, I get it. I've been living in the mountains for so long that I'm not familiar with common sense. If there are any other strange points, please do not hesitate to tell me. When I told her that, Melia opened her mouth to add to it, Kusan is a man of uncommon ability but he grew up in the mountains with no common sense. I'm sure that Iris San also had a lot of difficulties when she first came to human land because of the difference in common sense, and I would appreciate your guidance in this regard. If that's the case, I'm certainly the right person for the job. Iris nodded as if she was convinced. I, on the other hand, I'm a bit impressed with Milia. She had brought Iris along with her in a light-hearted way, but she hadn't chosen her at random. She had a very good reason. I guess she's the type of person who pretends to be frivolous but does her job well. I don't dislike people like that. In fact, I find them desirable. I was in a good mood as I accepted my first quest. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 5 Part 2 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Part 2 I was seen off by Milia and walked out of the Adventurers Guild. Of course. I was accompanied by Iris. Ku, do you know what the first thing you should do? First, I need to gather information. When playing a game, I'm the type of person who looks for a walkthrough site and bookmarks it. I need the map of the area, and I need to know what kind of monsters appear where. I also need to find out what nose grass looks like and where it grows most. That's right. If you're well prepared, 
the results will come. You are indeed a very promising rookie. I don't usually get answers this smoothly. You're overestimating me. Anyone can figure it out with a little thought. Well, let's put it that way. If it's a map of the area and the location of the monsters, it's easy to find out. When you registered with the guild, you were given a booklet of rules, right? This one? I took the booklet out of my item box. The second part of the booklet is completely devoted to information. It contains everything you need to know about being an adventurer in Arn. Huh. Let's see. I flipped through the booklet. The first part of the booklet lists the terms and conditions of the guild, but the second part is a compact collection of information that I need right now, such as Appendix 1, map of the area around Arn and Appendix 2 materials that can be collected around done. It also contains a sketch of the nose grass, the subject of my quest, and its location. It's like a walkthrough book. Walkthrough book? What's that? Don't worry about it. It's like a local term. Dot anyway, I'm grateful for this appendix. Speaking of which, Milia made it all by herself. Milia did? I was a little surprised. The appendix was very carefully composed and did not fit the image of the frivolous Milia. That girl originally belongs to the guild headquarters in the royal capital. But the current branch chief brought her in to help rebuild the Un branch. Rebuilding? Was this branch in such a dangerous situation? The guild was in a downward mood, and the management was not in good shape. But after the new branch manager and Milia arrived, everything changed completely. She will be an executive when she gets back to headquarters. So it's best to get to know her while you still can. Dot well, since you seem to be Milia's favorite, I guess there is nothing to worry about. Favorite? Me? It is true that Milia is kind to me, but isn't that part of her personality, or is she like that to everyone? Dot well, whatever the case, that appendix is enough for information gathering. I'll add the details in the field. Is there anything else you want to do? Supplies, I guess. I have weapons and armor, but nothing else. At this rate. I won't even be able to provide first aid if I get injured during the quest. In that case, let's make sure you have everything you need for the future. Dot or rather, you are quite familiar with it. I wonder if you're really just starting out. I'm not faking my career, you know. It's just that I've played my fair share of games. I'm just applying that experience. Before you go on an adventure, be sure to stock up on recovery items. Don't forget to take precautions against abnormal conditions. This is a principle that applies to all RPGs. The stores for adventurers seem to be clustered in one place, and Iris took me to one of them. It's called Adventurer's Street, and as the name implies, several weapons and armor shops are lined up. Seeing these shops made me realize once again that I was in a different world. It's a site that I would never have encountered in my original world. And to be honest, I'm pretty excited about it. After the quest is over, it wouldn't be harmful to take my time and look around. Door to door. Iris led me to get the things an adventurer needs. Rope, torches, flint, water bags. After buying them, I threw them into my item box. Iris asked me how many items I could store, and when I told her it was unlimited, she was very surprised. Chrome San also said something similar, but it seems that the capacity of the normal item box, is very small, the normal, item box, is treated as a failed skill, and there are a lot of magic tools that perform better than that, Iris was wearing a pouch on her waist, which is a kind of magic tool that can store much more than it looks, it's the otherworldly version of the four dimensional pocket, I guess, t slash n, from Derriman, maybe, I'm a spearman, but it's too much work to carry around, so I keep it in my pouch, Iris took out a spear from her pouch, it was about 2 meters long, and it's not something that would normally fit in a pouch. A rank and B rank adventurers all have similar magic tools, but they don't have unlimited capacity, as expected. In that sense, your item box is out of the ordinary. The other skills are also a variety of cheats, but well, it's nothing to brag about. Now that the preparations are in place, it's time to set out on the quest. We walked out of the south gate of the city. I hadn't noticed it yesterday. But a little further away from the gate, the city was undergoing expansion. I could hear the pounding of hummers all the way up here. It sounds like a lot of work. Leaving the city and heading southeast, we soon came upon a forest. This forest is called the Cello Forest, and it's one of the areas where no grass is grown. Low-ranked monsters also appear in the area, 
making it a good place for novice adventurers to hone their skills. As soon as we entered the forest, we found the first nose grass. I just have to take this one, right? Yes, but it isn't easy to pull it out because it is a plant with strong roots. If you're not careful, you'll tear the grass to shreds, so be careful. So a shovel is a must when collecting. Dot no, wait. I have a small shovel among the tools I got in the city. But isn't there an easier way? Let's give it a try. I kneel down on the ground and reach out to touch the nose grass. When I thought of storing it in there, item box, a small magic circle appeared on the ground. The nose grass is enveloped in a golden light and is sucked into the magic circle. As expected, there's the nose grass stored in my item box. What did you just do? Coo. The nose grass suddenly disappeared. It's a small application of the item box. You can store things that you touch. So I put the nose grass directly into my item box. This will save you the trouble of having to pull it out and make it easier to collect. I thought it was just a failed skill, but I didn't know it could be used that way. Iris repeatedly nodded as if she was impressed. It wasn't just flattery, it was a genuine surprise. I felt a little better as I continued my search. According to the guild's booklet, nose grass doesn't grow in clusters but is scattered all over the place. And there is also a similar kind of plant called Neolana grass that grows in the same areas, so I had to be careful. In fact, the next plant we found was Neolana grass. The plant's surface was covered with red spots, which distinguished it from the nose grass. The quest to collect nose grass is much harder than it seems. Iris commented next to me. They grow in different places, so you have to travel a long way, and when you finally find one, you often find it's actually near Lana grass. This time you need to collect 50 of them, but it will probably take all evening. Patience is the key, huh? Dot as I spoke, I was thinking of ways to make the quest as easy as possible. When I was transferred to another world, I received many cheat skills, and this time, I think this will help me. Artisan's Divine Eye. It's a skill that automatically tells you when an item in your item box is in your sight. Let's try activating it right away. Dot. I felt as if the depths of my eyes suddenly popped open. When I looked at my surroundings again, I saw that the plants a short distance away were shining brightly. When I approached it and checked it with appraisal, I found that it was indeed no grass. The next step was quick. Thanks to their artisan's divine eye, I could cut down on the time it took to find the nose grass and distinguish it from the Neolana grass from far away. In about an hour or so, I had cleared the quest requirement of 50 plants. Dot that's amazing. Iris had a look of surprise on her face. I've never seen a rookie complete a nose grass collection quest in such a short time. It's thanks to my skills. Now, all we have to do is return to the city. Yes. I'm sure Milia will be surprised. Iris gave a small chuckle. When we first met, she seemed somewhat cold, but now she seems to be opening up a bit. Her cool atmosphere had also faded considerably. We left the forest and headed back to the road. The sky was blue, and the sun was still high in the sky. Come to think of it, we didn't see a single monster. We must have been lucky. Well, even if they had appeared. I'm sure it wouldn't have been any trouble given your abilities. Dot it seems like the quest is over, but is there anything you want to ask me? Anything not directly related to the quest is fine. Dot can I ask you something a little more personal? Personal? Iris tilted her head in surprise and blinked her crimson eyes. It's fine, but... What is it? I've been living deep in the mountains, so I don't know much about them. But what kind of people are the dragon folk? So that's what you mean by personal. Iris nodded as if she was convinced. The first thing you need to know is that dragons are the most powerful monsters that have ruled the world since ancient times. We're the descendants of those dragons. Our lifespan is much longer than that of humans, and our bodies are much stronger. That's enviable. At that time, I thought I was just expressing my honest opinion. However, Iris looked surprised. I wondered what was going on. Did I say something that offended her? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that it's the first time I've heard someone say something like that. Isn't that normal? Most people are afraid of the dragon folk and stay away from them. In the worst cases, they treat us like monsters. Is that so? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. I don't mind. You said you were envious. And that made me a little happy. Iris muttered in embarrassment. If I had been five years younger, 
I might have been struck by the gap between her usual coolness. It was exactly four o'clock in the afternoon when we returned to the Adventurers Guild in Arn. We walked through the lobby where the adventurers were hanging out and went to the counter, where I saw Milia. It was just perfect. I'll report the completion of the quest. Welcome back, Kusan and Iris San. Dot please wait a minute. Did you already finish the nose grass gathering quest? Yes, there are 50 of them here. Check it out. I took out a leather bag from my item box. I, I understand. Please wait a moment. When Milia received the leather bag, she retreated to the back of the guild. It took her about five minutes to come back. But her expression was as if she saw an illusion. I checked with the guild's magic tools, and without a doubt, it was all nose grass. And it's fresh and the roots are still intact. Dot normally, it's impossible to collect them in such a clean state. What method did you use? Of course, there is no reason to hide it. When I told her that I used their item box to store it, she rolled her eyes. I never knew there was such use for that skill. If you do not mind, can I report to the guild headquarters about Kusan's collection method? I'd like to use it as a reference for future quests. Of course, feel free to use it. Thank you very much. There item box, is a rare skill, but because it is not very effective, it has not been researched very much. Maybe Kusan will be the trigger that it will change the positioning of the, item box, drastically. Hey, hey, this is turning out to be kind of important, as for me, I just tried out a spur of the moment idea and happened to be successful. For now, I'll give you 20,000 comza as a reward. If Kusan's collection method is approved by the guild's headquarters, there will be an additional reward. It may take some time, but please look forward to it. Good for you, Ku. Iris smiled kindly as she listened to the exchange between Milia and me from the side. As expected from the promising rookie. It's a simple quest for beginners, and yet you get such a major credit. It's just a coincidence. Being able to use coincidence as an advantage is a great weapon for an adventurer. The most important thing in a quest is preparation. But luck often saves the day at the last minute. Dot well done on your quest. I bet you'll be an A-ranked adventurer in no time. Thank you. Well, I'll try not to overdo it. And so, my first quest ended up being a great success. Ever since I arrived in this other world, things have been going well, and that makes me feel pretty good. Since I'm in the mood, why don't I enjoy a drink tonight? When I was working at the company, I was always exhausted and didn't have time for that. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 6 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 6 I tried to go all out against a pack of lonely wolves. After the quest was over, Iris was taken by Milia to the back of the Adventurers Guild. She said she had to make a report regarding the mentoring of newcomers. It's tough to be a senior in any industry, isn't it? I'm older than her so I feel bad that I'm constantly being taken care of. I should probably buy her a meal or two if I get the chance. I was told that I was free to go, so I left the guild and headed for the inn. I'm sure Chrome San had already booked the inn for me. The inn's name is Quiet Moon Pavilion, and the location is listed on the map in the guidebook. It seems to be a famous inn. It was evening and the city was tinged with vermilion, with the shadows of carriages on the road stretched long. As I passed by the market, I saw many people, mainly housewives and children, gathered there. It was pretty lively. Soon I arrived at the inn. The Quiet Moon Pavilion. The building was painted black and was much larger than the other inns. It was also four stories high. It had an air of luxury about it. It was not an inn for adventurers, no matter how you looked at it. I'd better change my clothes. I was wearing armored bear armor right now but I didn't feel comfortable stepping into the place dressed like this. I should probably change into something better. I hid in the shadows and opened my item box. The clothes I wore when I first arrived in the other world were stored there. Jacket, shirt, tie, slacks. I specified them all at once and thought of changing my equipment. The armored bear armor vanished, and in an instant, I was dressed in a suit. Dot so it can fasten my tie as well. That's convenient. That's not all. The jacket and shirt were as neat and crisp as if they were brand new. It seemed that when I put my clothes in their item box, they were automatically cleaned. This way, I would not be embarrassed to enter a high class inn. Maybe. I stepped into the quiet moon pavilion with trepidation. The lobby had the atmosphere of a modern luxury hotel. There was a large vase in the center of the lobby beautifully decorated with various flowers. They seemed to be fresh flowers and smelled good. At the front desk, 
I told the man at the reception desk my name, and he said, Kakauzuka-sama, right? I've heard about you from the Grand Master. And he thanked me very much for the opportunity. I was shown to a suite on the fourth floor the top floor. It not only had a bedroom but also a living room, a parlor, and a private bathroom. This is bigger than my room in Japan. As someone who had been living in a small Japanese house, I was about to die of shock from the sheer luxury. I laid down on the bed, and my body sank into it. I wanted to fall asleep like this, but I was hungry. I looked at the clock in my room and saw that it was past 6 p.m. It was a little early, but I decided to have dinner. The Quiet Moon Pavilion has a restaurant attached but it's a bit difficult to enter because of its prestigious atmosphere. I should look for another restaurant. I left the Quiet Moon Pavilion and headed towards the downtown area. For some reason, the guidebook even included a May Guide to An, and according to it, a restaurant called Golden Bear Restaurant seemed to be the top choice. Since I was going out of my way, I decided to go there. It's really packed. When I entered the restaurant, I found that although it was quite spacious, the seats were almost all occupied. The customers were mainly adventurers, many of whom I had seen previously in the guild's lobby. As soon as I was shown to my table, I ordered the signature dish, grilled chicken on with salt. As it turned out, this was a hit. Every time I bit into the crispy chicken meat, the fatty flavor overflowed. It's no wonder this was a popular restaurant. As one would expect from a restaurant that catered to adventurers, the portions were generous and the meal came with bread and salad. The cost of the meal was an astonishing 750 comza. I'm impressed with this other world lifestyle. After the meal, I had a light glass of wine and returned to the inn feeling tipsy. Perhaps it was because I had exercised so much since this morning, but I felt very sleepy. I think I'll just take a bath tomorrow and go to bed early today. Good night. The next day, I woke up at a little past 8 in the morning. Phew ah. I opened the window and the fresh morning air caressed my cheeks. It's a beautiful day. The sky was blue and clear as crystal. Compared to the days when I used to wake up before sunrise when I worked for a black company, my life here is like a paradise. Viva another world. Yesterday, I fell asleep as soon as I got back to my room, so this morning I decided to take a bath first. The bathroom was quite spacious with not only a shower but also a large bathtub. Both of them used water magic, and I could use them just as I would in a modern hotel. After the bath, I took my time to get ready and left the inn at around 10 in the morning. The first place I went to was the Golden Bear restaurant. Apparently, they are also open in the morning. I ordered a lettuce salad and an egg muffin. Dot delicious. The eggs were from the local un chicken and had a simple but rich flavor. They also sold sandwiches for lunch so I bought one to go. It was a little past eleven when I arrived at the Adventurers Guild. I saw Milia at the counter, and when she saw me, she beckoned me over. Good morning, Kusan. Are you looking for a quest? Yes. Do you have any good ones? Fufafu, I've prepared something for you. This time, I'd like to recommend this one. Milia spread out the quest form on the counter. This is a subjugation quest and the client is the Adventurers Guild. The quest is to defeat five wolf-shaped monsters called Lonely Wolves that live in the Northern Mountains. As its name suggests, the Lonely Wolf has a habit of acting alone. The danger level is E rank, and I think it is an easy opponent for Kusan. The basic reward is 20,000 Komsa. But since the fur of the Lonely Wolf can be used as material for clothing, we would appreciate it if you could bring it back. Depending on the quality of the fur, you can expect to get about 5,000 comza per belt. So, if I brought back all 5 belts, I could make about 45,000 comza. I guess that includes the risk allowance, but this is a pretty good job. I immediately took the job and left the Adventurers Guild. I passed through the north gate of the city and headed for the mountains along the road. According to the guidebook, the mountains are called the Fatos Mountains and it's an excellent place for a novice adventurer to get some real-world experience. The monsters that live here are all low-ranked, and there are not that many of them. However, if you accidentally step over the mountain into the forest on the other side, it becomes a dangerous area. So, I should be careful about that. Okay, let's do this. I'm not just going to hunt the lonely wolf and call it a day. Since I'm out here, I'll also collect some materials that could be used for creation. I explored the mountain for about an hour, but I didn't encounter any lonely wolves at all. Instead, I was able to find three kinds of material items. Wet mushroom, 
a mushroom with a lot of water stored in its cap. It has a slight magical power. Nose grass, a medicinal herb found within the monster's habitat. When mixed with certain materials, it has a healing effect. Lilium herb, a medicinal herb that grows abundantly in low mountain areas. When mixed with certain ingredients, it has a detoxifying effect. Nose grass was the target of my gathering quest yesterday, but apparently, it can also be used for creation. Two recipes flashed through my mind. The first recipe was for a heal potion using one wet mushroom and one nose grass. Another recipe that came to my mind was for a detoxification potion using one each of the wet mushroom and lilium herb. Potions are one of the most popular recovery items in RPGs, and as a game enthusiast, I'm very interested in them. First, let's make the heal potion. The first step to create a heal potion was by selecting wet mushroom and nose grass. Then, creation, was activated. The heal potion was added to the list in my, item box. As I immediately reminded myself to take it out, I heard an inorganic voice in my head. You will need a container to take out the liquid. Do you want to put the heal potion into the water bag? The answer, of course, is yes. The water bag was one of the supplies I had purchased in the Adventurer's Street, but I hadn't expected it to come in handy here. You never know what's going to happen in life. I took out the water bag with the heal potion from there, item box. Now that I've obtained a potion, I'll taste it. It tastes like mint. A refreshing feeling spread in my mouth. I was reminded of my days as a company employee when I used to use mint tablets to blow away my drowsiness. I wonder if adventurers used heal potions to cover up their injuries from a fight, just like how office workers use tablets to cover up their fatigue. Either way, it's a dark story. By the way. The items I created before had powerful effects, but what about this time? The results of the, appraisal, were as follows. Heal Potion, a top grade heal potion refined by a skilled apothecary. It has a high quality taste that harmonizes a recovery amount that is at the limit of healing potions with a moderate sense of refreshment. Added effects, increase recovery amount S plus increase recovery speed S plus. Aside from the fact that it had comments that sound like a wine review, the fact that it had increase recovery amount S plus and increase recovery speed S plus was very encouraging. It seems to be able to heal you in a matter of seconds, even if you are seriously injured. Dot it's more like an elixir than a potion, isn't it? Next, I tried to make the detoxification potion with wet mushroom and lilium herb. When I retrieved it after putting it in a water bag, it was a brown liquid that looked like mouthwash. Detoxification potion. A top grade detoxification potion produced by a skilled herbalist. It can quickly counteract mild to moderate poisons. The smell is elegant, and the taste is refined with a balance of acidity and fruitiness. This is the king of detoxification potions. Added effects colon delicious A plus increased detoxification effect S plus increased detoxification speed S plus. Delicious, huh? Considering its color, it's hard to believe, but I don't think they're appraisal would lie. I decided to try drinking the detoxification potion. It's surprisingly good. If I had to compare it to something, I'd say it tasted like a high-grade grape juice. It had a clean sourness and a fruity sweetness. These two flavors were well matched to create a high-quality taste. It was just exactly as their appraisal described. Sorry for doubting you. Maybe this was not a punishment I deserved. But I finally encountered a monster. G -r 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 -r. It looked like a wolf, and its bloodshot eyes were looking at me. Could this be the lonely wolf which is the target of my subjugation quest? I activated, appraisal, to confirm it. Lonely wolf, male, a wolf-shaped monster that prefers solitude. They mate during the mating season but run away when the female becomes pregnant. It's complicated to comment on. But I think it's not a good idea to run away when your partner becomes pregnant. If you're a man, take responsibility. Well, that's a joke. Now that my subjugation target has shown up, there's no way I could let it go, right? I took out a weapon from my, item box. This time, I decided to use the Hykina wooden sword. The granted effects are slash enhancement S plus and strength enhancement A. But I wonder how sharp it really was. I held up the wooden sword and activated dexterity. As I switched to become the world's strongest swordsman, the lonely wolf attacked me with a growl. Gah! I avoided the lonely wolf's charge with a sidestep and swung my sword out in a horizontal line. It was a perfect counter. 
With the centrifugal force to my advantage, the wooden sword sliced through the lonely wolf at its highest speed. The lonely wolf was cut in half from top to bottom and fell to the ground. Dot that's one hell of a cut. It was as sharp as a metal sword, or perhaps even sharper. It's a sharpness that you wouldn't expect from a wooden sword. Oops, this is not the time to be surprised. I should collect the carcass of the lonely wolf. If I bring the pelt with me, I can get an extra reward. There are only four left to complete the quest. Dot they're not too strong. So even if they all show up at once, I think I can handle them. That's when I muttered to myself in a light tone. G-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-
your HP and MP have increased, and your physical abilities have improved. I was only level 8 when I left the city of Un, so I've leveled up quite a bit. It's time for me to check my status properly once again. Kukazuka, age 29, male, human, level 16, HP 200, MP 3100, skills, transmigrator, full assist, creation, dexterity, artisan's divine eye, item box, dismantling, appraisal, automatic collection. Automatic collection, was learned in this battle, but I wonder if more skills would be added as I level up. If so, I'm looking forward to it. As I was walking down the mountain thinking about this, I found a large spring. The view was not bad, and there was a rock to sit on. Just as I was about to take a break for lunch, I noticed two adventurers sitting a short distance away. A boy in armor and a girl dressed in white. If I were to describe them in RPG style, I'd say they were a swordsman and a priest. Both were young and had the air of novice adventurers. They were both gasping for breath. Perhaps they escaped from a monster? Anyway. Since they were adventurers, I thought I'd at least say hello. You look like you're in trouble. Are you okay? As I approached, the two slowly turned to look at me. Both of them had complex expressions and seemed to be terribly frightened. That armor. Are you perhaps the bear killer? The swordsman boy asked me, and I nodded. I'm Kukazuka, an F-rank adventurer. Please call Miku instead of bear killer if you can. Um. The priestess looked up at me as if she wanted to say something. What's wrong? Well. Um, I think you should get off the mountain if you can. Did you get attacked by an armored bear? I asked, and the swordsman boy answered, No, it was a huge spider-like monster. It was big and fast, and we were no match for it. Dot maybe it's a black spider. The black spider is an A-plus danger level monster, and if it were real, it would be living farther into the mountains. The girl added, But somehow, it seems to have made its way out to this area. When I asked them about the situation in detail, they told me that they were new adventurers who had just become E rank. Today, they were visiting Fato's mountain for a gathering quest. It was a job that was appropriate for their rank and should have been less dangerous. However, they had the misfortune of running into a black spider. The black spider was much more powerful than the armored bear, and there was no way that either the boy or the girl would have survived. But then on a ranked adventure I happened to pass by. She was a woman from the Dragon Folk tribe. I think her name was Iris. I was a little surprised when a name I knew suddenly came up. The first impression of Iris was that she was an indifferent and cold woman, but she was kind at heart and quite good-natured. It seemed that she confronted the black spider single-handedly to let the boy and girl escape while she fought it. It is said that about 15 adventurers of B rank or higher are needed to defeat the black spider. The priestess muttered with a dazed expression. Iris San was badly injured because she protected us, and I'm sure that by now, dot I wonder about that. The body of the dragon folk tribe was much stronger than that of ordinary humans. Iris might still be alive. Then maybe I should go and help her. It is possible that it is too late, of course, but I want to believe in her survival. Do you know where the black spider is? Just give me a general direction. I asked and the boy pointed across the fountain. Over there. Don't tell me you're going to. I'll go find Iris. You two go down the mountain first. Kusan, that's impossible. It's too dangerous. I'm not trying to fight the black spider. It will be fine. But, the boy looked at the girl with a troubled expression as if asking for help. But what came out of the girl's mouth were not words to persuade me. I understand. We will go down the mountain and ask for help from the Adventurer's Guild. Please take care of Aris San. Eh? Wait a minute. The boy made a puzzled voice. Why didn't you stop him? In the first place, we don't even know if the Adventurer Iris is still alive. I heard the voices of the spirits. They said that we should let Kusan go. The priestess told him in a clear voice. Dot spirit. Spirits had a familiar presence in fantasy anime and games, but its position varied greatly from one work to another. What kind of existence is a spirit in this world? When I tilted my head, the priestess immediately answered my question. Spirits are invisible beings that control various natural phenomena. I have a skill called, Spirits Guidance, and sometimes the spirits call out to me. Dot we've been saved by their, Spirits Guidance many times before. The boy muttered to himself, if the spirit says so, I won't stop you anymore. But please don't overdo it. Please be careful, Kusan. May the gods and spirits bless you. Thank you, both of you. I'll be back. I thanked them both and left, with the armored bear Armosh hearing enhancement in effect, 
I continued along the mountain path. Iris, please, please stay alive. A cold sweat slipped down my right cheek. The worst case scenario flashed through my mind, but I told myself that it would be okay. I thought I was the calm and cautious type, but it seemed that I was mistaken. I guess I just haven't encountered anything that would shake me up until now. Ah, I think I just heard someone's voice from my left. I better go check it out. In my experience, it's better to follow my instincts in such cases. I turned to the left and continued my search for Iris, looking for signs in my surroundings. Soon, the landscape around me began to turn a little more disturbing. The trees were torn to shreds, and the corpses of lonely wolves were lying everywhere. Was this the result of the black spider's rampage? As I continued, I found an extraordinary sight. It was an open area. Most of the trees had been cut down from the roots and at the far end of the clearing. About thirty meters from here, Iris was lying on the ground. A pool of blood spreads out around her. Ugh. I could hear her breathing painfully. It seemed that Iris was still alive. I continued to be vigilant as I approached her, step by step. To be honest, I wanted to run to her right now, but I considered the possibility of a trap. And I was right. I was about fifteen meters away from Iris when I felt my feet shake violently. I jumped back reflexively and saw something crawling out of the ground with a cloud of dust. It was a giant spider, about the size of a light truck, with sharp fangs peeking out from its mouth. Could this be the black spider? I immediately activated my, appraisal. Black spider, a giant spider-shaped monster. It is highly intelligent and hunts its prey with a speed that is unimaginable from its huge body. Its body is covered with a special shell that makes it extremely resistant to magic. The paralyzing poison secreted from its fangs is very powerful, so be careful. The thread it spits out of its mouth is extremely viscous but can be specially processed to become a high-grade material for clothing. As for the black spider, it must have been hiding in the ground with the intention of ambushing anyone who came to save Iris. That's smart for a monster. That's what I'd call an A-plus danger level monster. Share. With a cry, the black spider moved. It closed the distance with an unimaginable speed from its huge body. It bore its fangs, and tried to bite me. You. Of course, I'm not going to be beaten silently. I took out the wooden sword from my, item box, and activated. Dexterity. The slash that I launched as a counter, however, was dodged with a flutter. The black spider's movements were as light as a butterfly. I didn't let down my attack. I stepped in and slashed it in succession. Some of the slashes inflicted shallow wounds on the black spider, but they were far from fatal. Tch. I couldn't help but click my tongue. My objective was to rescue Iris. She's been injured quite badly. She needed to be treated as soon as possible. With that in mind, I didn't have time to play around with the black spider, but the fight was becoming a back and forth stalemate. If this continued, I wouldn't be able to heal her in time, so I had to settle this quickly. Sheer, but my attack failed to deliver a decisive blow, and on the contrary, I was met with a counterattack. It was a physical attack that took advantage of a momentary gap. I could not defend or evade and was flung away by the black spider's huge body. My body slammed into the ground, rolling over and over and eventually crashed into the base of a nearby tree. The impact was so severe that the bones of my entire body could have been torn apart, but the damage was not so severe. Thanks to the defensive performance of the armored bear armor and having my body strengthened by the level up, the only damage I sustained was that I had to let go of my Hykena wooden sword. The weapon had fallen about five meters away. I was about to stand up immediately when the black spider lifted its body and released a white thread from the tip of its tail. It was as sticky as bird lamb and stuck to my body. The thread was also entangled in the tree behind me. I tried to get out but I couldn't. I was in a crucifixion-like situation. Share. The black spider roared in delight. I've got you. It felt like it was saying that. I look for a way to escape, but my body doesn't move a muscle. Meanwhile, the black spider was right in front of me. Sharp fangs peeked out from its large mouth. Once that thing is thrusted into my throat, I'm sure I wouldn't be able to survive. It is said that when a human being is about to die, their concentration increases to the extreme in order to survive. I was in that very state right now. Everything seemed to slow down. Thoughts are sharpened and accelerated, and time is stretched to infinity. In this moment that seemed like an eternity, my mind drifted back to the moment after I had been transported to another world. I touched the hyena tree and stored it in there, item box. There, item box, 
can store any object that is in contact with my body. If so, then maybe. Dot. It was a close call. I evaded the black spider's fangs just in time and rolled around on the ground to get away from it. The thread that had been attached to my body and the tree behind me disappeared from the spot without a trace. As for what I did, the answer is simple. I stored everything in my item box. I wasn't sure if it was actually possible, but apparently, the goddess of fortune hadn't given up on me yet. Share. The black spider's eyes glazed over and it let out a surprised grunt. That's good. Now let's fight back. I picked up the Hykena wooden sword that had fallen to the ground and I noticed a large red spear lying near it. It's Iris's spear. I picked it up as well. I want to help your master, so please help me. I held the wooden sword in my left hand and the large spear in my right. Of course, I have activated my dexterity. I closed the distance at once and unleashed the slash. I avoided the black spider by a hair's breadth, but by that time, I had already moved on to my next attack. A spear thrust. It gouged deeply into the black spider's body. Kiai. A scream echoed. I didn't let down on my attacks. I slashed with my sword and pierced with the spear. Every time I did, Blood splattered from the black spider's body. The struggle I had just endured before seemed like a lie. Perhaps its impatience for the match had prevented it from exercising its true abilities. S-H-H-H-H-H-H-H. The black spider, perhaps realizing its disadvantage, jumped back. It turned its back on me and tried to run away. Dot as if I would let you escape. I took a running start and threw the iris spear. It flew in a magnificent parabola pierced the black spider's body from above at an angle, and plunged into the ground. Kiai, the black spider screamed in agony. It was stitched to the ground by Iris's spear and could not leave the spot. This is the end. I swing down the Hykena wooden sword. The black spider was sliced in half on both sides and died. Immediately after that, an inorganic voice sounded in my head. With this experience gain, you are now level 24, your HP and MP will increase and your physical abilities will improve. Since you have reached the specified level, a new skill, auto mapping, has been unlocked. Apparently, a new skill had been unlocked. This was the other world's version of a map application, and when activated, a semi-transparent window appeared in front of me, displaying a map of the surrounding area. If I specified a destination, it seemed to be able to guide me along the route. Normally, I would have tried various things, but I had more important things to do right now. I turned off, auto mapping, and hurried over to Iris. She was still alive, albeit barely. Her breathing was shallow, and it was clear that she was on the verge of death. If she weren't treated immediately, she would die soon. Dot let's do that. In my, item box, I had a stockpile of potion ingredients. If I used it all up, I might be able to save Iris. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 8 Part 1 Here's the chapter, enjoy, ed, blast. Chapter 8, I tried to save Iris's life. Part 1 I activated, creation, and created a heal potion from the wet moss and nose grass. The granted effects were increase recovery amount S plus and increase recovery speed S plus which would take effect immediately. It was stored into a water bag, and when I took it out of my, item box, I immediately sprinkled it on Iris' body. From that point on, it was like a miracle. As soon as the heal potion seemed to have permeated through her body, the scars disappeared from Iris' entire body. Ah, ah, ku. Iris regained her consciousness. She opened her eyes slightly and looked at me. Please run. The black spider is. Even at a time like this, she's still worried about others. She's really a nice person, isn't she? It's fine. I've already killed it. More importantly, how's your body? I can't move my hands. Or my legs because of the poison. Iris's words were stuttering, indicating that her tongue was not working properly. It was probably due to the black spider's paralysis venom that still lingered in her blood. I used, creation, to make a detoxification potion with the wet mushroom and the lilium herb and took it out of my, item box. Just like before, it was already placed in a water bag, and then I brought it to Iris' mouth. Drink this. The poison should disappear. I told her that, and she nodded. She put her lips on the edge of the water bag. MMM. Her throat was moving slowly. I tilted the water bag, careful not to have Iris choke. It took about three minutes for Iris to drink the potion down, which was about a cupful. How's it going? Can you talk? Why yeah. It's amazing. 
The poison is really gone. Iris opened and grasped with her right hand while she had a look of surprise on her face. It seemed that there was no problem with her body movements. Thank you, Ku. I really appreciate your help. I owe you big time for this. Don't worry about it. You gave me a lot of advice yesterday, didn't you? I'm only returning the favor. I was merely a guide on the quest but Ku saved my life. That's not fair. Then take me out to dinner sometime. Are you asking me out on a date? Dot, huh? What are you saying all of a sudden? It's a little too sudden for my brain to follow. It's a joke. Dot, I was trying to lighten the mood, but it's not something I'm used to doing. Iris was talking a little fast. Perhaps she was embarrassed. I felt like we'd gotten to know each other much better than when we first met. A flock of crows flew over our heads. They were cawing fluently. The sun was tilted to the west, and the sky was tinted red. It's already evening. Let's go back to the city. We don't want to stay out in the open, after all. I agreed with her. Too much had happened today, and I wanted to get a good night's sleep in my bed. It's a long way to the bottom of the mountain, and if we're going to go down, we should move quickly. Iris, can you stand up? Yes, I'm fine. Kai I don't know what to say. Iris staggered to her feet but lost her balance. She lost a lot of blood, so she probably hadn't regained her strength yet. She fell towards me, so I held her in my arms. I I'm sorry. It's going to be hard to walk, isn't it? Perhaps we could wait until she regained her strength, but if we did that, it would be night time. The conclusion was that I would have to carry Iris down the mountain on my back. I really owe you a lot. I'm sorry. It's no big deal. We, adventurers, are supposed to help each other, aren't we? Uh, um. I wonder if I'm too heavy. No problem. You're rather light. Even without the armored bear armor apostrophe s. Monstrous strength s plus Iris's body was extremely slender, and I was reminded once again that she was a woman. Her soft breasts are touching my back. If it had been me from when I was in college, I'm sure my ears would have turned bright red. Come to think of it, you defeated the black spider, didn't you? It wasn't a one-hit kill like with the armored bear, though. That's just natural. The black spider is one of the strongest of the A-plus danger levels. You can't compare it to an armored bear. Dot rather. I'm surprised that you went to fight it alone. Aren't you afraid? I was so preoccupied with saving Iris. I didn't think about anything else. Dot is that so? Iris murmured and buried her face in my left shoulder. What's wrong? It's nothing. Dot but thanks. It was about an hour later that we reached the bottom of the mountain. The sun was already setting, and the sky was turning indigo. We managed to get through the mountains. As for Iris, she was probably at her limit from fatigue and was sleeping on my back. You, Sua. It would be awful to wake her up, so I'll just let her sleep. I chuckled and started walking down the road. When the walls of the city of Un came into view, we came across a group of adventurers. There were about twenty of them, all carrying torches in their hands. They looked as if they were going hunting in the mountains. Oh, it's the bear killer. And he's with the dragon folk Neen. They're both safe. That's a relief. Well, well. Thank goodness. Dot according to the story, this group of adventurers were on their way to rescue Iris and me. What happened to the black spider, by the way? Could it be that you've killed it? No, 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 that would be reckless. But maybe, just maybe. Dot how's it? The adventurers looked at me with a strangely expectant look in their eyes. It's not something to hide, so I'll answer honestly. I've killed the black spider. So please don't worry. Seriously? You've got some skills. Huh. Isn't this the first time in history that a black spider has been killed solo? That's amazing. You're so amazing, bear killer. No, spider killer. Dot spider killer sounds weak, so please continue to use bear killer. No, the very existence of the title is embarrassing in the first place, so please call me by my name. The adventurers return to the guild ahead of us to report on the survival of Iris and me and the subjugation of the black spider. I walked through the city gates with Iris the sleeping princess, on my back and leisurely strolled through the well-lit streets at night and finally reached the adventurer's guild. When we entered the lobby, I found the swordsman boy and the priestess waiting for us. Kusan, thank goodness, you're safe. As I thought, the spirits were right, but I'm really relieved that you're not injured. Both of them were really worried about me, weren't they? When I went to the counter, I found Milia sitting there just like she did this morning. I wondered if she had been waiting for me. Welcome back, Kusan. Melia greeted me with a gentle smile that seemed to encompass everything. Just by looking at her smile, 
my tense feelings began to melt away. A warm feeling spread in my chest. Dot I'm back, I told her, and she nodded happily. Thanks for finishing the quest. Would you like to eat, or would you prefer a bath instead? It was the same light conversation as usual, and it gave me a sense of security. It made me feel at ease and ascertained that the battle had ended and things were back to normal. Let me report on the quest first. You're very serious, huh, Kusan? Well, that's a good thing. Milia gave a small chuckle and stood up from her seat at the counter. I've heard about the black spider from other adventurers. You must be tired, so let's go upstairs to the reception room for further details. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 8 Part 2 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Part 2 By the way, Iris was still asleep on my back, but I heard that one of the guild's dormitory rooms was open, so I decided to let her sleep there for the time being. Now that I was free, Milia took me to the reception room. The reception room was covered with red carpet, with a black table in the center and a large sofa on either side of it. All of them had an air of luxury about them. Please feel free to sit down. The sofas here are very fluffy, you know. As Milia had said, the sofa was extremely comfortable. I almost fell asleep if I wasn't attentive. I'd like to hear your report. But before that, I'd like to tell you one of my secrets. Milia said and took out a small silver metal plate from her uniform pocket. It was an Adventurer's Guild employee identification card. Just like the Adventurer's registration card, it contains information such as name, age, and gender. Dot she seemed to be embarrassed to let me know her age, so she covered it with her finger. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty one slash oh nine slash oh 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 three five dot jpg. But what caught my attention more than that was her position. Assistant branch manager, Adventurers Guild, on branch. I couldn't believe my eyes when I read this, it was so unexpected. Assistant branch manager, that's quite a high position, isn't it? Foo foo. I'm glad you were surprised, Kusan. I'm actually the second most important person in this branch. Right now the branch manager is on a business trip, so I am also the acting branch manager. So I'm practically the head right now. You're the head of the branch, and you're still working as a receptionist. The receptionist job is more like a temporary position to hide from the public eye, or rather, I'm just helping out. Once the manpower shortage is solved, Things will be a little easier for me. Milia stretched out as she sighed. She looked like an innocent little girl, and to be honest, I couldn't believe that she was the assistant branch manager. R, there's no need to be so formal. Please just treat me as you usually do, as Milia, the receptionist. It is my sincere intention to reveal my identity to you. Dot thank you very much for subjugating the black spider. If it weren't for you. Not only Iris San but many other adventurers would have lost their lives. On behalf of the Arn branch, I would like to express our heartfelt gratitude. Milia stood up from the sofa and bowed her head deeply and profoundly. Her face was dignified and composed, and she exuded the air of a top executive. She was a totally different person than she was a few minutes ago. Now, that is enough with the formal introduction. I mean, ahem, well, well. Let's end the formal introduction. Melia cleared her throat and put on her usual friendly smile. I guess that meant she switched from the assistant branch manager mode to the receptionist mode. Kusan, please tell me about your activities today. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, it's going to be a long story. I went on to explain what had happened since I left the guild this morning. Melia had a pile of papers in the reception room and took careful notes of what I was saying. Halfway through. When I started talking about the pack of lonely wolves, Milia tilted her head. It's kind of strange, isn't it? They are called lonely wolves because they don't form packs. Maybe it has some unknown traits. I think I should report it to headquarters. Agreed. Do you need any information to report it? How many were in the pack, and how many did you take down, Kusan? I killed every last one of them. The total number in the pack was... Probably more than 2,000. 2,000? Milia shouted in surprise. Well, of course. If I were in her shoes, I wouldn't be able to believe it either. You fought them alone? Dot I'm sorry, can I check your subjugation records? Of course. Check it out. Oh okay. Please wait a moment. Milia got up from the sofa and walked out of the reception room. She returned about five minutes later. She held a bundle of black paper in her left hand and a purple crystal ball in her right. When she returned to the sofa, 
She spread out one of the sheets of paper on the table. It was about the size of an A4 sheet of paper. She then placed the crystal ball so that it was in contact with the top edge of the paper. Kusan, can you put your hand here? Like this? Following Milia's instructions, I touched the crystal ball. Then, with a buzzing sound, my whole body was enveloped in purple light. Thank you very much. Please stay like this for a while. The crystal ball shook slightly, and white letters appeared on the black paper. It was my subjugation record. Lonely Wolf, Male. 2048. When I looked at the numbers again, I was surprised to see that it was such a large pack. I'm amazed at how I managed to survive. There really are more than 2,000 of them. Milia muttered in amazement. It's really surprising that the lonely wolf made such a large pack, but Kusan wiped them out by himself, right? What on earth are you? Are you a messenger of God? Even if you say so. I'm still me, dot at any rate. I understand now that Kusan is a non-standard existence. Next, can you tell me about the black spider? The explanation about the black spiders went smoothly. It was because the boy swordsman and the priestess had reported to her in advance. The only question that came from Milia was the part about saving Iris. It is said that there is no cure for the black spider's paralysis poison. Dot what kind of medicine did you use? What kind of medicine was it? Well. It was just an ordinary detoxification potion. However, my skills are a bit special, so I can create items with much higher quality than normal. I understand. Please tell me more about your skills another time. If you don't mind, may I analyze the detoxification potion that Kusan made? Perhaps we can create a special potion against the black spider's poison. Of course, there was no reason to refuse. I created a detoxification potion immediately, put it in a water bag and handed it to Milia. When I finished my report, Milia bowed her head again. Thank you for your report. Dot by the way, Kusan's adventurer rank will be upgraded tomorrow evening. Please look forward to it. Tomorrow evening, that's very specific timing. There's a management meeting of the UN branch at noon. Kusan's career as an adventurer is still short. But you should be able to pass the examination for rank advancement with this achievement. In fact, I'll let you pass. That's very encouraging. I was well aware of the fact that Milia's excellent at her work, but she's even serving as the assistant branch manager now. With that in mind, it was safe to expect a rank increase. In addition, the Adventurers Guild will pay a reward for subjugating a monster with a danger level of A or higher. For a black spider, it's worth 500,000 coms. Dot isn't that too much? When it comes to black spiders, we usually gather a subjugation party of a rank adventurers. The amount of 500,000 comza is based on the assumption that it would be distributed amongst the subjugation party. However, since Kusan defeated it alone, you will have to take it all by yourself. Wait a minute, isn't there any share for Iris? Iris sacrificed her own life to save the lives of two new adventurers. There should be a reward for that. Ah. I forgot to mention that. I'm sorry. We're going to pay a reasonable amount of money to Aris San as well. The Adventurers Guild rewards good deeds. Milia said she would compile the report immediately. It would take her until midnight to complete the report, and it sounded like a lot of work. When I asked her if there was anything I could do to help, she replied, You should get some rest, Kusan. Your body is your asset as an adventurer. I guess she was concerned about me. I'm grateful for that. On a side note. They would also discuss the reward for defeating the Armored Bear at tomorrow's meeting. But that was before I was registered as an adventurer, so I'm sure it will be difficult. I guess I'll be lucky if I receive a reward and I should not expect too much. I left the reception room, went down the stairs, and returned to the first floor lobby, where I found a man with silver-rimmed glasses standing there. He was the instructor who was in charge of my registration test. His name was Jai San. I think. I've heard about your achievements, Kukun. Dot to defeat a black spider single-handedly, you might be a once in a decade or even a once in a century talent. You're selling me too high. Next time I fight, I might lose. In fact, the victory this time was quite a close call. If it hadn't been for a last minute flash of inspiration, I would have been eaten by the black spider. You are so humble. You're quite a man at such a young age. I'm 29 years old. You know, I'm not young. For a middle-aged man like me, you're still a young man. Anyway, do you have anything to do now? No, I'm going to have dinner somewhere and then return to the inn. That's just fine. In fact, at the nearby Golden Bear restaurant, 
the adventurers are holding a party to celebrate the subjugation of the Black Spider. However, it would be boring without the protagonist. If you don't mind, would you like to come? Of course, I'd like to come. Dot or rather, I'm sorry. You've been waiting for me here for a long time, haven't you? No, 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 I was just finishing up some paperwork a few minutes ago. Don't worry about it. Let's go then. Everyone is looking forward to your arrival. When the instructor took me to the Golden Bear restaurant, I found that there was a tremendous celebration going on. Not only the adventurers, but even the city's residents were gathered together excitedly. I knew the people of this world were in high spirits. One of the adventurers noticed my arrival and shouted, Oh, oh, oh you guys, here comes the star of the day. It's the bear killer. Kusan, the bear killer, is here. Clear the way. Yeah, we've been waiting for you, Un's hero. I sat down at a vacant seat, drawing the attention of the whole restaurant. Across the table from me sat the priestess. Um, ah. Uh, Thank you for your help in defeating the Black Spider. Don't mind it. By the way, where's that guy that was with you? He was looking forward to meeting you, Kusan, but he got completely drunk. The girl glanced to her right. I also looked in the direction. The swordsman boy was leaning against the wall of the restaurant, comfortably asleep. The girl and I looked at each other and shrugged our shoulders with a wry smile. Dot the atmosphere was friendly at first, but from then on, it was very hectic. After all, I was currently the topic of conversation as the bear killer. The adventurers came to see me one after another. I've heard a lot about your work. Well, have a drink. You beat the black spider all by yourself, right? That's really impressive. Foo foo. They call you that, but you've got a nice face. Do you want to play with an in here? Dot a. 29 years old? You're older than me. E e excuse me. Although I had never talked to any of them before, I was able to get to know them quickly probably because we had all been drinking. It may sound a bit abstract, but I felt as if I was accepted as a member of the city. We had a good time, and when the clock on the restaurant wall turned 11 in the evening, Iris appeared at the entrance of the restaurant. She must have been asleep in the guild's dormitory, but she seemed to have woken up earlier than expected. Immediately, the restaurant went silent. Everyone had a puzzled look on their face. It seemed that it's true from what I heard about Iris being avoided. Now, what should I do? I got up from my seat and shook the sleeping swordsman boy from his seat by the wall. MMM, A.K. Kusan? I I'm sorry. I drank too much. That's okay. Iris is coming. She's the one who saved you from the black spider, right? Oh, why yes. I'm going to go say my gratitude to her. The boy hurriedly stood up and rushed over to Iris. The priestess followed suit. Iris San. Thank you very much for today. T thank you so much. The two of them bowed together. Iris was not expecting this development, and her gaze wandered around as if she was confused. I thought I should give them a helping hand. I picked up my glass, a clean glass that no one had sipped from yet, and with a bottle of wine I headed over to Iris. Iris, thanks for your help today. Anyway, have a drink. A. Ah, yeah. Iris still didn't seem to understand the situation but I forcefully handed her a glass and poured her a generous amount of wine. I poured the rest into my own glass and turned around to look around the restaurant. The adventurers and residents were all looking at me. Everyone, listen up, I shouted, feeling nervous under their stares. I'm not the only hero today. Iris was the only one who helped them escape from the black spider by taking on the role of a decoy. Dot cheers to her courage. I shouted and downed my glass of wine in one gulp, and the people also shouted. Cheers. Hopefully, this will be a good opportunity for Iris to be accepted by everyone in the city. An hour or so later, at midnight, the drinking party was over. Other adventurers and residents were also talking to Iris, so I could say that it went just as I had planned. However, there was one thing I didn't calculate. It seemed that Iris was not a strong drinker, and her gait was suspicious. When we toasted, she drank all the wine in her glass which was apparently fatal. I was worried that she might not make it home safely, so I decided to walk her home. I'm sorry. I owe you again. I don't mind this much. It's not far from your house, is it? I appreciate the walk, but that's not all. Dot you took care of a lot of things for me just now, didn't you? I wondered if she was referring to the toast I had just made. Thank you. I'll never forget what you did for me today. Iris House was an elegant single-family home. It seemed to be a rental property owned by the Adventurers Guild. After we parted at the door, 
I decided to walk back through the vicinity of the Adventurer's Guild. The lights of the building were already dimmed. Milia must have finished her work and gone home. It seemed like a tough job to be the assistant branch manager, so I might as well give her a gift some other time. When I returned to my room at the inn, I felt a rush of exhaustion. I couldn't even muster up the energy to take a bath. I laid down on my bed and closed my eyes. Good night and see you tomorrow. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 9 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 9 I tried to take a bunch of quests in the city. About 10 days have passed since then. I've gotten used to life in Arn to a certain extent, but there have been some changes. First of all, my adventurer rank. Originally, I was ranked F, but as recognition of my achievements up to this point, I skipped the E rank and became a D ranked adventurer. Usually, it takes three months to advance from F to E, and another year to advance from E to D. Milia said, This is the fastest promotion in history. Isn't that amazing? She was as happy as if it were her own rank. I think it's okay to jump up to rank C when it comes to Kusan's ability, but there are many complications with going from D to C. In order to become a C rank, you need to complete several specific quests according to Milia. For example, you need to complete 50 subjugation quests, 50 gathering quests, 20 town quests, and so on. Town quests are jobs to do with anything in town, such as helping with the expansion of Un, cleaning up ditches, and even working as a waiter or chef at the Golden Bear restaurant. It doesn't seem like the kind of work you'd expect to find from an adventurer. But I guess the Adventurers and the Adventurers Guild are trying to improve their image by doing community-based work such as this. Incidentally, I've been doing a lot of town quests lately. This is partly because it's a requirement for C rank, but it's also to learn the common sense of this world. No matter how many times I did subjugation and gathering quests, I could never acquire common sense. Although the rewards for the town quests are low. I'm not having trouble earning a living at the moment. This is because the Adventurers Guild paid me their rewards for killing an armored bear, as well as the black spider. The total was about 800,000 comza. That's a hell of a lot of money. Now, the first job of the day was to help out at the Golden Bear restaurant. I found out when I started working there that the owner is a former adventurer who opened the restaurant with the aim of making it a place for adventurers, and operated by adventurers. Oh, brother bear? Did you come to help us again today? Good morning, owner. Please take care of me. I told you already, you don't need to be so polite. It's fine for adventurers to be pompous, you know. At any rate, go to the kitchen and prepare food until lunchtime. I'm counting on you. I understand. I mean, okay, just leave it to me. I opened my item box and took out a certain item. It's a male lonely wolf apron. The other day, I killed a lot of lonely wolf males and I used their fur to create this. The effects are cooking mastery s, cleaner mastery and laundry mastery a plus. I find it useful in many daily situations. I changed into my uniform in the changing room and wrapped the male lone wolf apron over it. My preparations are complete, and I'm off to the battlefield. In addition to the owner's wife, a blonde-haired female adventurer was also working on the preparation. Oh my, Kuchan. You came in today too. The owner's wife always has a smiling face, giving her the air of a kind old lady. However, she is very scary when she gets angry. Just the other day, she gave two adventurers a good beating when they started a fight in the restaurant and threw them out. Can you cut the vegetables first? With you here, the preparation will go faster. Understood. I'll do my best to live up to your expectations. Adventurers are not supposed to use polite language but I still can't get over my habit as a Japanese. Also, I can't help but feel uncomfortable talking to the owner's wife in a pompous manner. Yahoo! Kukai. The female adventurer was peeling potatoes, but she gave me a slight wave when she turned to me. It was the second time I had met this girl. We had met a few days ago in the kitchen of the Golden Bear restaurant. She seemed to be in a light-hearted mood but I heard that her dream was to become a wife. She says she is training to be a bride through a town quest in order to eventually get a nice husband. Her long blonde hair is tied up in a ponytail, and she wears an apron, giving her an adorable young wife look. What's up, Kukai? Could it be that you were gazing at me? Well, something like that. Foo fa foo, you're making me happy. I'll do my best today. The female adventurer hummed as she peeled the potatoes. I'll have to work hard, 
2. I picked up a knife. With the combination of, dexterity, and cooking mastery s, a master chef is born here. Woo -woo -woo. I must produced cabbage slices at an unbelievable speed, cut up the chicken for the fried chicken, and simmered the soup for the lunch service at the same time. I didn't cook much when I was in Japan, but it's surprisingly fun to try. Eventually, lunch time arrived, and as usual, the restaurant was immediately full. Orders came in rapid succession, and I took care of them one by one. You're really working fast, aren't you? I can't lose to you, too. I will wash all the dishes. Thanks to the diligent work of the female adventurer, we were able to get through lunchtime without incident. While I was enjoying the satisfaction of having finished my work, the owner brought me a meal to eat. This sandwich is a new menu item today. Let me know what you think later. Dot well. I guess it's easier to work with you, fair brother. Thanks a lot. As a thank you, I'll give you a generous reward for your quest. Is that okay? Of course. Good work deserves good pay. That's what makes a man worthwhile. The owner grinned. Good work deserves good pay. That's a phrase I'd like to hear from the management of my company before. Well, this completes the first quest of the day. Let's head to the next town quest. By the way, the owner's new sandwich was a so-called clubhouse sandwich. Toasted bread with lettuce, tomato, thinly sliced egg, and roasted chicken. The chicken was made from Arn's local chicken, and the taste was unquestionably excellent. The second town quest was to help with the expansion of the city walls. This is the fifth time I've been assigned this task. When I arrived at the foreman's office, I was greeted by a bearded man with great joy. He is a dwarf. A short cheerful man who specializes in blacksmithing and all things manufacturing. I've been waiting for you. I'll be counting on you again today. Okay. Can I get started right away? Yeah. All good. The population of Un is rapidly increasing, and it is becoming overcrowded. On top of that, the city walls are deteriorating, so the existing walls are being torn down for the town's expansion. In the past, the remnants of the walls had been disposed of in the mountains to the north, but that took a lot of manpower and time and there was also the possibility of encountering monsters. That's where I come in. If I collect the wreckage in my unlimited capacity, item box, everything will be fine. Incidentally, the wreckage may be used as a material for creation, so I'm keeping it instead of throwing it away. Of course, I've gotten permission from the foreman and his superiors. I have one more job to do. After I finished collecting the wreckage, I headed to the east side of the city. There were a bunch of dwarves workshops located here and they were producing bricks for the city walls. One of my tasks was receiving these bricks and carrying them to the site, another task where their item box was also very helpful. I'm always amazed by your item box. All those bricks disappeared in an instant. Thanks for all your hard work. Do you want to have something to drink before you go back to the site? I've got some good liquor here. Have a drink to cheer you up. I was grateful for the dwarves' kindness, but I was not comfortable with the idea of drinking alcohol while on duty. When I declined their hospitality in desperation, they said, Come visit us any time. We are always having a good drink at night. I'll pay them a visit one of these days. When I finished transporting the bricks, the foreman thanked me profusely. Thanks to you, the construction is going smoothly. We really appreciate it. Dot can you come back in three days for the next one? No problem. I'll keep my schedule open. Oh, that's great. I'll send out another quest for you. There'll be an extra reward, so make sure you take it. With this, I had completed all of today's town quests and returned to the Adventurers Guild. The lobby was still crowded with adventurers, and everyone was friendly and helpful. Yo! Doing town quests again today? I know it's necessary for rank advancement, but it's tough. So, do your best. I heard you were working in the kitchen of the Golden Bear restaurant. The soup was delicious. We exchanged a few words as I headed to the back of the office. At one of the counters was Milia, who smiled when she saw me. Welcome back, Kusan. How was your quest? It went well. Please put the reward in my guild account. The Adventurers Guild also offers banking services and accounts can be opened at D rank. The rewards for defeating Armored Bear and Black Spider. Approximately 800,000 Comza had been deposited in the guild's bank account. I understand. Then I'll put the rewards together for a total of 60,000 Comza into your account, Kusan. 60,000 Comza today alone, I've earned quite a bit. Basically, town quests are low paying, but when you get a special request for the town expansion project, 
The pay jumps several times higher than usual. It's a big job that requires a lot of manpower and time to collect debris and transport bricks, but it's easy for me to handle, so I guess they want to keep me around. This is the 20th time you've completed a town quest, which is enough for promotion to C rank, but if you'd like to continue to accept town quests, that would be great. This is just between you and me. Kusan has a very good reputation with the people in the city. You are also very polite. Work is work, you know. I don't cut corners. Fufu, I think they appreciate your seriousness. I'm happy for you. Milia has a very happy smile on her face. It was as warm as sunshine, and just looking at it blew away my fatigue from the day. However, I feel bad about interrupting her work, so I'm going to leave early. Well, I'd better get going. Yes, see you tomorrow. Goodbye. After saying our goodbyes, I left the counter. Just at that moment, a woman with red hair approached me. It's an A-ranked adventurer from the Dragon Folk. Iris Fafner. Good work, Ku. Are you done for the day? Yeah. What about you, Iris? I've just finished a quest myself. Dot um. Do you have any plans now? Would you like to have dinner somewhere with me? I'm not forcing you, of course. No, I'm fine with dinner. Good. At first glance, Iris's expression was plain as usual but her lips were slightly lifted. We'll go then. Is there anything you want to eat? Meat, I think. Actually, I'm in the mood for beef, not chicken. I know a good place for that. Follow me. Iris turned to leave the Adventurer's Guild with a light step. I started walking alongside her. Lately, Iris and I have been going out for dinner a lot. Or rather, almost every day. Iris always says, what a coincidence. Or I just finished my quest. But according to the other adventurers, she finishes her quests rather early and then waits for someone at the corner of the lobby, and by someone, I mean me. If I had been younger, I would have mistakenly thought that Iris might be interested in me, but, I think we're just genuinely friends. Iris led me to a small restaurant called Silver Stag Restaurant. The restaurant was crowded, but fortunately, we were able to sit down right away. As soon as we were shown to our table, I ordered the owner's recommendation. That a beef stew. Apparently, is the name of a town just east of here. The restaurant was crowded, but the food was brought out rather quickly. The beef was tender and pleasant to chew, and the sweet beef stew enhanced the flavor. In addition to the beef, there were carrots and broccoli, all of which were tender. Bread was included as a service, so I dipped it in the leftover beef stew and savored it. Dot it's good. No complaints. I'm glad you like it. Iris ordered the same dish, and we finished almost at the same time. After the meal, we sipped sweet wine and chatted with each other. By the way, why did you come to this city? It's not like I had a purpose. It just happened. What about Iris? I'm, ah. Uh, Iris has been holding her tongue for some reason. Is this some kind of complicated situation? You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. It's not like that. Dot I'm looking for the ruins of an ancient civilization. Ancient civilization? A long time ago. There was an advanced magical civilization on this continent. They say that life was much more prosperous back then compared to now and that they were never threatened by monsters. I nodded at Iris' story, but inwardly I was a little excited. A highly developed ancient civilization is one of the most popular settings in fantasy. The ruins must be filled with over-technological ancient weapons. Just thinking about it makes my heart jump. The ancient civilization eventually perished but there are traces of it all over the continent. According to recent research, there is a huge underground city near Arn. So that's what Iris is looking for. That's right. There are some songs and documents that can give me a clue, and the scholars in the royal capital are looking into it, but I don't have a definitive location yet. If anyone discovers an underground city, it will go down in history. History or not. An ancient civilization sounds interesting. I drank the rest of the wine in my glass and activated, auto-mapping, in a slightly drunken mood. This is a new skill that was unlocked when I defeated the black spider before. A semi-transparent window appeared in front of me, displaying a map of the area around Arn. What's that pale blue thing? It's a map of the area. Do you want to see it? Is that okay? Then I'll take up your offer. At this point, we were sitting facing each other in a four-seater. But Iris got up and sat down next to me. Our shoulders lightly touched each other. Iris seemed to have been drinking, and her white nape, exposed and unprotected, was tinged with a light red. What's wrong, Q? Dot nothing. I turned my gaze to the map window. By the way, auto-mapping, is quite multifunctional. You can specify the destination, 
and it will guide you to the route. I said, almost jokingly. Tell me the location of the underground city. Oh, well, if it were that easy, no one would have any trouble. Dot. I couldn't help but be puzzled. The window showed a map of the southeastern forest. Of Cello Forest, with a blue dot of light marking the far end of the map. Just above the light spot, there was a note that was written, Entrance to Number Zero Underground City. Iris and I looked at each other. Iris, what do you think? Dot if there really is an entrance to the underground city, it would be an amazing discovery. Do you want to try it out tomorrow? Yes, let's do it. We decided to call it a night and get some rest. Tomorrow. We will meet at the Adventurers Guild at 9 in the morning. I have to be sure not to be late. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 10 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 10 I tried to defeat the Danger Level S rank. The next morning was a pleasant, sunny day. There are four seasons in this world as well and a solar calendar with 365 days in a year is used. It is now the end of September. I opened the window and felt a cool autumn breeze blowing in. I stretched and got ready for the day. I will be going out of the city today, and I might have to fight a monster so I would need protective gear. I opened my item box, and selected the armored bear armor and one more thing. The black spider's gauntlet. It's a black gauntlet. It was created by dismantling the corpse of the black spider and then creating it from the parts. There are two effects that come with it. Colon magic absorption S plus and black spider thread X. The magic power absorption S plus raises the defensive performance of the gauntlet, and if it is hit by an attack imbued with magic power, it can absorb it as its own magic power. The Black Spider Thread X is a special effect. It consumes the magic power to refine a sticky spider thread that can be used to restrain the enemy. I was once given a town quest to perform a night patrol and it was helpful in apprehending burglars. And now, I checked my appearance in front of the mirror. I've adjusted my sleeping habits and shaved. My armor and gauntlet were spotless. All set, let's go. Outside the inn, the morning sun greeted me dazzlingly. The cloudless sky was refreshing. There's plenty of time before the scheduled meeting time, so I decided to have breakfast at the Golden Bear restaurant. Today, I decided on the local chicken egg sandwich. The egg roll was thick, and the sweet flavor spreaded onto my palate as I bit into it. It was delicious. As I was about to leave the restaurant, I was approached by the owner, Oyaji San. It's you, huh, bear brother? Are you going on a quest outside the city today? Yeah. Something like that. Then take this with you. You need it for lunch, right? Oyaji san handed me a square package. It was about the size of a lunchbox and felt warm. You don't have to pay for it. You've always been a big help to me, so I'm giving you a special bonus to show my gratitude. But in return, you have to come back another time and help me prepare the food again. Okay, I'll see if I can find another opportunity to do your town quest. All right then. Good luck. Oyaji san saw me off and I left the Golden Bear restaurant. I arrived at the Adventurers Guild at exactly 8.30 a.m. Adventurers were gathering in the lobby. However, I couldn't find Iris among them. Well, there's still 30 minutes until the meeting time. I'm just too early. But that didn't mean that I came early for nothing. I turned my attention to the counter and saw Milia sitting there. She is the author of the Adventurer's Guidebook and knows a lot about the city of Un and its surroundings. I wonder if she knows anything about the underground city. Good morning, Kusan. As I expected, that armor really suits you. Thank you. By the way, Milia, there is one thing I want you to ask you. Do you have a minute? Yes, yes, what is it? I'll tell you as much as I can about the Adventurer's Guild, the truth of the world, and my private secrets. I know what she said about the truth of the world is a joke, but can I really ask about her private secrets? But I decided to ask a serious question. When I asked about the underground city, I got this answer. You're fascinated by the romance of ancient civilizations, aren't you? Men love that kind of thing don't they? I think it's very cute that you act like an adult but still have the heart of a boy. Cute. I don't really get it, but I guess that's the difference between men and women. I think there is a high possibility that an underground city exists in the vicinity of Arn, and the scholar of the royal capital is also regularly investigating it. Are you going to search for an underground city today, Kusan? How did you know? My instincts are often right. Personally, I think that the cello forest in the southeast is suspicious. What do you think of my speculation? It might even be right. Dot, huh? What's wrong, 
Kusan, you look like an armored bear with an acorn thrown at his face. Is that the otherworldly version of a so-called a pigeon shot with a pea shooter look? T slash N. The phrase a pigeon shot with a pea shooter is a Japanese idiom that means a look of shock, staring with wide eyes and an open mouth. In Japanese, the phrase is, Hato gamame depu o katuyu. Anyway, I was more than a little surprised. In any case, the entrance to the underground city indicated by, auto mapping, is, of course, in Cello Forest, a woman's intuition can never be underestimated. According to Milia, if we find the entrance to the underground city, we should inform the Adventurers Guild. Apparently, there is a considerable amount of money at stake. As I left the counter, Iris arrived just in time. The time was 8.45 am, and there were still 15 minutes until our meeting time. Good morning, Ku. I thought I was early but you were earlier than me. It's a habit of mine. I'm always here at this time, after all. Shall we go then? Yeah, please take care of me today. Dot huh? Ku, did you buy a new gauntlet for your arm? Iris said, looking at the black spider's gauntlet. No, I made this one myself. You made it yourself? Dot that's amazing. You could sell it for a lot of money if you wanted to. Do you know about it, then? I'm an A-rank adventurer. After all, I'm confident that I have a good eye for weapons and armor. Dot could it be that you use the black spider as material? That's right. If you give it your magic power, you can also make spider silk. You mean it's not only a protective gear but also a magic tool? It was only when I was told that I realized it, but it is true. I wonder if I've unknowingly created a ridiculous item. Ku, are you also a top-notch craftsman? It's not me that's amazing, it's my skills. Your skills are part of you? aren't they? I know you are humble, but I think you should be more proud of that. This feeling is unique to the other world, I should say. If I'm going to continue to live here, I'll have to come to terms with it little by little. Today's destination is the light dot on, auto mapping, which is located in the cello forest. We decided to leave on through the south gate and head east along the city road. Near the city walls, the dwarves were working on expanding the city, and when I walked by, they said, good morning, bear killer. Or are you on a quest? Good luck with that, Ku. You're quite popular, aren't you? Iris muttered with a chuckle. I've heard rumors about you everywhere I go in the city lately. You've been working pretty hard on your town quest, haven't you? I don't like to skimp on my work. I think that's a good attitude. Adventurers must be trustworthy, and no matter how good you are, if you're always untrustworthy, you'll never get a job. All right, I'll keep that in mind. That's important advice from a senior. After all, even though I'm your senior, it seems like you've already surpassed me in terms of ability. Well, I have a good amount of knowledge and experience, and if you have any questions, you can always ask me. I have one question for you then. What is it? Where do monsters come from, and how do they come to be? Lonely wolves have males and females, and they reproduce like animals. So what about armored bears and black spiders? There, appraisal didn't give any information about males or females, but is it just an emission, or does gender not exist? I'm curious. Monster is basically generated spontaneously. However, it seems that some species can have children. According to Iris's explanation, monsters spontaneously appear in places where there is a high concentration of magical elements. In the case of the lonely wolf, however, there are two types of individuals those born spontaneously and those born through breeding activities. This is just a rumor, but it seems that if a lonely wolf has procreated for many generations, it will revert to its ancestors' form and become a powerful individual. Do lonely wolves have ancestors? Yes, Fenra, a legendary monster from mythology. The lonely wolf is said to be related to it. Fenra is a monster from Norse mythology, and it's one of the most popular fantasy monsters. I guess they exist in this world. Too. I wonder if their fur is fluffy after all. As I let my imagination run wild, it wasn't long before we arrived at the cello forest. I activated, auto mapping, and checked the map. The light spot was marked about a kilometer to the southeast from here. So let's go there. We didn't encounter any monsters along the way, and the sun was shining brightly, so it felt like a picnic. After a while, we came to an open area. There, at the bottom of a sheer cliff, a rugged rock face awaited us. Coo. Are we almost there? Yes, we are. There should be an entrance to an underground city near here. Auto mapping, is still in effect. 
A semi-transparent window automatically follows me as I walk. The point of light on the map was just shining at the cliff. What do you think of this? Is there a hidden door somewhere in the cliff? Let's look around a bit. Iris tapped the rock wall with her right hand. She's probably listening to the echoes of the sound and looking for anything strange. I'll try it too. I activate the armored bear armor's granted effect. Hearing enhancement to and pay attention to even the smallest differences in sound. Knock knock. Knock knock, 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 tut. I heard a strange sound just now, at the place where I knocked. There was a rock about two times larger than my body. The shape is a vertical rectangle. I held both the left and right edges with my hands and used monstrous strength S plus to pull it out a little toward me. Could this be the entrance to the underground city? But the large rock in front of me was heavy. It was just so heavy, it was like a lump of steel. It's hard to move and I don't think I can break it with the weapons I have. I'm in trouble. When I'm struggling, Iris notices it and calls out to me. Koo, what's wrong? I found a suspicious place, but the rocks are blocking it. How about you put it in your item box? Dot that's it. I shouted out loud. Let's do it right away. As it turned out, it worked. After storing the large rock in my item box, I found a metal door hidden behind it. It glittered as if it was storing the sun's rays and it radiated a faint heat. This warmth, could it be the Orichalcum? Iris muttered next to me. Orichalcum is a name often heard in fantasy games and anime. It can be used as a material for the strongest equipment in some works. What kind of position does it have in this world? Orichalcum is a very rare metal. As if sensing my inner thoughts, Iris gave me an explanation. It's one of the best in terms of both physical and magical defense but its processing technology was lost with the collapse of ancient civilizations. At least with today's technology, it would be impossible to make a door like this. So you're saying that this door is a legacy of an ancient civilization? That's very likely. According to your map, this must be the entrance to the underground city, right? Maybe. I looked through the translucent window and saw that the point of light was aligned with the door. Let's go inside for now. Dot I said, but the surface of the door was flat and there was no door knob or handle. How do we open it? A little lower than my eye line. There were some kind of alphabet-like letters engraved on the surface. After looking at it for a while, full assist, was activated, and I was able to read it. May the spirit bless you, one who comes from a distant land. Right after I muttered that, the text disappeared, and I could hear a voice in my head. Dot status check complete. Welcome to number zero underground city, transmigrator. Kukauzuku-sama. In order to determine whether or not to grant you the right to master the underground city, we will now begin a quick test. What the hell is it talking about? As I was tilting my head, Iris raised her voice. Ku, behind you. When I turned around, I saw that something strange was happening about 15 meters away from here. A magic circle that looked like a combination of circles and triangles was floating on the ground and something was rising from it. It was a mechanical giant. It wore a full-face helmet on its head, and its large physique reminded me of a Roman gladiator. It was about three meters tall, and its entire body was wrapped in golden metal. Could it possibly be made of orichalcum? If that's the case, it will be a troublesome enemy. Let's use, appraisal, on it. Orichalcum Golem, a giant humanoid ancient magic weapon. It is equipped with armor made of orichalcum and has a rapid fire magic laser cannon in its right eye. It boasts the highest level of performance in both offense and defense. A bad premonition always comes true, but I hoped it would not be this time. This one is backed up against a cliff, so to speak, and is cornered. In the head of the orichalcum golem, two red eyes flashed with a cold glow from its whole body. Hello roaring vibrating motor sound resonates, target confirmed, begin elimination. When the electronic voice was sounded, it began to move awkwardly with a creaking sound. Dot I lacked as a decoy. Coo, at least you should escape. Iris took out a large spear from her pouch and took up a fighting stance. Her face was tight and dignified, and she had an awe-inspiring beauty. The Orichalcum Golem has a danger level of S, one level above the Black Spider. I fought one once before and it took 20 A-rank adventurers to defeat it. The two of us wouldn't stand a chance. I wonder about that. I took out the Hykena wooden sword from my item box, and held it in my right hand. You have to try everything to know. I'll think about whether or not to run away later. In the first place, 
Abandoning someone and surviving alone would be too bad of an aftertist. But, Iris was about to say something, but as if to interrupt her. The Orichalcum Golem began to attack. Its right eye shines brightly, and a red ray of magic laser is released. Dot. At that moment, I felt as if a switch was flipped in my brain. My concentration was raised to the limit, and time was stretched to infinity. With the acceleration of my thoughts, I had been in the same state during the battle with the Black Spider, but it seems that when we are in danger of death, we are able to perform at a higher level than usual. Right now, I have the Black Spider's gauntlet on my arm. The magic power absorption S plus that comes with it should be useful. I activated my dexterity and thrust my left arm out in front of me. I bent my elbow and took a defensive stance. The magic laser struck the black spider's gauntlet and it disappeared as if it had been sucked straight into it. Of course, I took no damage. I can do this. Coo. I'm fine, but tell me, how did you beat it last time? You had to aim for its eyes. That part of the eye isn't protected by the Orichalcum. That means we have a chance if we get close enough. The Orichalcum Gillum unleashes more magic lasers. But as long as I have the black spider's gauntlet, I won't take any damage. I used, dexterity, to block all of them completely. I'll be the shield. Iris, I'll prevent the attacks, so you should aim at its eyes. Dot I don't see any other way. Okay. Iris nodded. Her crimson eyes had a sharp glint of determination in them. If we can win this, it means that you are as strong as 19 A rank adventurers. It's a very interesting development. Dot let's go. I start running. Iris follows behind me. The Orichalcum Golem's magic lasers don't seem to be able to fire in rapid succession. And there were several seconds between each shot. I blocked all of them with my black spider's gauntlet and closed the distance between us. Eventually, when the distance between us had been reduced to about 5 meters, I shouted, Iris, I'm on it. In response to my call, Iris jumped out from behind me. Her supple feet kicked the ground, and she leapt high into the air. Her long red hair spread out softly. Hi uh, https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty one slash oh nine slash oh 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 four one dot jpg. It was a desperate attack that carried all her weight and speed. The thrusting spear crushes the right eye of the Orichal Gillum and makes its huge body cower. But it was too shallow. As soon as the Orichalcum Golem steps on the spot, it immediately regains its stance and tries to slam its right arm into Iris. I can't let you do that. I pointed my left arm at the Orichalcum Golem and focused on shooting the thread. Black Spider Thread Exis activated, and the sticky spider thread entangles the Orichalcum Golem's body and right arm. The right arm didn't move properly as it tried to swing down and the Orichalcum Golem lost its posture significantly. Now, uh, I took up Hykeno's wooden sword and jumped at the Orichalcum Golem. The thrust was almost like a physical attack. The wooden sword pierced the Orichalcum Golem's left eye and went straight into the head. I let go of the wooden sword and moved away. There was no counterattack by the Orichalcum Golem. Sparks were buzzing from the head, and eventually, the internal driving noise diminished. It fell to its knees on the ground and collapsed. It never moved again. Coo, did we win? Iris muttered and readied her spear. I also took out a spare wooden sword from my item box. Just then, I hear an inorganic voice in my brain. Your HP and MP have been increased, and your physical abilities have been improved. I've leveled up, which apparently means we've defeated the Orichalcum Gillum. The message in my head continues further. The quick test has been completed, confirmed achievement of defeating the Orichalcum Gillum. Transmigrator, Kakauzaka is granted mastership of the number zero underground city. Well, I don't know what that means, but does that mean I'm now the owner of an underground city? As I was thinking about this, the huge body of the Orichalcum Gillum disappeared in a flash. It seems that their automatic collection has been activated. When I checked the item box, I found that the Orichalcum Golem, Failure, X1 had been added. Dot, however, Iris has no idea about the automatic collection, so she is puzzled by the disappearance of the Orichalcum Golem. The Orichalcum Golem disappeared. What happened? I think it would be better if I explained this to her. When I explained about their automatic collection, Iris raised her voice in question. Wait a minute. How many skills do you have in total? Coo. You already have four skills. Item box automatic collection, the map skill, and the item creation skill. But at most, 
one should only have three skills, even if you say so. I don't understand it either. I have a lot of skills, and moreover, these skills are increased by leveling up when they should not be acquired. All of this doesn't fit in with the common sense of this world. Well, it's not the first time that Ku is out of the norm. But who exactly are you? Although you look like a human, you are clearly beyond the reach of the human race. Are you actually a messenger of the gods? I'm nothing special, just an ordinary guy with a lot of skills. If you were a normal human, you would have used me as a decoy to escape. Oh, by the way, I haven't thanked you yet. Iris put her spear back in her pouch and turned to me. Her crimson eyes stare straight at me. Thank you for protecting me, Ku. Thanks to you, I survived. I'm the one who should be thanking you. I might not have been able to win on my own. Neither could I have won alone, you know. Dot we were perfectly in sync, we could have made a great bear. Iris's mouth broke into a slight smile. Seeing that smile was probably the best thing about this battle. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 11 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Chapter 11 I stepped into the underground city. The fight with the Orichel Cumgulum was what I would describe as a fierce battle, but fortunately, neither Iris nor I were injured. I guess we don't need to use potions for this. By the way, I have a question. Iris raised her voice as if she had suddenly thought of something. Ku, are you by any chance a transmigrator? Dot is that a well-known skill? When I asked her back, Iris shook her head. It's not generally known and I don't know much about it either. The dragon folk has a law that talks about, transmigrator. They are uncommon beings who come from far away and possess a tremendous number of skills. I see. I nodded. I'm indeed a, transmigrator. Just don't spread it around too much, okay? Of course. It's considered illegal for adventurers to reveal other people's skills without permission. Dot if you don't mind me asking, what kind of place is Ku's hometown? I've heard it's deep in the mountains. But it's probably not on this continent, is it? Well, yeah. What would happen if I told her the truth about me coming from another world? Would she even believe me? If it were treated as a joke, I'd rather not be thought of as a crazy person. Because I was thinking about these things, I could only nod vaguely. It's a place so far away that Iris can't even imagine it. That's how it should be. Dot yeah, I see. She nodded as if she was convinced of something. After that, she bowed her head with an apologetic expression. I'm sorry, that's not something you want to talk about, right? Oh, no, it's nothing that's serious. It's just that there are so many things about where I'm from that it's hard to explain. It's okay, take it easy. I've had a lot of problems in my hometown, too, so we both have that going for us. By the way, Iris continues. Now that we've defeated the Orichel Kumgulum, why don't we go into the underground city? That's a good idea. Let's go there. We returned to the bottom of the cliff and stood in front of the metal door. Then, a mechanical voice came from the top of the door. Magic pattern authentication complete. Welcome back, master. Immediately after that, the door opened automatically with a buzzing sound. I'm familiar with facial recognition and fingerprint recognition. But this is the first time I've ever been authenticated with magical power. This kind of thing is very otherworldly, isn't it? I felt a bit amused and thought about the technological level of ancient civilizations. I heard that their magic technology was very developed, but what exactly was the level of technology? Was it on the same level as modern Japan? Or were they dipping their toes into the near future or science fiction? The underground city would probably have some traces left behind and there may be some amazing items lying around. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Beyond the door was a downhill tunnel. It was reasonably wide, so Iris and I could walk side by side. On the ceiling, there was a crystal ball embedded, which was emitting dim light. Iris, could that crystal ball be a magic tool? I think so. It's probably the original magic lamp. I've never seen one before either. Original? I parroted the question back to Iris and she immediately explained it to me. It seems that magic tools are made based on the heritage of the ancient civilization. The magic lamp is one of them, and it is one of the most common magic tools in circulation today. It is said that it is impossible to create a new magic tool with today's technology. Well, here is someone who has made the impossible possible though. Iris said as she looked at the black spider gauntlet on my hands. If you want to make a living as a craftsman but want to be an adventurer freely, it's best not to spread the word about your skills too much. If word gets out that you can make magic tools, 
you'll probably get into a lot of trouble. I'd rather not do that. If that's the case, then it's better to keep the item creation skill a secret as well. Sorry, you have to keep so many secrets for me. I don't mind. It's nice to share information privately, it's kind of like being in a close relationship. Iris smiled mischievously. By the way, the entrance called you master earlier didn't it? What does that mean? I was given the mastership when we defeated the Orichel Camgillum earlier. Dot well, I guess it doesn't matter if other people know about this. I think I might rather make it public and claim ownership. You could eat for the rest of your life just trading in your discoveries. You could even turn it into a tourist attraction. In that case, Iris and I will split the profits. Oh, why? We both fought the Orichel Camgillum, so we should share the profits. But you are the master of the ruins aren't you? Dot well, we'll figure out the shares later then. We went through the tunnel while exchanging small talk. The whole passage curved gently to the right and was long. After about 15 minutes of walking, we finally saw the exit in the distance. Dot is this the underground city beyond? I think that's probably it. Both Iris and I naturally started to walk faster. As we exited the tunnel, we were greeted by a surprising sight that we doubted our eyes. The sun was shining brightly. The breeze was refreshing. A vast grassland stretched on forever and ever. A little further away, a stream was flowing, glittering in the sunlight. Coo, we're supposed to be in an underground city, aren't we? Iris muttered in wonder. I can understand that feeling. The scenery around us was completely unlike anything underground, and I was beginning to wonder if we had been walked to another location above ground. However, if I look at the sky, I can see the stone ceiling peeking out from behind the cloud like white blur. I guess we are underground. Dot where is the city? As I looked around, I heard the sound of grass swaying, rustling, and rustling. It's getting closer and closer. Is it a monster? I took out my Hykena wooden sword and gave Iris a look. We didn't exchange a word. But there was something we could both understand. Iris nodded and stood right next to me with her spear at the ready. A tense atmosphere prevailed in the area. And then, W -ho -ho. No, no, no. I'm not a bad monster. In fact, I'm not even a monster. A mysterious translucent, chubby creature popped out from behind the grass with a cute, bell-like voice. It was round in shape and reached about the height of my knees less than 50 centimeters. If I were to apply my fantasy knowledge, it would resemble the so-called slime. I did an appraisal, and the results were as follows. Help a slime, a magical creature created by an ancient civilization. It is responsible for the management and operation of the number zero underground city. It has a high level of intelligence and lives to take care of others. Kukauzika is registered as its master. In other words, is the slime some kind of staff member of this underground city? At least it doesn't seem to be an enemy. When I put away my weapon, Iris followed suit and put her spear in her pouch. The slime trembled for a while, but when it realized that we were not hostile, it breathed a sigh of relief. Phew, I was so surprised. Nice to meet you, Master San. We're helpless slimes. We? Could it be that the one in front of me is not the only one? Just as I thought that. Dozens of slimes began to gather from across the grass. We were made for you, Master San. We've been waiting for you for 4,000 years. Do you need any help? I can clean, wash and cook. I'm good at construction. I'm good at plowing fields, raising cows and pigs, and digging mines. If you need anything in particular, just let me know. If you ever have any problems, you can always ask me. Nice to meet you. The slimes stretched their bodies a bit vertically and bowed their heads. I wonder if they were bowing to me. It's kind of a surreal scene. As I smiled, Iris was standing next to me with her eyes glittering. She walked over to the slimes, extended her finger, and poked them on the cheek. W ho -er. That tickles. A Nissan. Dot foo foo. Iris looked somewhat satisfied. However, this was not enough to get the conversation going. So I decided to stop it for a moment. What are you doing, Iris? Dot huh? Iris looked as if she had come back to herself, and then she quickly moved away from the slime. Her face was as red as an apple. I I'm sorry. Ah, uh, could it be that you like cute things, Iris? Dot I won't deny it. Iris muttered sulkily and averted her eyes with a pout. She might be embarrassed. It's kind of cute. When I was slightly relaxed. A slime jumped up and down at my feet and called out to me, Master San, Master San, do you mind if I explain about this underground city? Of course, please do. Yes, leave it to me. The slime stretched out his chest, 
a little proudly and began to speak cheerfully. This place was prepared as a shelter when there was trouble on the surface. Right now, there are too many grasslands for people to live here, but it's okay. We will be able to build a city from now on. Master San, you have full assist in your skills, right? Isn't it about time to finish the preparations? Preparation? What exactly is that? When I thought that, an inorganic voice echoed in my brain. The link with the underground city main system has been established by full assist. Status check complete. Kukauzuka is not a hero, demon king, or sage and possesses creation. The effect of creation will be extended as it meets the hidden conditions. In the next moment, some information flows into my mind. I see two features have been added to creation albeit with the condition that they are only available while staying in the underground city. To sum them up simply, it was something that would support city building. The first new feature of creation, it now automatically consumes my surplus magic power and creates items called building materials. Currently, I have 10,100 MP. Compared to the average magician, I have the magic power of 101 magician. That's a hell of a lot of MP. The recovery rate is 1% per second or about 101 MP per second. When my MP is full, this recovered 101 is wasted magic power, but it seems it can be converted into building materials. Currently, the building materials are increasing at a rate of 5 per second. By the way, here is the result of the appraisal of the building materials. Building materials, a set of materials that were used in the construction of ancient civilizations. You can't take them out of the item box, but you can use them as materials for creation, only when you are in the underground city. In fact, I had several recipes floating around in my mind. It seems that by consuming building materials, I can create a variety of buildings that existed in ancient civilizations. For example, one of the recipes is building materials x10 housing, small, x1. Up until now, creation, was only about weapons and armor, so it seemed as if the scale had suddenly increased. Putting that aside, let's try activating the, creation. Normally, the housing, small, would be added to their, item box, but this time it was a little different. A blue-white ball of light appears round my right hand and begins to drift around me. It looked as if it was waiting for instructions. Anyway, let's build it over there. When I pointed to a spot some distance away, the light ball began to move at a walking speed, and when it arrived there, it released a large flash of light. After the light disappeared, a two-story house was built there. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty one slash oh nine slash oh 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 two three dot jpg. This is the second new feature of creation. It allows me to place buildings in specified locations. I feel as if I am playing a city building game. This is interesting, I thought as I turned my gaze back to the slimes who were all rolling their eyes for some reason. M Master San, what was that? The slime at my feet spoke to me in a trembling voice. I wondered why it reacted in surprise. I used my skills to build a house. This is how you build a city, right? No, it's not. This is completely different. Different? I didn't mean to do anything crazy. Master San, have you unlocked a skill called, Construction Command? If yes, you should be able to use it to give us instructions on how to build the city. No, I don't have that skill. What's going on here? When I thought about it, full assist, was automatically activated to provide me with more information. If you fall under the category of a hero, demon king, or sage, construction command, will be added. Only if you do not fall under any of these categories and you possess, creation, the function of, creation, will be extended as a special exception. Apparently. My case is special. When I told the slime about this, it was even more surprised. M Master San, you have, creation. As I thought, it is a great skill, right? It's amazing. It's outrageous. Creation, is called God's skill, and only a really limited number of people can possess it. From this reaction, it seems that, creation, is a much rarer skill than I imagined. Before I knew it, the other slimes had gathered around me. They were all looking up at me with glittering eyes. You're so special, Master San. As expected of our Master San. Master San will be able to build a great city in no time. That house is so shiny and beautiful. The slimes were so excited that they were jumping and rolling around me. 
They looked so innocent like children, that I couldn't help but smile. When I looked at Iris, she was also looking at the slimes with gentle eyes, but when she noticed my gaze, she put on a cool expression and spoke to me. I've never heard of the creation skill before. To be able to build a house in an instant. It seems like a skill that would make enemies of carpenters all over the world. It's not just housing. I can make weapons, armor, gauntlets, potions, and even tableware and chairs. I stand corrected. You're going to make enemies of all kinds of craftsmen. Could it be that they will send assassins after me? Dot I wouldn't say it's impossible. Iris muttered jokingly and gave a slight shrug of her shoulders. If you ever need an escort, give me a shout. You helped me with the black spider so I'll be happy to return the favor. I'll be counting on you, then. Dot well, it would be best if nothing happened to me, though. So far, I haven't made a huge fuss about creation, and it should be fine. In light of this, it was probably a good decision to follow Chrome Sans' advice and become an adventurer. If I had chosen the path of a craftsman, word of my creation would have spread around and I might find myself in a situation where assassins were sent to kill me. When I thought about it, I remembered that the explanation about the underground city had not been finished yet. When I looked at the slime at my feet, it seemed to think the same thing and shouted, Ah, I'm sorry, Master San. We were still in the middle of our explanations, weren't we? No, I'm sorry for interrupting your explanation. No, don't worry about it. The slime smiles innocently. To continue with the story, this underground city is still unfinished. So instead of using, construction command. It would be great if you could use, creation, to build a great city. You never know what will happen in the world, and I'm sure the underground city will come in handy. I understand. Dot but can you wait about the city for a moment? The idea of freely building a city sounds interesting, but I need to calm down a bit here. To begin with, the fact that this underground city which is supposed to be the legacy of an ancient civilization, is still functioning properly as a great archaeological discovery. Should I be allowed to mess around with such a thing as I please? It's a very troubling question. When I asked Tyrus about it, she suggested, why don't you report it to the Adventurers Guild first? That sounds like a good idea. When in doubt, report, contact and consult. It's the three principles of working people. So, Iris and I decided to leave the underground city for now. The slimes looked sad but waved us off with their hands, tentacles. See you later, Master San. Beautiful Ani San. Please come back. We'll be waiting for you. I'll make sure the house is ready for you to live in. I will make it comfortable for you. I promise. To be honest, I would have liked to bring one of them back to the city, but it seems that the underground city is magically set up so that they can't leave. It was unfortunate. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 12 Part 1 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 12, I returned to the underground city with the archaeologist of the Duke's family. Part 1 After returning to the surface, Iris and I made our way through the forest and along the city road toward Arn. We returned to the Adventurers Guild in less than an hour. The wall clock in the lobby showed that it was just past noon. Perhaps it was just lunchtime, but the place was sparsely populated with adventurers. There was only one counter that was open, and it was attended by a woman with glasses. She was reading a thick book and seemed to be in a serious mood. Is Milia not here? I asked the glasses lady and found out that she was attending an urgent meeting as the acting branch manager. If you'd like to speak to Milia, I'd be glad to relay your message. No. That's not necessary. I just have something to report. Understood. If it's alright with you, I'll take care of it. I've discovered an underground city of an ancient civilization. Yes, you've discovered an underground city, right? Dotty? The female employee stopped moving for a moment. Then Iris came up beside me and said as if to convince the woman. It's well known that there's an underground city near on, right? Co found it. Unlike the other ruins. It's still active. We would like to discuss what to do about it. E uh. The female staff member opened her eyes wide in surprise. Her glasses were about to fall off. W wait a minute. I'm going to consult with my superior. PP please wait. She hurriedly got up from her chair and ran to the back of the guild. The female employee returned about five minutes later, 
and Iris and I were led upstairs to the reception room. She told us that a scholar from the royal capital was visiting the city right now and was on his way here in a hurry. Iris and I decided to finish our lunch while waiting for him. I brought a special sandwich from Moyaji San at the Golden Bear restaurant, and Iris brought her own lunch. Dot that sandwich looks delicious. Do you want to trade one? Ah. Uh, sure. I think I'll go for it. Well. I'll give you the sandwich first. Thank you. You can take whatever you want. Which one should it be? I looked into Iris's lunchbox. There were pieces of fried chicken, potato salad with avocado and boiled egg, and sliced fruit. The colorful combination stimulated my appetite. I was troubled but decided to take the fried chicken. The juicy flavor overflowed with each bite, and for a while, I was blissfully satisfied. It was so delicious that I could hardly swallow it. Iris. You must be a good cook. It's almost like a hobby. I've always just eaten my own food. It's not bad to have someone praise me for it. Iris softened her expression. She likes cute things and is a good cook. I've discovered a lot of unexpected aspects of Iris today. As we were both finishing our meals, there was a knock at the door. It seemed that the scholar from the royal capital had arrived. The person who appeared was a slender, handsome man with glasses. He had the air of an academic who was out of touch with the world. He must be in his early twenties and was definitely younger than me. Ah, my name is Relic D. Hubert. I'm the third son of a duke's family, but I do archaeology at will. Nice to meet you. The young archaeologist, who introduced himself as Relic, gave a rather frank impression, but as the third son of a duke's family, he should be treated politely. I was going to get up from the sofa and bow, but Relic stopped me, saying, Excuse me, may I have a moment? I'm indeed a nobleman but please treat me just like your equal. I don't like to be formal, or rather, it makes me itchy. The two of you are adventurers, so please treat me like an adventurer and not use polite language. Dot all right. I'm Kukauzika. Nice to meet you. I'm Iris Note Fafner. You can call me Iris, Kusan and Iris San, right? Thank you very much. Dot by the way, Kusan, are you staying at the Quiet Moon Pavilion by any chance? Yeah. That's right. I nodded to Relic's words. I knew it. Relic's blue eyes shone brightly behind his glasses. I'm actually staying at the same inn as you, and I've wanted to talk to you. You defeated the armored bear and black spider by yourself, didn't you? You're like a hero from old stories. That's amazing. Oh yeah, can I shake your hand? Well, if it's just a handshake. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Relic grabbed my hand with both hands and shook it around. Dot he treats me like an idol. I'm glad he has a good impression of me. But I'm a little embarrassed. After our introductions, we sat down on the sofa and talked at length about how we came to discover the underground city. When I activated, auto mapping, and summoned the pale blue window. Relic shouted in surprise. Kusan. What's that? It's a skill of mine. It shows you a map of the area. Oh, uh, that's really useful, isn't it? That's nice. That's nice. With an envious look on his face, Relic leaned forward from the sofa in front of me and looked into the window through the table. Kusan, did you use this skill to find the underground city? That's about it. Dot let me give you little demonstration. Iris, tell us where to go. Me? Iris blinked repeatedly as if she hadn't expected the conversation to come to her, and thought for a moment. How about the entrance to the underground city? Well, I guess that's in order. The window displayed a map of the area around the Adventurers Guild, but in response to Aris's words, it started scrolling and stopped on the east side of the cello forest. A blue dot of light shone brightly around the bottom of the cliff. See could this be the entrance to the underground city? Relic was shouting out in excitement. If you don't mind. Can you bring me there? Of course, I don't mind. Iris, how about you? Yes, I don't mind too. Dot by the way, Relic, have you been asked to do something by the Adventurers Guild? The Guild. Relic looked up at the ceiling for a few seconds and then clapped his hands. Oh, yes, they did. They asked me to see if what you two found was really an underground city. Oh no, I completely forgot about it. Sorry, sorry. Dot I figured as much. Iris gave a slight shrug then turned to me and explained. When an adventurer makes a major discovery, a guild official or a commissioned expert is supposed to go and check it out. If the discovery is deemed worthy, a reward will be paid. It's probably written in the guild's rules. Well, let's check it out. I took out the booklet of rules from my item box. I looked at the table of contents and opened the page that seemed to apply to me. 
and I saw what Iris had said. How do you know about such a detailed system? I'm an A-ranked adventurer, you know, so you can leave the guild stuff to me. Anyway, we took Relic with us and headed back to the underground city. We left the adventurer's guild a little after one o'clock in the afternoon, and without encountering any monsters along the way, we quickly made it back to the entrance of the underground city. The Orichilkin made door was tightly closed, coldly refusing any intrusion from the surroundings. Relic, on the other hand, was getting excited to the point of being heated. Hi ah, Orichilkin. This is Orichilkin, right? I've seen small pieces of it before, but this is the first time I've seen one in existence of this size. It's amazing. It's amazing. This luster is so divine. I can't wait to lick it. I can't believe some people can get so excited over a single door. Iris smiled bitterly. Koo, can we go inside for now? I think so. I don't want anyone licking the door, so let's move on. As I stood in front of the door, a mechanical voice sounded from above. Magic pattern authentication complete. Welcome back, master. The doorway opened. When I looked back, Relic was staring at me with a puzzled expression. Um, Kusan, didn't it call you master just now? By the way. There were still some things I hadn't explained to him yet. So I told him that we had won the battle against the Orichilkum Golem and that I had been registered as the master of the underground city. Then, of course, Relic was surprised. E -e 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 Why you defeated an Orichilkum Golem? Just the two of you? Yes, that's right. Iris nodded. Dotku, why don't you show him the proof? Okay, wait a minute. I opened my item box and selected the Orichilkum Golem. The space is distorted, and with a thud, an ancient mechanical giant rolls to the ground. Relic looked at it closely, gulped, and then turned back to me. I I it's certainly an Orichilkum Gillum. I told you so. I I'm sorry for doubting you. Relic almost jumped and rubbed his head on the ground. No, it's okay if you understand. Just keep your head up. I stored the Orichilkum Gillum. I'm really sorry. Kusan. I beg your pardon. Relic seems to be sincerely remorseful and slumps his shoulders. Oh, by the way, you said you've become the master of the underground city, but what exactly can you do? I haven't figured it all out yet. If you want, you can join me as an archaeologist to verify the findings. Yes, I'd be happy to do that. In fact, I'd like to be the one to do it. Relic's face, which had been depressed until just now, lit up brightly. He's either a quick switch or a simple one. It's probably the latter. Iris gave a small chuckle as she watched him. We went through the door and down the tunnel. Relic was looking curiously at the original magic lamp attached to the ceiling, but he seemed more interested in the underground city and quietly followed behind Iris and me. When we passed through the tunnel, we were greeted by a blue sky and grasslands. As always, it was an incredible sight. If it weren't for the stone ceiling behind the clouds, I would have thought we were on the ground. Relic was so shocked that he was speechless. He was on his knees, shaking his whole body, and looking around in disbelief. Kokoko Kusan, this is underground, right? Yes, it should be. The wind is blowing, and I can smell the grass. I can't believe they could reproduce the above ground environment so perfectly. Dot it's well known that ancient civilizations had advanced magic technology but this is at a level beyond my imagination. It's going to change the history of archaeology. Oh, now I have to think of something for my thesis. Relic shouted and took out a pen and a note from his pocket. He began to write with great speed, but I wondered if he had come up with a draft of a thesis. As I watched him, Iris muttered to herself, It's turning out to be more important than I thought. I'm not really feeling it yet. What about you, Iris? I don't know. It's like history is going to change. It's too big to understand. Iris and I exchanged glances and chuckled at almost the same time. Eventually, Relic finished his notes and looked around again. And began to ask me. What is that building, Kusan? The building? Relic pointed to the right. There was a western-style house standing there. It's the one I made with, creation, from building materials a while ago. Just as I was about to open my mouth to explain, a translucent. Round creature came bouncing up to us from across the grassy field. It was the helper slime. Master San, Anisan. Welcome back. And Anisan over the two, it's nice to meet you. Hello. I'm a helper slime. Helper slime? Isn't that an ancient magical creature? Do you know us, Anisan? Of course I do. I'm an expert on ancient civilizations. But even among researchers, there was some controversy about the helper slime. The name sounds like a joke. 
and they thought it might be an imaginary existence. I can't believe it really exists. After carefully observing the slime, Relic turned his gaze to the house on the grassland. Could it have been you who built that house, Slime San? No, it was not. Master San made it in an instant. Amazing, isn't it? Kusan? Yeah, that's right. I nodded. Apparently, when you become the master of an underground city, you can freely create your own city. Ha ha, I see, I see. So this place is called an underground city, but it's not really complete. And Kusan, the master, has been given the authority to complete it. Well, that's about it. It's a great archaeological discovery that relics from an ancient civilization are still functioning today, and it's not something that a novice should touch without permission. That's why I went back to the Adventurers Guild to report it. Thank you very much. That helps me a lot. You kept it in the same condition as when you found it, right? I'm so glad that Kusan was the one who discovered the underground city. Wait a minute. Is that something to be praised so much? It's worthy of praise. Ruins of ancient civilizations are like mountains of treasure, so people usually don't report their discoveries and just tear the place apart. As a preventive measure, the Adventurers Guild has instituted a reward system, but it hasn't been very effective. Sigh. Relic sighed with sincere sadness. But, in this regard, Kusan seems to understand the importance of history, and I am very, very grateful. I will definitely repay you for this, and if you have any problems, please let me know. Anything? Yes, whatever you need. Dot okay. I thought for a moment and then told Relic. So, can you tell me about this ancient civilization? I know they have a lot of technology, but I can't get a clear picture of how they lived. I understand. Oh, but it might be a long story so I think it would be better to move to some place more comfortable. He's right, it's not something we can just stand around and talk about. There's a good place for that, isn't there? It was Iris who said that. She picked up a slime at her feet and turned towards a house in the grassland. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 12 Part 2 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast. Part 2. I'm curious to see what's going on inside the house. Why don't we go in? We stopped in front of the house. The roof and walls were shiny, giving the house the air of a new building. The slime, still held by Iris, said a little proudly. While Master San was away, I fixed up the inside of the house. It's all furnished, so you can relax. I wondered if the furniture were magic tools from an ancient civilization too. Slime San, can you tell me something? Relic opened his mouth. The people of the ancient civilization lived in similar houses like this one, didn't they? Yes, that's right. The slime replied in a cheerful, clear voice. The furniture is from the time we were born. This means that this entire house is a legacy of an ancient civilization. However, amazing, amazing. Relic size color changed, and he started to make noise. He's so excited right now that he's probably going to have a nosebleed when he enters the house. If that happens, well. I'll let the slimes take care of him. I opened the door. There was a straight corridor leading from the front door, with a staircase on the right leading to the second floor and several doors on the left. Master San, Anna San, Ani San, in this house, you have to take off your shoes at the entrance. Apparently, just like in Japan, ancient civilizations had a culture that prohibited the use of shoes on the floor. It didn't seem strange to me, but it was the first time for Aris and Relic and they seemed somewhat uncomfortable. It's kind of strange to go barefoot around the house, isn't it? But it's reasonable because it keeps the inside of the house clean. Iris placed the slime on the entrance floor, took off her boots, and then picked up the slime again. She looked like a little girl who couldn't let go of her favorite stuffed animal. The living room is just to the left. There's a sofa in there, so it's perfect if you want to talk. As slime had told me, I opened the door on the front left and found a glass table in the center of the room, flanked by a red sofa. The right side of the room, from my perspective, was connected to the dining room, and behind that was the kitchen. On the left side was a large glass window with a view of the surrounding grassland. It's a structure somewhat like a Japanese house. The hypothesis that maybe this world is not another world, but of the earth in a distant future. Crossed my mind, but it is unlikely. The description of the transmigrator clearly states that it is a special skill possessed by those who have transferred from another world. This is definitely a different world. However, the culture of taking off one's shoes is similar to that of modern Japan, 
and I feel a little nostalgic. We sat down on the sofa, Iris and I sat next to each other, and Relic sat across from us. The slime jumped out of Iris's arms and went to the kitchen. I'll go make some tea, and I will also prepare some snacks. As expected of a hospitality-loving slime, he is very thoughtful. Relic looked around the room curiously, but eventually, he turned to us and started to explain about ancient civilizations. The so-called ancient civilization is a civilization that flourished on this land about 4,000 to 5,000 years ago. It seems that they had advanced magic technology and explored the farthest reaches of the sky and the starry worlds. In other words, they had the technological power to expand into space. It's the world of science fiction. Currently, most of our lives are supported by the legacy of ancient civilizations. The magic lamp, the shower in the bathroom, the stove in the kitchen, and the reading device for the Adventurer's Guild Guard and Record of Defeats are all made from items excavated from ancient ruins, but this is only one part of their ancient technology. According to the latest research, people at that time used flying mechanical birds to travel between continents and palm-sized square boards to talk with people at a distance. A flying mechanical bird would probably be something like an aeroplane. A square board as big as the palm of your hand is probably a smartphone. The ancient civilization seems to be quite similar to my former world, after all. It's probably best to think of it as a civilization that developed magic technology instead of science. However, one day, the ancient civilization suddenly perished. All the advanced magic technology was lost, and our ancestors went back to living in caves. How did this ancient civilization fall into ruin? Did a global war break out? I asked, but Relic shook his head. Although the details are unknown, according to the latest research, it is highly likely that the ancient civilization collapsed due to a monster called the Calamity. The cause is an unidentified monster, huh? In the case of a fantasy game or anime, the calamity would have resurfaced by now, and the world would be in danger of destruction once again. I just hope it doesn't become reality, but to be honest, I have a bad feeling about this. Isn't it possible that the reason I was sent to this world was to fight it? I want to refuse with all my might, but in this world, the more you don't want trouble to happen, the more it happens. I should at least gather information in preparation for such an eventuality. The calamity is also mentioned in the law of the dragon folk. Iris muttered. Our ancestors joined forces with the human race to fight the calamity. How did it turn out? Of course, they were defeated. It seems that the dragon folk were driven to the brink of extinction and went back to living in caves. In other words, they lost everything and had to start all over again from the primitive age of hunting and gathering. It must have taken a lot of hard work to rebuild civilization from there. The calamity went on a rampage around the world and then went to sleep somewhere in the ground. But there are rumors that it will wake up in the near future. The same thing is often said among the nobility. Relic muttered with a serious expression. Since about half a year ago, there has been an increase in the abnormal behavior of monsters all over the continent and this may be a harbinger of the revival of the calamity. A lot of things are happening around Un, too. Abnormal behavior of monsters? What exactly does that mean? If I were to put it very simply, I would say that it would suffice by looking back at Kusan's activities. My activities? It doesn't sound right to me. Iris quickly adds to this when she thinks about it. There are encounters with armored bear and black spider that are supposed to be deep in the mountains and with lonely wolves in packs of a thousand. All of these are things that don't normally happen. Maybe something will happen on Un in the near future. Dot this is not a situation I want to think about too much. The ancient civilization was defeated despite its advanced magic technology. If it were to come back in this day and age, it would be far more disastrous than it was then. All of us may have reached the same conclusion, and I, Iris, and Relical looked down with gloomy expressions. It was the helper slime that blew away such a heavy atmosphere. Here's your tea, everyone. I'll bring you some snacks later. The helper slime slowly walked over to us with a large tray on its head. On the tray was a teapot and three teacups for three people. The helper slime had tentacles, coming out from both sides of its body. After placing the teacups in front of us, it poured the tea with the graceful hands of an experienced butler. White steam rose from the teacup, and a slightly refreshing aroma drifted in the air. After pouring tea for everyone, the helper slime returned to the kitchen and brought out pancakes for three, this time filled with fruit. The pancakes were freshly baked, and the sweet smell of them whetted my appetite. Here you go, 
eat up, the helper slime said to us as it laid out a plate of pancakes, a knife, and a fork for each of us. I quickly cut the pancake with my knife, skewered the strawberries with my fork, and brought it to my mouth. The sweetness of the pancake and the sourness of the strawberries matched each other perfectly, and the taste was unquestionably delicious. The three of us continued to eat the pancakes in silence as if we had forgotten the conversation we had had up until then. Before we knew it, our plates were empty. Oh, it was so good, so delicious. Relic had a big smile on his face. It's just exquisite. Oh, I envy the ancient people who ate this stuff every day. Thank you for the food. If I lived here, I'd get fat in a heartbeat. Iris wiped her mouth and muttered. I agree with her on that. If I could ask for another serving, I would have eaten two or three. Speaking of which, Relic raised his voice as if he had thought of something. Slime San. Where did you get all the ingredients and dishes for cooking? The body of the helper slime is connected to the, item box. There are all kinds of things in there, item box. The body is connected to the, item box. As I was wondering what that meant, the helper slime opened its mouth wide open. A large comfortable chair comes out of it. It was more than twice the size of the helper slime itself, a sight that completely defied the laws of physics. Foo -fa foo you must be surprised. The helper slime made a proud expression. I was too amazed to say anything, and Iris and Relic were repeatedly blinking as if they were taken aback. In the midst of all this, the helper slime opened its mouth wide again and swallowed the comfortable chair once more. I wonder if that means it was stored in their item box. It's a surreal scene. I'll clean up the dishes then. Thank you for eating it all. The helper slime extended its tentacles to collect the plates, knives, and forks put them on a tray, and returned to the kitchen. Dot what were we talking about again? Relic muttered. I felt the same way. The shocking sight had completely blown my memory up to this point. I remembered. I remember that we were talking about the calamity. Kusan, why don't you build some more buildings? Suddenly, Relic suggested such a thing. What's the matter, all of a sudden? Well, there are two reasons. One is for archaeological research. It is a dream for researchers to be able to see buildings from that time in a like new condition. I would be happy to pay a reward for each house. Reward aside, Relic's story made a lot of sense to me. It was only natural to be curious about ancient buildings being brought back to life in the modern world. The second reason is to prepare for the future. I myself believe that there is a high possibility that something will happen in Arn. If that were to happen, I wondered if this place would be useful as a shelter. That's true. The people of Arn have been good to me in many ways, and it would be bad to abandon them. It would be a sound idea to stay here and wait for the situation to end. This can be an option. However, rather than rushing to use, creation, for housing and other things when the time comes, it would be better to prepare for it while there is still time. Even if nothing happens, it will be useful for archaeological research. That's good, isn't it? Well. Besides, it's fascinating to be able to play something much like a city building game in the real world. It may have been inappropriate, but I was more than a little excited. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 13 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 13 I tried to build a city in an underground city. The three of us, me, Iris, and Relic, went outside the house. Well then. Let's start building the city. In order to use, creation, to construct buildings, I need building materials, which will be created using my surplus magic power. Since I've been in the underground city for more than 30 minutes, I already had a stock of more than 800. And they are still increasing. This way, I won't run out of building materials on the way. Building houses one by one is a good idea. But there's one recipe I'm curious about. Building materials x200 housing area x1. If I do this, won't it be possible to build multiple houses at once? When I activated, creation, as a test, the stock of materials decreased, and a light ball appeared above my head. The size was quite large, about a meter in diameter. When Relic saw it, he shouted in surprise. What is that, Kusan? It's a kind of architectural leg. Well. Watch this. I raise my right hand and point to a place a little further away. The ball of light began to move fluently, and when it reached the target point, it released a huge flash of light. After the glow faded, there were houses of all sizes standing in a row. 
There were roads between the houses and even some magic lamps. It was a splendid residential area with nothing to complain about. Iris let out a sigh of admiration in front of the scene. It's amazing, Ku. You are like a god. You're exaggerating. It's just a skill, you know. I know it's a so-called extraordinary skill, but there's no other skill that's this effective. As expected of a, trans. I mean, the weather is good. The fact about me being a, trans migrator, is supposed to be a secret between Iris and me, but isn't that a bit too much of a cover-up? But fortunately, Relic didn't get suspicious. He seemed to be more interested in the residential area than in us and stared at the houses intently. Kukusan, do you mind if I take a closer look? Of course. Suit yourself. Thank you so much. Relic ran off into the residential area, frolicking like a puppy. He's young and energetic. As I was watching his back, I heard a voice call out to me from behind, Master San. You've built a lot of houses. When I turned around, there were dozens of helper slimes gathered there. Do you think it would be a good idea to put some furniture in these houses? Yes, please. All right. Leave it to us. Dot let's go, everyone. When the first one shouted, the other slimes replied cheerfully, shouting, yes. Master San, we'll do our best. There's still a lot of furniture in there. Item box, so keep building. Yeah. Yeah, the helper slimes flew, jumped, and rolled as they headed toward the residential area. Now, what shall I make next? There are a lot of recipes available, but that makes me feel lost. I asked Iris for her opinion. Why don't you model it after the city of Arn? There are residential areas, a shopping district nearby, and an entertainment district as well. If we need to live here for a long time, we should have a farm or a ranch so that we can be self-sufficient. As expected of Iris, it was a good idea. Let's build food production facilities, following on as an example. Over the next two hours, I completed a small but large enough city. The city can be divided into three main districts. The first is the residential district, where the people who have evacuated to the underground city would live. The second is the food production district where farms and ranches are located and where the helper slimes work. They were wearing straw hats on their heads and plowing the ground with farming tools. Dot is that a farmer's costume? It's kind of cute. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2021 slash 09 slash 000020.jpg. The third is the commercial district which can be further divided into two areas. The first is the shopping district. This is where I plan to sell food from the food production district. The shopkeepers are helper slimes, each wearing glasses, aprons, and other outfits that match the store's atmosphere. The other is a restaurant district, where the helper slimes will serve you with their cooking skills. So after building the town, Iris and I walked down the street and took a leisurely look at the cityscape. It's really quite divine isn't it? Iris says with a sigh. I can't believe that two hours ago, this was a grassland. I can't believe it either. I'm a little confused, to be honest. What the hell is, creation? Just creating cheat items is an amazing enough effect, but converting excess magic power into building materials or building dozens of houses at once. Surely there are even more possibilities. It's no wonder the helper slimes call it God's skill, but where will this skill eventually lead? Perhaps I can create a whole new world. As I was thinking about this, Relic came running up to me from the other direction. His expression is very satisfied, and his face is bright. Well, I enjoyed it. Today's discovery alone is a great, great, great development in archaeology. Thank you very much, Kusan and Iris San, for finding the underground city. I'll be sure to report the two of you to His Majesty the King. I felt a little uneasy about what he had just said. I heard that Relic is the third son of a duke's family, but is he in a position to casually meet with the country's leader? Oh, excuse me, excuse me. I actually have this title. What Relic held out to me was a small silver metal plate. It resembled an adventurer's registration card, but the contents were completely different. Professor Relic de Hubert, Archaeology Laboratory, Royal Academy of Sciences. Hey, hey. That sounds like an amazing description. Relic seems to be a fledgling researcher of about 20 years old, but considering his position as a professor, I wonder if he has already made any significant achievements. For example, there are magic lamps here and there in the city of Arn, right? I was the one who put them to practical use. I also developed the magic stove in the kitchen and the shower in the bathroom. Well, 
I'm developing a lot of things. They're all familiar to me. Next month, a new magic tool will be announced, so please look forward to it. Oh, and regardless of my title or anything like that, I want you to feel free to interact with me as you always did. I'm a lonely person, you see. Relic smiled good naturedly and brushed his bangs with his right hand. I understand. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. When Iris and I called out to Relic, he nodded happily. It was right after that. Suddenly, the ground shook unsteadily. It was a vibration that seemed to come from below. Oops. I held on to my position, but Iris and Relic lost their positions and fell towards me. Watch out. I catch Iris with my right hand and Relic with my left. It's not as if I have a flower in each hand. Relic is a man, you know. I I'm sorry, Ku. Thank you, Kusan. It's no big deal. What the hell was that? Earthquake. I think it's too short for that, and it's kind of weird. The three of us looked at each other. That's when it happened. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. A helper slime came running in at high speed from across the street. Something terrible has happened, Master San. I want you to come with me. The helper slime led us to a tunnel that was the entrance to the underground city. This place was about a hundred meters away from the city I had built, and there was a grassy plain spreading around. Something strange was happening in one corner. The ground had cracked, and a black stone monument-like structure was rising from it. It was about two meters wide and about five meters high. A magic circle was drawn on its surface, emitting golden light. This is it. This is it. It appeared along with the earthquake. The helper slime bounced around the monument and explained to us. Hey. Iris folded her arms and muttered with a thoughtful expression on her face. Isn't this pattern just like the magic circle when the Orijil Kamgalim came out? Dot indeed, it sure is. I don't think it is possible, but we won't get into a battle with the second or third Gullim, will we? I've gone to a lot of trouble to build the city. I don't want it to be destroyed. I'd rather destroy it before anything bad happens. While I was thinking about this, Relic was looking at the stone monument with great interest. I see. I see. This is probably a magic tool for teleportation. As he said that, he reached out his right hand and touched the stone monument. The next moment, Relic's body was enveloped in blue light, and then he disappeared from the spot like an instantaneous movement. What? It was so sudden that I was taken aback. When I looked at Iris, she also seemed surprised and blinked repeatedly. Ku, what do you think? We can't just abandon him, can we? Relic's actions were careless but he had probably achieved a lot as an archaeologist because of his curiosity, and I didn't blame him too strongly. Besides, it is the duty of the older generation to follow up on the mistakes of the younger generation. It would be too bad if something happened to Relic if I left him like this. Iris and I nodded to each other and touched the stone monument almost simultaneously. Our vision turned blue. My body felt as if it was floating and I found myself warping to another place. It was a narrow corridor made of stone. Relic was standing a short distance away. He was scurrying around, but as soon as he noticed our presence, he rushed over to us. Oh, Kusan. Iris San. You've come too. It's only natural. What if something happens to you when you move to another place? You were worried about me? However, oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Relic gave a warm and friendly smile. Next to me. Iris sighed in exasperation. I was worried when you suddenly disappeared. I'm glad you're okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just curious about the stone monument. Well, I don't know how to feel about that. As I said this, I activated, auto mapping. A small window appeared in my hand, showing a map of the surrounding area. It seems that this is a single pathway. There was a bouncing sound coming from the back of the room. Relic. Stand back. It might be a monster. Why yes. I can use some offensive magic, so let me know if you need it. Alright. I nodded and took out the Hykena wooden sword from my, item box. Iris also held up her spear and lined up right next to me. The air was suddenly tense, and then, oh uh, wrong, you've got it wrong. I'm not a monster. A translucent, chubby, mysterious creature. Called the helper slime jumped out of the darkness with a panicked voice. However, Unlike the other slimes, it was wearing large glasses. Nice to meet you, Master San. I'm a glasses slime, and I'm a somewhat special kind of helper slime. The glasses slime bent its body dexterously and bowed. Perhaps it's because it has a calmer demeanor than the other helper slimes, but it has an air of wisdom about it. This is the deep realm, the deepest part of the underground city. What is this place for? Well, it's a long story, 
But what do you know about the Calamity, Master San? It's a monster that destroyed the ancient civilization, right? Yeah, that's pretty much right. This Deep Realm is monitoring one of the Calamities, the Black Dragon. Dot wait a minute. I thought about it for a while before continuing. Could there be two or three of these Calamities? I don't know how many there are. But there must be many. Eeh, eh, are you sure? The one who shouted in surprise was Relic. There was more than one calamity. That's a shocking new fact. Dot I never knew that either. Iris muttered in surprise. Well, after 4000 years, it's no wonder that a lot of information has been lost. It's a miracle that it's still in the law of the dragon folk. Master San, Anisan, San, Ani San, I can understand that you are surprised. But the important thing is about to start here. The glasses slime moved its face closer to us, and a serious expression appeared on its face. This deep realm is usually sealed off, but it is only unlocked when certain conditions are met. Is the black dragon about to be resurrected? You are correct, Master San. There's a big mountain to the north of here where the black dragon resides. Dot it will probably wake up within ten days. Stop it. You gotta be kidding me. It's like an existence that destroyed an ancient civilization or something like the last boss in a game. It's a too hard mode for such a thing to appear suddenly. I'll explain about the black dragon to Master San now, but I'd like to change the location a bit. After saying that, the glasses slime turned his back on us and walked deeper into the passage. I guess it wants us to follow it. Iris, Relic and I followed behind the glasses slime. We eventually arrived at a space about the size of a school classroom. In the center of the room, there was a pedestal that looked like a teacher's desk, and on it was a crystal ball the size of a bowling ball. This is a magic tool for recreating images. Master San, try to touch it. I walked over to the pedestal and touched the crystal ball. It was faintly warm. A few seconds later, I hear a mechanical voice with a buzzing sound. Unlocked. Playback will now begin. Light was emitted from the crystal ball, and an image floated in the air. If I were to describe it by comparing it to modern technology, it would be like a projector without a screen. The image was a shot of the ground from the sky, showing a sophisticated city spread out at the foot of a mountain. The scale of the city is quite large more than twice the size of an in terms of area. This is a record from 4000 years ago. The image you see here is one of the most common cities of that time. The glasses slime made some additional comments. It looks very peaceful. But the black dragon had destroyed everything. The image switched. In the sky above the city, a huge jet black dragon was spreading its wings. Its entire body was covered with thick scales like armor, giving off an air of misery and oppressive intimidation. When I looked closely, I saw the remains of an Orichalcum gillum caught in its mouth. The size of the Orichalcum gillum was about 3 meters, so based on that, the total length of the black dragon was probably more than 20 meters. It's a ridiculously huge body. Gaewe. The black dragon opened its jaws wide. The back of the throat is red hot, and the surrounding area is filled with shimmering flames. The remains of the Orichalcum gillum that was still trapped in the black dragon's fangs melted and evaporated. A moment of silence. And then, a fireball was released. It crashed into the ground with a red tail like a meteor, causing an explosion like a nuclear missile. The intense heat and shock waves blew everything away, annihilating people, buildings, and everything in between. The screen went wild, and then it was cut off. This is the end of the video. The glasses slime had a painful expression on his face. There were over a million casualties that many lives were lost in just a few seconds. Dot I hope this gives you an idea of what the black dragon is like. Dot R. I could only nod my head. I can't think of anything else to say. I have defeated strong enemies such as the armored bear and the black spider, but the black dragon was an existence on another level. Its size and power are off the charts, and the scale is too different. It should be considered as one of the natural disasters like earthquakes and floods. Iris muttered with a serious expression. I agree with that opinion. I guess that's why it's called the calamity. Because it's an existence that human beings can't control with their little power. Kusan. When I turned around at the sound of a voice from behind me, Relic was leaning against the wall with a pale face like a ghost. He must have been very shocked by the image he had just seen. Let's go back to Un right away, Relic said with an expression that could not hide his shock. I think we should at least evacuate the people of Un to the underground city. Dot you're right. We've been working on building a city in case something goes wrong, but I didn't expect it to be useful this soon. The living conditions are already in place, 
and it would be an ideal place to take refuge. Will the Black Dragon come back first, or will the evacuation be completed first? Dot it's a race against time. Master San, Master San. The glasses slime reached out a tentacle and pulled my sleeve with a swoosh. I can't say for sure. But we should have three days before the black dragon wakes up. I'm going to teleport you to the entrance on the surface now, so don't move. Yes, I understand. I nodded, and the glasses slime pulled out a wand-like object from its mouth. A blue gem was attached to the top, giving it the appearance of a wizard's wand. I'll use teleportation magic. The blue jewel shone with a shout. A magic circle appeared at our feet, and a white flash of light burst forth. When our vision returned. Iris, Relic, and I were standing at the bottom of the cliff. It seemed we were back on the surface. The sky was tinged with sunset, and a slightly chilly breeze was blowing. Ku Kusan. I nodded at the voices of Iris and Relic. There was no need for further words. We exchanged glances with each other and decided to head back to Un as fast as we could. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 14 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Chapter 14 I suggested the evacuation to an underground city. We hurried into the city of Un. It probably took us less than 20 minutes. Relic, a kind, scholarly man with the appearance of an introvert, was able to keep up with Iris and me as we ran as fast as we could. I was a little surprised. Ha, ha, I, I can use wind magic, after all. Relic replied gasping for breath. Well, I'm still learning magic, and I can only accelerate once in a while. It doesn't matter. It's good to have all three of us back together. If Relic was going to be late, I was thinking of carrying him. He seemed light for his height, so it wouldn't be much of a hassle. Anyway, the three of us, me, Iris, and Relic, decided to head to the Adventurer's Guild. The city at dusk was bustling as usual, but there was something different about it. It was restless or rather buzzing. While remembering the strange commotion in my heart, I headed for the Adventurer's Guild. When I entered the lobby, I found many adventurers gathered there. The clock on the wall showed that it was five o'clock in the afternoon, a time when everyone should be relaxing after finishing their quests, but there was a strange, tense atmosphere in the air. Dot it's like before the war started. It's a scary atmosphere. Iris and Relic seemed to agree with me and were looking around the lobby. The three of us headed towards the reception desk together. There was a woman with glasses sitting there, just like in the afternoon, but as soon as she saw us, she retreated to the back. I wonder if she's avoiding me. I don't think so, but what in the world happened? As we were pondering with a question mark on our heads, Milia came running from behind the reception desk. The woman with the glasses must have left her seat in order to call Milia. Kusan, Iris San, you're back. Welcome back. Milia greeted us with the same gentle smile she always wore. Then she turned to Relic and spoke to him with a serious expression. Thank you for the confirmation work, Relic San. Thank you very much for accepting my request on such short notice. How was the underground city? It certainly belongs to the ancient civilization. There is no doubt about it. It's a great historical discovery, isn't it? If it were true, I would like to throw a party to celebrate, but the current situation may make it difficult. I'm sorry. What's wrong? I asked, and Milia nodded with a grim expression. Actually, we've observed signs of a great flood in the Fatos Mountains to the north. Great flood? I've never heard that phrase before. It sounded ominous. But what the hell did it mean? I was wondering what it meant when Iris immediately told me. Dot the Great Flood is, in short, like a massive flood of monsters. In just a few hours, thousands or tens of thousands of monsters are gathered, and they attack the villages like a flood. Thank you for the explanation, Iris San. To be more specific, at around 10 o'clock in the morning today, a concentration of magical elements was detected in the Fatos Mountains to the north that far exceeded the standard value. The Adventurers Guild estimates that as early as three days later, more than 50,000 monsters will emerge and attack on. FF 50,000 monsters? Relic shouted in surprise. It's a once in a decade or even a once in a century level of disaster. It is as you say, Relic San. Originally, we would have conducted a joint defense operation with the feudal lord's soldiers, but this time it may be difficult. Why is that? When I asked, Milia took out a map from under the desk. You may not know this, Kusan, but about three months ago, 
there was a great flood in this same territory. This is where it happened. She pointed to one of the cities far to the northeast of An. The number of monsters was about 5,000, but there were so many high-level danger monsters that the feudal lord's army was devastated. It will take more than a year to rebuild. You mean we can't expect them to be a proper fighting force this time? How about asking for help from the country or the neighboring feudal lords? At Relic's suggestion, however, Milia shook her head. The last half year or so has seen a lot of strange occurrences all over the place, and everyone seems to have their hands full with their own problems. The only two forces in Arn are the Adventurers Guild and the Mercenaries Guild, which are considered extremely difficult to use for defense. Kusan, Iris San, and Relic San, I have an important question for you. Please give me your honest opinions. Milia asks with a serious expression. Was the underground city a place that could be used as a shelter? The answer, of course, was the same for all three of us. It's fine, no problem. I think it could accommodate all the residents of Un on that scale. It's a short distance from here, which is convenient. Dot I understand. Milia nodded, pondered for a moment, and then told us. I'd like to hear more about the underground city if you don't mind. Is that okay? Milia led us to the reception room of the Adventurers Guild. Please take a seat on the sofa and wait. I'll go call the branch manager now. Isn't the branch manager a wee? He finally returned from the royal capital yesterday. This time, it was a long business trip, so it was quite difficult to take over. Dotto, yes. Please rest assured that I have reported on Kusan's activities. The branch manager was also quite impressed. Dot I hope he won't be disappointed when he meets me in person. It will be fine. I can assure you. Milia winked with her right eye and left the reception room. We decided to sit on the sofa for the moment. From the back, it was Iris, me, and Relic. The sofa was quite large, so there was plenty of room for all three of us. Have you ever met the branch manager, Iris? He greeted me once when I arrived in Arn. I think it's because I'm an A-ranked adventurer. How about you, Relic? The branch manager here is interested in ancient civilizations and I've had the pleasure of giving him lectures on several occasions. He was quite a nice guy. So I am the only one who's never met him before. Dot it makes me nervous. As soon as we were talking about this, Milia came back. She came in with an elderly gentleman. His hair was a romantic grey with a touch of white, and his body was slim. He looked more toned than thin. He may have been a former adventurer. His expression is calm, but his eyes are strong, giving him the air of a sharp man. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I'm Zitan Baldan the branch manager of Un's Adventurers Guild. Nice to meet you. I am Kukauzaka. Please take care of me. When I stood up from the sofa and bowed to him, he gave me a slight bow. It's my pleasure to meet you too. I've already heard about Kukun's activities, and also about your achievements. You've single-handedly defeated an armored bear, a black spider, and even discovered an underground city. You're the ace of the next generation. Dot I am grateful for that. Ha <laughs> ha. You don't have to be so modest. There's no need for formalities. That's what being an adventurer is all about, isn't it? I understand. Dot no, I get it. I'm a, that's how it should be. An adventurer should be irreverent to a fault. Chief Zitan nodded generously and said, It's been a long time, how are you doing? To Aris and Relic. Then he sat down on the sofa on the opposite side of us. The position was on the left side of me. Oh. I'll be sitting too as an assistant branch manager. Milia sat on the right side of the sofa. Then, I would like you to give us a quick report on the underground city. Okay, I explained about the underground city along the timeline. Starting with the events leading up to the discovery of the underground city in the Cello Forest, the battle with the Orichel Kimgalim, the registration as a master, the exploration of the underground city, the building of the city. I give the general outline and Iris provides additional details. If necessary, Relic would give his expert opinion. We didn't have a meeting beforehand, but we were smoothly proceeding with the report in that fashion before I knew it. We have already prepared the living environment for the underground city. It should be possible to accommodate all of Un's population. If there are not enough houses, I can add more on the spot. Phew. Chief Zitten looked thoughtful for a moment but then slowly opened his mouth. As you all know, the situation is desperate. In about three days, more than 50,000 monsters will be flooding into Arn. We can't evacuate to a nearby city in time. More than 80% of them will lose their lives when they are attacked from behind by a pack of monsters on the move. If we can use the underground city, there is nothing more gratifying than that. If you don't mind, 
Could you show it to me in person? Of course I would. How about Iris and Relic? I agree. We don't have much time before the Great Flood, so we'd better hurry. I'm of the same opinion. You'll be amazed when you see Kusan's city. I'm looking forward to it. Chief Zitan's mouth twitched slightly. The smile on his face is that of a mature man with a lot of time on his hands. Then let me make a few preparations. I'll meet you at the south gate of the city in an hour. Milia, you should come with us. I'll go and get ready. I'll see you later, Kusan. The report was thus suspended, and we were to take Chief Zitan to the underground city. The Black Dragon would have to wait. If we decide to evacuate to the underground city, it will also be a countermeasure against the Black Dragon. Or rather, you know. Let me tell you something. Isn't it really too hard to have two troubles at the same time? The Great Flood and the Black Dragon? The difficulty level of this world is too high. I wanted to move to a world that was a little easier, but complaining won't get me anywhere, so for now, I'll just focus on the task at hand. After leaving the reception room, the three of us returned to the lobby of the Adventurers Guild. The lobby was filled with adventurers as usual. They were probably waiting for more information about the Great Flood. Iris, Relic, what do we do now? We're about halfway through dinner. If we're going to the underground city, we could ask the Helper Slime to make us some. That's certainly a good idea. The pancakes from Helper Slime were excellent, and if you order dinner from them, you'll get a wonderful selection of food on the table. As I was thinking about this, a female adventurer I knew approached me. Kukai, you were called to the back of the guild, right? What happened? Well, I've been going through some stuff. Could it be that Chief Zitan asked you to protect the city? When the female adventurer jokingly said that, another male adventurer nearby nodded and joined the conversation, saying, that sounds likely. It is said that there are more than 50,000 monsters in the Great Flood this time, but if the bear killer is with us, we should be able to handle it, don't you think? If it's just Kukai, he might be able to survive, but we won't. Listening to the two of them. It seemed that the adventurers were aware of the scale of the Great Flood. However, this raises one question. Why are they both still staying in the city of On? With the sheer number of monsters attacking, wouldn't they normally be running for their lives? In a time of a Great Flood, adventurers have a duty to protect the people of the city. As if she had read my thoughts, Iris explained. Of course, there are those who flee, but they will be expelled from the adventurers guild and hunted down as bounties. Also, in this country you'll be treated as a serious criminal. Well, we'll still do our job regardless of the cancellation of our registration or the crime. The female adventurer said in a cheerful tone. We've been indebted to this city, so we're returning the favor. Oh, come on, don't act like you're the good one. The male adventurer shrugged his shoulders and laughed. Aside from the extraordinary like the bear killer, for ordinary adventurers like us, the Great Flood is an opportunity. The risk is great, but the return is also great. If you do well, you can become a hero. The government and the adventurers guild will reward you, and you can even get into the A and B ranks. That's true, but wouldn't it be sad if the Ojasan and Obasan of the Golden Bear restaurant died? Well, I have a lot of feelings for on, too. Like Michan from Bubble Splash Store. As a side note, the northwestern part of Arn is home to a reasonably large entertainment district. Among them, a brothel called Bubble Splash Store seems to be popular among male adventurers. I've decided. The male adventurer muttered thoughtfully. I will ask Michan to marry me when this battle is over. Stop it. That's a death flag. I talked to the other adventurers to gather information, but they all seem to have no intention of running away from Arn. When I asked them if they were afraid of dying, all they replied was that if they were afraid of dying then they would not be an adventurer. It was like a samurai from the Warring States period. Adventurers are constantly exchanging lives, so in a sense, it's a similar thing. After gaining some understanding, I cut the conversation short and left the adventurers guild. Of course, Iris and Relic were with me. If we head for the south gate now, it will be just the right time. It's already night. The sky was tinged with indigo and the stars were shining brightly. I looked at the city and saw that it was the same as usual, except that there was a bit of tension in the air. Everyone seems to be quite calm. With a major crisis looming, it would be natural for panic to set in. In a world where monsters appear on a daily basis, is it possible that everyone's heart has been drained? But apparently, that's not the case. Most of the Adventurers Guild employees have calming or persuasion skills. If I remember correctly, 
You need to have the negotiation skill to become a branch manager, so you mean they're making good use of their skills? That makes sense. The guild staff was probably still preventing panic somewhere in the city. Thank goodness for that. We arrived at the south gate ten minutes before the scheduled meeting. Did we arrive too early? I think it's better than being late. I've never had a meeting with so much time to spare in my life. I always end up rushing in at the last minute. Relic gave me a confused look. He brushed his bangs with his right hand. People with outstanding talent have an image of being loose with time. It seems that Relic is one of those types. I guess when you are absorbed in something, you lose sight of everything else. A few minutes later, Chief Zitan and Millie arrived. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Kusan. No, we've just arrived too. Don't worry about it, Fufu. It sounds like you're waiting for a date. Millie giggled with a mischievous expression. Now that we're all here. Let's get going. Isn't that right, Chief? Of course. We don't have much time left. Let's hurry up. So, the five of us started walking towards the underground city. On the way, Milia gave us a brief explanation of the chain of command. In the event of a great flood, in case of a great flood, the branch manager of the Adventurers Guild will have full authority to deal with the situation. If the feudal lord is in the area, or if the feudal lord sends instructions, that's a different story. Do we have to ask the feudal lord if we abandon the city? According to the laws of this country, it is not necessary. It would be ideal if we could get the feudal lord's consent, but I don't think we have time for that this time. So Chief Zitan has no choice but to decide on this as his own responsibility. Being a branch manager of an adventurer's guild is quite a difficult position to be in. While we were talking about this, we entered the cello forest and arrived at the door at the bottom of the cliff. I opened the door and walked through the tunnel, and soon our vision opened up in a flash. There was a huge city spread out before us. The city shone brightly, illuminating the surrounding night darkness. What a beautiful. Both Chief Zitan and Milia were overwhelmed by the sight before their eyes. They were stunned for a while, but then they came to their senses and turned to me. Dot honestly, I feel like I'm dreaming. It's not that I doubted Kukun's report but I didn't expect the city to be so magnificent. I'm really surprised. You built this city with your skills, didn't you, Kusan? Yes. I can add more buildings if necessary. You can always let me know. Even now, surplus magic power is being converted into building materials, and if I wanted to, I could more than double the size of the city. There is still a surplus of land after all. You're really beyond the norm, Kukun. I think we can accommodate all the people of Un with this. Kusan. May I see the inside of the city? Of course. Dot. When I looked towards the city, I saw about five translucent round creatures bouncing towards us. It's a group of helper slimes. They stopped moving in front of us and bowed a bit vertically. Welcome back, Master San, Anisan and Anna San. You've brought new visitors. Welcome. Take your time. Yay, yay. The helper slimes were all buzzing happily cackling with friendly expressions. I had explained about the helper slimes to Chief Zitan and Milia in my earlier report. Perhaps because of this, both of them seemed to be less confused. So this is an ancient magical creature, fascinating. Chief Zitan muttered as he stared at the helper slimes. Relic gun, do you think you can recreate this with today's technology? It might be difficult to recreate this, indeed. We need at least ten years. You can recreate it if you have ten years. I'm not saying it's impossible but Relic may have a clue. In the meantime, Milia and Iris, the two women, were completely charmed by the cuteness of the helper slime. They crouched down and poked the slime's cheeks from both sides. Fufu, they're so cute, aren't they? Yes, they are. They're so soothing. I can understand how Iris feels, but we didn't come to the underground city for therapy. Our main goal is to convince Chief Zitan that this is the right place to take shelter. That is our main objective. We moved into the city, Surrounded by the helper slimes, there are three districts in the city, the residential district, the food production district, and the commercial district, in that order. The features of each district were carefully explained to us by the helper slimes. Branch managers it and listened to all of this with a serious expression and took various notes. He was probably writing down information that would be important for the evacuation. After he had finished looking at all the areas, he told me with a satisfied look on his face. You were right, Kukun. This city will be able to accommodate all the people of Arn. Please let us use this place as a shelter. Chief Zitan turned to me and bowed deeply. Chief San, please raise your head. As for me, 
that was my intention all along. Thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Kusan. Following Chief Zitan, Melia also bowed her head. Since Kusan has provided us with a place to evacuate, we will also do our best. I will make sure that the people of Arn are safely evacuated. Yes, please do. Yes. Please leave it to me. Melia nodded with a cheerful voice. This is how the underground city was determined to be the evacuation destination, but there is one thing left to report. That is, of course, the Black Dragon. Now was the time to tell them. Chief Zitan, Melia, I have something to tell you. Just as I began to speak, another helper slime came rushing toward us in a panic. Master San. Master San. Listen to me. Something terrible has happened. The helper slime was wearing glasses. It was the glasses slime that was supposed to be in the deep realm. It's in a hurry, but what the heck happened? It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 15 Part 1. Here's the chapter. Enjoy. Ed. Blast. Chapter 15. I tried to prepare for the Black Dragon. Part 1. First of all, calm down. What exactly happened? When I asked, the glasses slime took a deep breath and began to speak with a serious expression. Dot actually, it looks like the Black Dragon will be reviving soon. What? Even though we don't have a lot of time, it's getting even shorter. Dot it's so difficult. Kusan, maybe this means we won't be able to evacuate in time. I was not the only one who was shocked by the news from the glasses slime. Iris had her hand over her mouth and Relic's eyes were wide open, both with surprise on their faces. On the other hand, Chief Zitan and Milia had confused expressions on their faces. Black Dragon. Shouldn't the Dragon race have perished a long time ago? I'm sorry, Kusan. Could you tell us more about it if you don't mind? I'd like to say okay. But if we're going to talk about the Black Dragon, I'd like to show them the images from the Deep Realm too. Should we move the location? When I was thinking about it, the glasses slime opened its mouth wide. A spherical object popped out from inside. It was the crystal ball that was supposed to be in the deep realm. Oops, I caught it as it flew towards me. It looks like we have new visitors, so I brought it just in case. Nice assist, glasses slime. When I touched the crystal ball, it activated and projected an image into the empty space. It was a scene from 4000 years ago. A black dragon appeared and wiped out the city in an instant. It's the second time I've seen this, but it's so horrific that I wanted to turn my gaze away. The Great Flood alone is a desperate situation, but this is just too much. As expected, Chief Zitan seemed to be shaken, and he gulped. Milia's eyes were closed tightly and she was trembling slightly as she grabbed the hem of her dress. We were living near a sleeping monster like that. Milia's knees collapsed. I immediately caught her body. The blood had completely drained from her face. She usually spoke and acted in a high-spirited manner, but she might be quite sensitive on the inside. In the midst of the grim atmosphere, I asked the glasses slime. How many days will the black dragon be revived? In the first place, why is it being revived so soon? I'm sorry but I can't predict how much time is left. However, I do know the cause. I've analyzed it with the Deep Realm system, and it's probably due to the Great Flood. Hearing this, I came up with a hypothesis. The place where the Black Dragon is sleeping and the place where the Great Flood is happening. Both places are in the northern Fatos Mountains. Isn't it possible that the simultaneous troubles occurring in the same place may have an effect? Yes, it's exactly as Master San surmised. Before the Great Flood, high concentrations of magical elements were generated, but it seems that this stimulated the black dragon. The glasses slime told us this with a heavy sigh. There are other problems as well. As the black dragon stirs, the signs of the great flood are getting stronger. In other words, what do you mean? I think it will happen much sooner than expected. At least it should be fine until tomorrow morning, but after that, it's hard to say. The glasses slime lowered its eyes apologetically. If we take everything into consideration, there is a possibility that either a large army of monsters or a black dragon, or both, will attack Han by noon tomorrow. Dot will we really be able to evacuate in time? Kukun. Chief Zitan called out to me with a grave expression. I will return to the city immediately to prepare for evacuation. We have to hurry. All right. Well then, I'll go back with you and help. Master San. Please wait a minute. It was the glasses slime who interrupted my words. If possible, I'd like you to stay here, Master San. There's a place I want to show you. A place you want to show me? There is a vault in the depths of the deep realm. People from 4000 years ago left some treasures for you. 
so please take them with you. It will surely come in handy, with Glass's slime suggestion. I decided to act alone. The rest of the group returned to the city to prepare for the evacuation. It will be an all-night job, but I'll try to get as many people as possible to the underground city. This is my responsibility. Chief Zitten said firmly and left the underground city with a determined look on his face. His back was big and reliable. I think I can trust him. If it were true, I'd like to stick with Kusan and visit the ancient vaults. Relic muttered in a joking tone and then quickly turned serious. But I know how to prioritize things. When the evacuation is over, please show me the vault. I beg you. The reason Relic was returning to the city was to use his position to influence the people of the city. He is a member of a duke family and a professor at the Royal Academy. If such a person strongly calls for evacuation, it will surely have a great effect. Thank you very much, Kusan for providing us with shelter. Millie bowed and then walked straight up to me and whispered softly in my ear. You supported me when I was about to fall down a while ago. I was so happy that you helped me. Millie smiled like a little girl and walked out of the underground city with a light step. Dot you two get along so well, don't you? Iris muttered as she shrugged her shoulders. I'm going to take the three of them back to Un and then return to the underground city afterward. Dot there's one thing I need to tell you. Can't we talk about it now? It's probably a long story. I don't want to keep the chief waiting, so I'll see you later. Okay, see you later. We both raised our right fists and lightly bumped them in the air. After the four of them left the underground ruins, I decided to head for the vault with the glasses slime. I touched the black stone tablet to enter the deep realm. We walked down along narrow corridor and arrived at a rather spacious room. This was the place where I had been shown the image of the black dragon a few hours ago. I hadn't noticed it at the time, but there was a small door in the darkness on the far right of the room. In the center of the door was what looked like a handle. Master San, please touch that door. Like this? I reached out my right hand and grasped the door handle. Then I hear an inorganic voice in my head. The link with the underground city core system has been established by full assist. Opening the vault entrance, the door automatically opens to the back. The inside was connected to another small room. The room was square, with three doors placed in a row at the back. Which door am I supposed to open? Uh, wait a minute. I have a message for you from the people of 4000 years ago. The glasses slime lowered its eyes and said in a slightly solemn voice, if you are a hero, the door on the left will open. If you are a demon king, the door in the middle will open. If you are a sage, the door on the right will open. You shall inherit our legacy. Which of the following applies to you, Master San? None of them applied to me. A. Eh? The glasses slime rolled its eyes in surprise. W. What do you mean by that, Master San? A lot was going on back then. To be more specific, I gave a backhanded answer in the first option. Hero, Demon King, Sage, which role do you want to be assigned? I don't want to choose any of them. As a result, I was transferred to the other world as a special kind of being. If choosing to be a hero, a demon king, or a sage is the normal route, then I guess I'm going through some sort of backdoor route right now. As I stepped into the square room thinking about this, a voice echoed in my brain. Dot status check complete. Kukauzuka is not a hero, demon king, or sage and possesses creation. All doors will be unlocked since the hidden conditions have been met. Then I heard three overlapping clacking sounds. Dot this development was indeed unexpected. If it were a proper route, there would only be one type of treasure available. But in my case, I unlocked all three. I guess the results are just as out of the ordinary as much as how my existence is also out of the ordinary. Oh wow 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 wow. W what's going on? The glasses slime was so shocked that it was spinning its eyes around in circles. I chuckled at the sight of it and first opened the door on the left. This is the place where the hero is supposed to enter. At first, there was a long, narrow corridor, but after a while, I came to a large room. The width and depth of the room were probably more than 10 meters. In the center of the room was a horizontal pedestal on which a large sword was resting. The blade, however, was rusted to a crumbling pulp and it was split into two halves because it had been broken in the middle. As it was, it didn't look like it could be used properly. Master San, may I have a word? I heard the voice of the glasses slime from behind me. It seemed that it had come out of its confused state. It's a dragon slaying magic sword. It has been handed down since the time of mythology, but it was shattered by the black dragon in the battle 4000 years ago. The story goes that if a hero gets hold of it, 
it will come back to life. Unfortunately, I'm not a hero. As I say that, I collect the sword in their item box. Then, a recipe for creation popped into my mind. Broken magic sword, top, plus broken magic sword, bottom, dragon slayer's magic sword gram. Apparently, it is possible to restore the magic sword without being a hero. Magic sword gram, huh? It's often a name I've heard in anime and games but I believe it originally came from Norse mythology. I wonder what kind of performance it really has. I activated, creation, and my heart was pounding with anticipation. Dragon Slayer's magic sword Gram, in mythology, the god of war is said to have given this magic sword to the hero. It was once shattered by the black dragon but was given new life by Kakauzuka. Its performance has been explosively increased due to their, creation, granting effect. Granted effects. God of War's Blessing A plus Dragon Slayer S plus God of War slash S plus. So, how was the rusty, battered sword after being reforged? I took out the gram from my, item box. It was a huge sword, over 2 meters long. It was quite heavy, but thanks to the armored bear armorsman's stress strength S plus, I could lift it easily. I think I can handle it with one hand. The blade shone with dazzling silver color brightly illuminating the surroundings. E -e -e -e. The glasses slime shouted in astonishment. You're not a hero, are you, Master San? How did you fix the sword? Didn't you hear from the other slimes? Eh? I have the creation skill. The god skill. Well, then you can restore the magic sword to its original state. It's back to normal, or rather, it has become more powerful. Gram has been granted three effects by creation. The first is Thegard of War's Blessing A+, which greatly increases Gram's sharpness and durability. It also comes with the bonus of self-regeneration. If Gram is chipped, it will be restored in a few minutes, and if it is shattered, it will be restored in a day. That alone is an extraordinary performance, but when fighting dragons, the Dragon Slayer S Plus is activated, increasing the performance even more. Also, it seems that it strengthens my physical abilities as well. Thegard of War slash S plus is like a special move and is activated by giving Gram magical power. It shoots out a slash of light, slashing down enemies in the distance in one fell swoop. Of course, it is also capable of damaging dragons in the sky. It is truly a sword for killing dragons. Will this be able to defeat the black dragon? Of course, I shouldn't be overconfident, but it's worth a try. There was nothing else in the room. So I turned back to the first small room. This time, I entered the central door. This is where the Demon King is supposed to enter. As I walked down the long, narrow corridor, I found a space the size of a school gymnasium, with a huge artillery structure occupying about two-thirds of the space. It was an extraordinary size. Its total length, including the barrel, was over 20 meters, and its total width was probably over 10 meters. The armor covering it was made of orichalcum giving it a massive look that made me want to call it an artillery fortress. This is a super high-powered magic laser cannon. It can burn down a large area for several minutes, so it's recommended when fighting hordes of monsters. Will it work against the Black Dragon? It's a weapon that was developed as a countermeasure to the Great Flood, so it's a little unsuitable to deal with the Black Dragon. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. This could be useful. Grand for the Black Dragon and the super high-powered magic laser cannon for the Great Flood. I can use it in that way. Then, do you want to take it with you? I touched the super high-powered magic laser cannon and thought of storing it in my item box. Then a huge magic circle appears on the ground and sucks the artillery in with a blinding light. Amazing. The glasses slime gasped. Only a demon king should be able to take out the super high-powered magic laser cannon from here. Is that so? When I asked back, full assist automatically activated and added the information. The Demon King has a large capacity, item box, which can hold the super high-powered magic laser cannon. Large capacity? Wait a minute. Does that mean that the Demon King has an unlimited capacity like me? Kakauzuka is a special existence, and the capacity of the item box is infinite. It's kind of understandable and yet incomprehensible. After that, I could no longer hear the voice in my mind. But I did understand one thing. I refuse to be a hero, a demon king, or a sage, but there seems to be no downside to that. In fact, I'm getting a much bigger advantage than if I had chosen any one of them. The skills are upwardly compatible with each of them, and in this vault, all the doors were unlocked. It's a total win. If this were a game, 
It must be the final route that would only be released after clearing the three routes, the Hero Route, the Demon King Route, and the Sage Route. Well, so much for the jokes. I have stored the super high-powered magic laser cannon in my item box, and now a new recipe has come to mind. Alright Chilkum Gullum, broken, plus super high power magic laser cannon destroyer Gullum. This is a combination I didn't expect. Well, they both originated from ancient civilizations, so in that sense, it might be the best match. I thought about it for a while and then activated, creation. The Orichilkum Gullum and the super high powered magic laser cannon are both very powerful ancient weapons, but I wonder how powerful they will be when they become cheat items through, creation. To be honest, I'm quite looking forward to it. Destroy a Gullum, a giant Gullum clad in armor made of Orichilkum. It has acquired the power to be called the ultimate weapon against the Great Flood through, creation. It is equipped with a super high powered magic laser cannon in its right eye and a rapid fire magic laser cannon in each hand. Granted effects colon advanced processing function A plus monster detection sentinel engine S plus. The ultimate weapon, huh? It's an auspicious phrase. The fact it has a vaguely chunabu vibe to it is also a high point for me personally. When I thought of taking it out of my item box. A magic circle floated to the ground. From within the magic circle, a black giant of steel slowly rises. It looks like a scene from a robot animation. On the destroyer Gillum's head, two blue eyes glowed warmly. A low, roaring drive sound came from its body, and it spoke in an electronic voice. Hello, master. Nice to meet you. Despite its rugged appearance, the mechanical giant was quite polite. It bowed slowly and extended its right hand to me. Is it asking me to shake its hand? I extended my right hand and touched the giant's hand. Thank you very much. Please leave me in charge in the case of a great flood. After the handshake, the destroyer Gillum straightened its back and stretched out its chest with confidence. It's like a human being, but this is due to the advanced processing function A+. The ordinary Orichilcum Gillum is also equipped with artificial intelligence, but the Destroyer Gillum is a very high performance one. Not only can it understand commands from me, but it also seems to be able to greet me, talk to me regularly, and even suggest strategies and tactics. Slime San 2, nice to meet you. Why yeah, the slime's eyes were rolling around again. M Master San, what's really happening? I used creation. The materials were the super high powered magic laser cannon in the Orichilcum Gillum that I defeated a while back. Amazing. You've created a new Gillum. Well, that's about it. I nodded and touched the feet of the destroyer Gillum. I will call you when it's your turn. Can I put you back in there? Item box. Understood. I'll be waiting. Yeah, see you later. As soon as I thought of storing it in my item box, a magic circle appeared at the feet of the destroyer Gillum. In a flash of light, the destroyer Gollum disappeared along with the magic circle. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 15 Part 2 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Part 2 There were no other items that I could acquire, so I walked back to the small room and opened the door on the far right. Normally, only the sage could enter this room. I wondered what kind of items were prepared there. I walked down the long narrow corridor and eventually arrived at a space about four and a half tatami mats in size t slash n around seven square meters in the center was an altar when i peeked over the top i saw that it was decorated with three pieces of a shattered shield there was some kind of emblem drawn on the shield's surface but the outline was unclear because of the rust it's the dragon god's shield it has been handed down from the time of mythology but it was shattered by the black dragon in the battle 4,000 years ago. Dot doesn't it have the same description as the gram? Oh, really? You weren't aware of it, huh? The glasses slime jumped up and down in surprise. But, it's not the hero who can restore this, it's the sage. Well, I think Master San can fix it with, creation. Let's give it a try. I collect the shield into my, item box. But surprisingly, no new recipes came to mind. I can't seem to fix it. Maybe you don't have the right materials. I wonder what it needs. You need a special jewel called the Dragon God's Red Jade. I heard that you could get it only once in a thousand years in the land of the Dragon Folk, but I don't know the details. I'm sorry, Dot. I guess we don't have time to go to another country right now. Well, even with just Gram and the Destroyer Gollum, it's quite an accomplishment. We left the vault and headed back to the underground city. Good night, 
Master San, thank you for coming to the vault. I should be the one to thank you. We were able to strengthen our forces considerably, and I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Oh, one last thing. Please stay still. What the heck is the matter? When I stopped, the glasses slime extended its tentacles toward me. It touched the back of my left hand and whispered to me. May the spirits bless you. Master San. I can feel the heat coming from where it touched me. It's a good luck charm from me. If you have any problems, the spirits will be there to help you. That's reassuring. I smiled and crouched down, patting the glasses slime on the head. Come to think of it, what is a spirit? At the entrance to the underground city, there was a sign that said, May the spirits bless you, and if I go back in my memory, I think I saw a similar message just before I was transferred to another world. As I thought that, there, full assist, was activated, and I heard a voice in my mind. Spirits are beings born from the strong thoughts of people. They are invisible to the eye, but they are always watching over you. I asked the glasses slime to use transfer magic on me, and I returned to the underground city. The transfer point is at the city's edge, in front of the first house I built. It might be a good idea to turn this house into my home. As I thought about this, an inorganic voice sounded in my brain. Contact from the main system of the underground city. Do you wish to allow Iris not Fafna to enter? Apparently, Iris had returned. She said she wanted to talk to me later, so I guess that's why she returned from Arn. About five minutes after I gave permission for her to enter, Iris arrived. Here you are, Ku. How was the vault? It was quite a turnout. Why don't we talk in the house? For now. I see. Well. I guess I'll take your word for it. I walked Iris into the house. At the house entrance, a helper slime was waiting for us and gave us a slight bow. Welcome back, Master San. You haven't had your dinner yet, right? Shall I make you something? Sure. Please do. What about you, Iris? Me too, please. I haven't eaten anything since lunch, and my head is starting to spin. A wah wah wah. That's a big problem. I'll get it ready right away. The helper slime jumped up and headed for the kitchen bouncing up and down as if in a panic. We decided to wait for the food while talking in the living room. The sofa was in the shape of a U, with a table in the middle. I sat on the underside of the sofa, and Iris sat diagonally across from me. Iris, how was the city? The preparations for the evacuation are going well. The rest is a race against time. Dot can you tell me about the vault? Okay. I briefly explain the items I acquired in the vault. Graham. The Dragon Slayer's Magic Sword, the super high powered magic laser cannon in the Destroyer Golem that was created from it, and the Dragon God's Shield that was shattered into three pieces. When I finished talking about the shield, Iris put her hand over her mouth and pondered, then opened her mouth with a serious expression. I haven't told you why I'm looking for the ruins of an ancient civilization, have I? Yes, you're right. Are you going to tell me now? Yes, I'm rather sorry it took me so long to tell you. Dot the reason I left the land of the dragon folk was to look for the dragon god's shield. The dragon god's shield was originally a precious treasure of the dragon folk, but it went missing 4000 years ago in a battle against the calamity. 4000 years ago. The time is right around the time of the fall of the ancient civilization. In order to find out the whereabouts of the shield, Iris may have decided to search the ruins first. A treasure of the dragon folk. It would be a lot of trouble if I had it. It would be better to give the Dragon God's shield to Iris. When I was about to take it out of my item box, Iris said, Wait a minute. Is it possible to restore the Dragon God's shield with Ku's creation? It's difficult now. According to Glass's slime, it requires the Dragon God's red jade to restore it. Dot I have it right here. Eh? That was a completely unexpected remark. As I was puzzled. Iris took out a red ball from her waist pouch. The ball was small enough to fit in the palm of her hand, and it shone brightly as if it were burning. It was like a miniature sun. I felt a warmth surrounding it. Iris, can I use the red ball? If their transmigrator has the shield, give them the red jade so says the legend of the dragon folk. Then, I won't hesitate. I store the dragon god's red jade in my item box. Immediately after, a new recipe came into my mind. The pieces of the shield and the dragon god's red jade. I use these as ingredients and activate, creation, dragon god's shield, a shield created by the dragon god. Whenever a calamity is revived, it responds to it and shows its true value. It can only be used by those who possess the, dragon god's shrine maiden. Granted effects.
Strength Enhancement S plus Dragon God's Divine Protection Dragon God's Barrier X. All right. It seemed that the Dragon God's shield had been properly restored. There, creation, process granted it extra effect, and the performance was higher than it was before. The Strength Enhancement S plus is just what it sounds like, and their Dragon God's Divine Protection activates when fighting a calamity. The effect seems to be that it amplifies the holder's magical power and raises their physical abilities as well. Their Dragon God's Barrier X can be used by consuming magic power to develop a powerful defensive barrier. It might even be able to protect against the Black Dragon's Fireball, but since I don't have the Dragon God's Shrine Maiden, I can't use their Dragon God's Divine Protection or their Dragon God's Barrier X. This is troublesome. It's a waste of treasure. Coo. Are you okay? Your expression looks very difficult. Iris peeked at me with concern. Is there a problem? No, I'm fine. The shield has been successfully restored. Dot however, it seems that in order to bring out the true power of the shield, you need to have the Dragon God's Shrine Maiden skill. It's not a problem, then. Iris lowered her eyes meaningfully and told me. If it's the Dragon God's Shrine Maiden, then I have it. With Iris's permission, I used appraisal. To check her status, and she indeed had the Dragon God's Shrine Maiden skill. The effect of this was to draw out the power of items with the name Dragon God. It's a very rare skill. It is said that only once every few hundred years, only a woman of the Dragon Folk can possess it. What Hyres told me was one of the old legends of the Dragon Folk. According to this, their Dragon God's Shrine Maiden has two missions. One is to search for the Dragon God's shield. The other is to hand over the Dragon God's Red Jade to the Transmigrator. It seemed that the previous Shrine Maiden was unable to fulfill her missions, but Iris has accomplished both of them. Normally, she would have been overjoyed. However, Iris was calm and collected. This is not the time to get carried away. If the Black Dragon appears before the evacuation of Un can be completed, I will have to fight. In that case, I think Iris should keep the Dragon God's shield. I took out the Dragon God's shield from my item box. It was a shield big enough to cover my body. In the center of it, the Dragon God's Red Jade was fitted, and it still shines with a red glow. This is the Dragon God's shield, huh? There are replicas in the land of the Dragon Folk, but the real thing has a different style. Iris nervously reached out her hand and received the Dragon God's shield. Once we overcome the Black Dragon's return, I will return the shield properly. Please don't worry about that. I understand. But this is originally a treasure of the dragon folk, isn't it? Can I keep it? It's a delicate matter. However, in the dragon folk's legends, their transmigrator is treated as a special being, and if Kuk claims ownership, it will probably be accepted as it is. Dot well, we can think about that after this case is over. Yes, I think so too. We both chuckled and nodded at each other. Just in time. A delicious smell drifted from the kitchen. Master San. Anisan. The food is ready. The helper slime came in with a cheerful voice and brought the food. The menu was quite lavish. Thick corn cream soup, grilled cheese with hot vegetables, fluffy bread, and a mountain of roast beef. Each dish was excellent, but this time the bread was a big hit. It could be dipped in soup, topped with grilled cheese or sandwich between two pieces of roast beef. It's a bargain to be able to taste so many different things in one meal, isn't it? As for dessert, we had vanilla ice cream, the simple sweetness of which soaked my tongue. I can't wait to feel the sugar flowing into my brain. The full stomach made me feel sleepy, but I have things to do now. I need to discuss with Chief Zitten about the plans for tomorrow. I will return to Un now. What about you? Iris, I'm coming with you. I can't be the only one taking a break when everyone else is in trouble. That's why Iris and I decided to return from the underground city. We walked through the tunnel and up the stairs. When we reached the surface, it was already late at night outside. From the surrounding forest, we could hear the ringing of the bellbirds. It's a beautiful sound. Iris smiled at me. The moon was shining in the night sky and its light was gently enveloping her. Her shimmering crimson hair and pure white skin were as beautiful as a painting. Dot what's wrong, Ku? No, it's nothing. If I could have said one of those pretentious lines here, it would have made me look cool, but unfortunately, I'm not that kind of a character. I know where I stand. We both walked straight to Arn. Hey, Ku. It wasn't long after we left the forest that Iris called out to me. Do you remember the first time we came to this forest together? That was my first quest, 
right? You collected nose grass in the blink of an eye and devised new ways to collect it using the item box. When I think back, Ku has been out of the ordinary ever since then, haven't you? As for me, I thought I completed the quests as normal. But what surprised me the most was the next day. You killed a black spider by yourself and saved my life when I was about to die, right? What's so surprising about that? A friend of mine is in trouble. It's only natural for me to help. Fufu, that's right. That's what Ku was thinking. Iris muttered happily and began to walk a little faster. When the distance between us opens up a little, she stops and looks back at me. I've been treated poorly in the land of the dragon folk. Dot is that so? Iris has the rare skill called, Dragon God's Shrine Maiden. Normally, she'd be given preferential treatment, but perhaps there was a reason for this. Whenever I was injured or sick, no one would help me. Of course, not even my parents. If that was true, this was a terrible story. In the beginning, Iris was closed off to the people around her, not only because of the prejudice against the dragon folk now, but also because of her upbringing. When I was almost killed by the black spider, I had completely given up. No one was going to come to my rescue. I thought I was going to die alone. But that didn't happen. Just then, a strong wind happened to blow. Iris's long red hair flew up and hid her face for a moment. Eventually, after the wind stopped blowing, she said with a strong look of determination. I was really happy that Ku came at that time. I will repay that debt with my life. No matter how strong the black dragon is, I will definitely protect you. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 16 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 16 Milia came to visit me at the inn, before arriving at Un, Iris and I had a brief conversation. We talked about trivial, ordinary things. I asked her where her favorite restaurant was, or whether to eat her favorite food first or leave it until the end. It wasn't that I forgot about the Great Flood or the Black Dragon, but it was a nice change of pace. As we entered Un through the south gate, most buildings were bright even though it was midnight. They must be preparing for the evacuation. Everyone's going to be very busy tonight. We hurried off to the Adventurer's Guild. Naturally, the Adventurer's Guild was in operation. The lobby was empty, but in the back, the staff was busy running around. Where is the branch manager Zitten? He's probably upstairs in his office. We walked up the stairs to the second floor. We found the branch manager's office at the end of the long corridor. I knocked on the door a few times and then called out loudly. It's Ku. I've just returned from the underground city. Oh, I've been waiting for you. Please come in. Excuse me. Sorry to bother you. The office was quite spacious. The front half of the room was a reception area with a map spread out on a table. There was a large desk in the back, flanked by bookshelves on either side. I'm sorry for the mess, but with the situation as it is, I hope you will forgive me. Chief Zitten smiled apologetically, left his desk, and walked towards us. Please sit down for now. How was the vault? It was a pretty big hall. If there are any troubles along the way, we may be able to minimize the damage by trouble. I mean the Great Flood and the Black Dragon, of course. I briefly explain Gram, the Destroyer Golem, and the Dragon God's Shield. I see. Chief Zitten crossed his arms and nodded. I'd like to see how powerful they really are, but we don't have enough time. This would be quite the gamble, but you will have to use your own judgment when the time comes. You don't need to ask for my permission. Are you sure? You and Iris are both top-notch talents. I will trust you on that. After that. We talked briefly about our future plans. The evacuation would begin before noon that day, prioritizing the children and women. In the event of the Great Flood or the resurgence of the Black Dragon, Iris and I would go and intercept it while the other adventurers would focus on guarding the residents. It's called proper division of labor. You guys are our trump card. I don't want you to be unable to exert yourselves due to a lack of sleep. Get a good night's rest tonight and come to the guild at 9 in the morning. Are you sure we should take it that easy? I don't mind. In the first place, we are grateful to you for providing us with a refuge in the underground city. Since we're about to impose even more work on you. You should at least take a break. I understand. All right, then, I'll rest without reservation. Chief Zitten's idea made sense to me, and it would be tactless to argue with him at this point. Iris and I thanked him and left the branch manager's office. It was already around one o'clock in the morning. On the second floor of the Adventurers Guild, there are several dormitory rooms, from which sleepy staff have been coming and going. They seem to be taking turns to nap and preparing for evacuation. Speaking of which, 
I wonder where Millie is, is there something you need from her? I thought I'd at least say hello to her. I'd feel bad if she was asleep, though. It's not an emergency that we need to wake her up. Well, it can wait until after dawn. We returned to the first floor of the guild and went straight out of the building. Ku, you're going back to the inn, right? Yeah, Iris House is this way, right? Would you like me to accompany you back? Yes. Well, since it's such a hassle, I might ask you to walk with me. So I decided to go to Iris' house first. I hope nothing will happen today. I hope so too. Dot, but the world is not so easy, is it? Trouble can happen when you don't want it to. You should be prepared for the worst possibilities. The Great Flood, the Black Dragon is there anything else I missed? At that moment, something suddenly crossed my mind. Iris. What is the mercenary guild doing? I had forgotten about the guild's existence since I hadn't been involved with it at all recently, but come to think of it, the adventurers guild in this world had a business rival, the mercenaries guild, which is famous for its bad behavior. I wonder if they'll try to cause trouble or something in the confusion. That's okay. As soon as there were signs of the great flood, the mercenaries fled with the entire guild. Dot, are you sure about that? Mercenaries are not obligated to protect the city. Well. Those people keep causing problems, so it might be better if they weren't around. Iris's opinion was certainly one that I could agree with. It's an emergency situation right now, and the fewer sparks of incidents we have, the better. I would like to wish the mercenaries good luck in their future endeavors. In the meantime, we arrived at Iris's house. Thank you, Ku. See you in the morning. Yeah. Don't be late. After parting ways with Iris and returning to Quiet Moon Pavilion. I quickly finished my bath and laid down on my bed. I closed my eyelids, but the problem was that I couldn't sleep. It seems that my nerves are overstimulated by the big battle ahead. I need to relax a bit more. I think I'm going to take a bath again. Maybe if I relax in the tub, I'll feel sleepy. As I got up from the bed, there was a knock at the door. Dot. Who the heck is this at this hour? Should I answer it honestly, or should I decide to remain silent? As I was wondering. I heard a reserved voice from the other side of the door. Good evening, it's me, Milia. May I have a moment of your time? When I opened the door, Milia was standing there in her work uniform. I'm sorry, Kusan. I didn't mean to disturb you at this late hour. No, it's okay. I was just having trouble sleeping. Dot let's talk in the room for now. If we talk in the corridor, it will bother the other guests. Oh, you're right. Then I'll take your word for it. I let Milia in and led her to the living room. In addition to the bedroom and living room, there is also a kitchen and a drawing room. Well, I usually only use the bedroom, though. Kusan, you're staying in an amazing room. Milia was scurrying around the living room with a look of surprise on her face. As a side note, I didn't pay a single comza to stay in this room. The merchant, Chromesan, had arranged the room for me as his gratitude for saving his life. However, I only used the bedroom and bathroom, so I felt bad about that. In the living room, there was a one-seater sofa and a three-seater sofa facing each other. When I sat down on the one-seater, Milia sat down on the three-seater. I'm really sorry to barge in on you so late at night. Dot actually, I have something important to tell you. What's the matter? I just received a message from Chief Zitten about today's developments. If the Black Dragon appears, Kusan and Iris San will fight it together, right? Yeah, that's the plan. Dot I understand. Milia nodded with a serious expression and took out a small pouch made of linen from the breast pocket of her uniform. Kusan, please take this. It might be useful for you. What in the world is that? When I opened the pouch Milia gave me, I found a silver ring inside. The ring had letters like the alphabet engraved on the surface, and after looking at it for a while, full assist was activated, and I was able to read it, you who have come from a far away land, if you challenge the dragon, empty your vessel, the blessing of the spirit cannot dwell there, you can read that, Kusan, it's thanks to my skill, more importantly, what kind of ring is this, it's called the spirit ring, it was given to me by my distant grandfather when I was little, he said, if anyone comes to challenge the dragon, Give them this ring. I see. I nodded and thought about the text engraved on the ring. A person from a far away land probably refers to a person from another world. It is certain that they are trying to challenge the dragon, and in that sense, they may be qualified to receive the ring. When I was thinking about this, I heard an inorganic voice in my mind. The link with the spirit ring has been established by, full assist. Skills based on the role will be released. Kukauzuka is not a hero, a demon king or a sage and possesses, 
creation. Because the special conditions have been fulfilled, material refinement has been unlocked. When I opened the status inside my mind, I saw that the skill had indeed been added. Material refinement. The effect of this is to create a higher level material by multiplying the same material. However, it can't be used on any material, and the target seems to be limited. Fortunately, there was just one material in my item box that could be used for material refinement. It was the Lonely Wolf spelt. About ten days ago, I fought a horde of lonely wolves. Thanks to this, I acquired more than 5,000 belts, but if I sold all of them, the price would collapse, so I kept about 80% of them on hand. When it comes to this, let's give it a try. The following was what came to my mind as a recipe. Lonely Wolf Peltex 100 Fenra Peltex 1 Fenra is a wolf monster from Norse mythology and is a common existence in fantasy-based anime and games. The fact that there are Fenra Pelts makes me wonder if there are Fenra living somewhere in this world. Aside from that, when I checked the Fenra fur with appraisal, the results were as follows. Fenra Pelt the pelt of the magical wolf Fenra. The texture is superb, and it has excellent physical and magic resistance. If used as a material for clothing, it will be blessed with divine speed. This is a very interesting explanation. I wonder what the blessing of divine speed is. I'm quite curious about it, and I think it will be useful in future battles. With a little more pelt, I wonder if a recipe for creation will come to mind. Um, Kusan? Um, oh, I'm sorry. When Milia spoke to me, I came to my senses. I've gotten carried away with my new skills. I'm sorry about that, Milia. Kusan, your sudden silence startled me. Are you okay? Is it possible that the ring is cursed? It's not like that. Actually, my skills have increased. A. Eh? Milia rolled her eyes and screamed in surprise. This was a natural reaction, I suppose. Skills are inborn. They are not acquired. That's how it's generally thought. Er. Uh, Milia asked me with a puzzled expression on her face. I guess that means it was a good decision to give the ring to Kusan. Probably. I nodded and put the ring on the middle finger of my left hand. The size of the ring is perfect and there is no weird pressure or uneasy feeling that it might fall off. I felt as if it had been a part of my body from the beginning. As I gaze at the ring, Milia calls out to me, Do you like it? Yes, it's a nice ring. Fufu, I'm glad you like it. Dot actually, half of the reason I joined the Adventurers Guild was for the ring. I'm so relieved that I was able to give it to the right person. You won't quit the Adventurers Guild now, will you? Of course not. I am a rising star. After all, Milia puffed up her chest proudly. I'm also looking forward to seeing what Kusan will do in the future. My prediction is that you will be able to clear up the Great Flood and take care of the Black Dragon with a single swipe and leave your name in history. I think that's an overestimation, indeed. You can do it, Kusan. It will be fine. After saying that, Milia smiled with a gentle face. Just looking at her smile, strangely enough, my tense feeling began to melt away. Dot I'm getting a little sleepy. Fewer. I suddenly let out a yawn. Right after that, Melia also let out a small yawn. We both looked at each other and smiled. I think I just yawned. It happens sometimes, doesn't it? Time is essential now. I think I'll go home and have a little sleep. Thanks for your work. Have a good rest. Yes, thank you. After Melia left the room. I fell deeply asleep in my bedroom bed. When I woke up at 7 a.m., I felt my fatigue from yesterday disappear. My body felt light. The air was good and I felt refreshed. I quickly got ready and set about the work I had left undone yesterday. I wondered if I could use Fenra's belt to create a piece of equipment with creation. First, I used material refinement to increase the number of belts. When I created over 20 belts, a new recipe popped into my mind. It seems that I can make an armor piece called Fenra Coat. Of course, I had to do it right away. Fenra Coat, a trop grade coat made of luxurious Fenra belt. It has trop class physical and magic resistance and has tremendous power. Granted effects colon physical defense enhancements magic defense enhancements god speed blessing x. I took it out of the item box and found that it was a black long coat. The size is a little large so it can be worn over armor. After some thought, I put on the armored bear armor first. I removed the bear head from my left shoulder and stored it in my item box. On top of that, I put on the Fenra coat, the black spider gauntlets on both arms, and the spirit ring on my left middle finger. I'm all set. Let's go. I left the room. From yesterday to today, 
It was as if I was being guided to ready my set of equipment for a decisive battle. Now all I have to do is give it my all. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 17 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 17 I tried to face the Great Flood. When I went to the lobby of the Adventurers Guild, I found Iris already there. Good morning, Ku. Ara, you weren't wearing that coat yesterday, were you? I made it this morning with my skills. Then it must have a great performance. It looks like a luxury item. What kind of pelt are you using, Fenra? A. Iris froze in surprise and blinked repeatedly. Fenra, you say? Um, that Fenra, right? The one with an even higher danger level than S. Well. I didn't get the material by defeating it, though. I put my face close to Iris's ear and whispered to her, explaining their material alchemy effects. Ku, you're really becoming less human. Turning a lonely wolf's pelt into a Fenris is already in the realm of the gods, no matter how you look at it. Amazing is not enough to describe it. Even so, material alchemy does not create something out of nothing. It's a skill that is only possible with materials and calling it an act of God is certainly an overstatement. While I was thinking about this, it was already nine o'clock in the morning. From the back of the guild, Chief Zitan appeared and came towards us. Good morning Kukun, Iris Kun. Were you able to sleep well last night? Yeah, I feel great today, thanks to you. Good morning. You can count on me. Ha <laughs> ha, that's good to know. Well, I look forward to seeing your work today. As of last night, I had already discussed with Chief Zitan what to do from here. First of all, I head to the underground city and open the locks on the doors. It's not easy to open and close the doors every time refugees come. After that, I gathered the helper slime and explained about today's activities. A lot of people will be evacuated from Arn. When I told them that, the slime's eyes brightened up. Wow. Customers. It's the customers. We'll take care of them. We'll welcome them. We have to get ready for the welcome party. Let's go. Woo. The slimes shouted in unison and scattered to prepare to receive the refugees. An hour later, the first refugees appeared with the guild staff. I hid behind a building for a while and watched them. As the refugees entered the underground city, they stood there in amazement. I didn't know there was a city here. I'd heard about it. But it turned out to be true. Hey, hey, isn't this more magnificent than Arn? As the people were puzzled, the helper slimes gathered there, jumping up and down. Welcome to the underground city. We welcome you. This city was built by Master San. Well, I'd better greet them. I stepped out of the shadows and headed toward the refugees. Hello, I'm Kukazuka, master of this underground city. I'm currently working as an adventurer in Arn. Oops. I couldn't resist using polite words. However, it would be uncool to change my tone now, so I should continue talking like this. The living environment has already been prepared. Please follow the instructions of the guild staff and enter your respective residence. Kukazuka, could it be that you're the bear killer? One of the refugees muttered. Yeah, that's what some people call me. I nodded and answered. The reaction of the people to this was unexpected. I thought I'd seen that guy before but it turns out he's the bear killer. I asked him to clean up my yard for a city quest, and he did it so diligently. I never thought I'd see that famous guy here. I've heard he's a skilled adventurer, but he seems like a nice guy. Apparently, I'm more well known than I thought. It seems there are no bad rumors, and although I was embarrassed, I was quite happy. After that, the evacuation proceeded smoothly. Just to think that nothing would happen at this point, without any trouble whatsoever. Milia came running up to us with a grim expression on her face. We just received a call from the observation team. It seems that the monster outbreak has begun in the Fatos Mountains to the north. Does this mean the Great Flood is coming? How far has the evacuation gone? When Iris asked, Milia lowered her eyes apologetically. We're about 70% of the way there. We're ahead of schedule, but... You mean we're not going to make it? I'm very sorry to impose this burden on you too. But please intercept the. Don't worry about it. The evacuation was going well, and the Adventurers Guild is not to blame. I was just bored, and I'm glad to have a job. Right, Ku. Indeed. If we make it through, you can offer us a special reward then. I, I understand. The Adventurers Guild and I will provide you with as much reward as we can. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Iris, let's go. Yeah, let's hurry up. As Iris and I stepped out onto the ground, the sky turned into the color of sunset. We headed through the forest towards the north. On the way, we passed people who had evacuated from Arn. 
but all of them had anxious expressions on their faces. I guess it was a natural reaction to the fact that a herd of monsters was approaching. The reason why there was no panic was because the guild staff who were leading us were using persuasion and calm to calm the people down. It can be said that this is a response that only a world with skills can provide. We stopped at a point halfway between Un and the Fatos Mountains. It was a vast grassland. There was nothing to block our view and we could see far into the distance. We'll intercept them here. There's no place to hide, are you sure? It's okay. Dot we're going to blow them up anyway. I opened my item box and focused on taking out the destroyer golem. A magic circle floats on the ground, and a steel giant appears from it. That's an impressive size. Iris muttered with a look of surprise on her face. It's probably twice the size of the Orichalcum golem. You are really out of the norm, Ku. To be able to create something like this. It's thanks to my skills. Immediately after I answered that, the destroyer golem's two eyes flashed blue. Hello, master. Dot is that a sign of the great flood? Yeah. It's your turn. Can you do it? Yes, I'm ready. It happened suddenly. The destroyer golem's eyes flashed, and its entire body emitted a vibrant driving sound. Thank you, master. I'm honored to have the opportunity to play an active role. Oh, oh. The destroyer Gillum was suddenly in high tension, which made me confused. For a machine, he is quite emotional. I'll do my best. After several minutes of waiting with the highly motivated, destroyer Gillum, a swarm of monsters is approaching from the mountains, raising a cloud of dust. From a quick glance, I got the impression that more than half of them were highly dangerous monsters like armored bears and black spiders. If they were not stopped, they would not only kill the people evacuating, but all the adventurers guarding them as well. We definitely need to stop them here. Iris, are you ready? Of course. Iris held the dragon god's shield in her left hand and the spear in her right. I also took out Gran from my item box and activated my dexterity. Super high powered magic laser cannon, start filling energy. The destroyer Gillum thrusts both of its arms into the ground and takes a slightly forward bent posture. The driving sound becomes more intense and lightning flashes around his right eye. It is now charged. Master, please give me your orders. Okay. I thought about it for a moment, then pointed at the crowd of monsters and told him, dot mow them down. The next moment, an extremely large magic laser shot out from the destroyer Gillum's right eye. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2021 slash 09 slash 00032 dot jpg. It was a massive torrent of light. The pale blue torrent became an overwhelming violence that swallowed up the monsters. The ground was gouged out, and a crater was created with a huge explosion. At that moment, an inorganic voice echoed in my brain. With this acquisition of experience, you are now level 71. Your HP and MP will increase, and your physical abilities will improve. Apparently, when the destroyer Gillum defeats a monster, the experience value will come to me, the master. The fact that I can level up without fighting seems like a cheat, or at least, a benefit. Eventually, the torrent of light passed and a charred wilderness remained. It was like the end of the world. The monsters in the line of fire had evaporated, and not even ashes remained. That's an impressive power. Iris muttered in a daze. If Ku decided to get serious, you could easily destroy one or two civilizations. Dot it may be so. The destroyer Gillum's magic laser had more destructive power than expected. In other words, it's like having a nuclear missile in my personal possession, and I have to be careful how I handle it. If I get carried away, I don't know what will be waiting for me, but for now, since this is an emergency situation of a great flood, I should not hesitate to use it. Cooling of the weapon is complete. I will now begin to sweep away the remaining enemies. The destroyer Gillum emitted an electronic voice and pulled its arms out of the ground. Most of the enemies were blown away by the super high powered magic laser cannon, but the monsters that were out of the line of fire and those that were far away remained. It's a big group, tens of thousands of them. After all, there was always a chance that a shot would go astray. The destroyer Gillum's arms are equipped with rapid-fire magic laser cannons, which it uses to burn up the remaining monsters one after another. Oops, 
This is no time for idle gazing. I guess we should work a little too. I'll take the left. Iris, you take the right. Let's see how many of them we can kill. Dinner's on the loser. All right. I have to be serious about this. Iris and I nodded at each other and immediately started running. Since I'm going to be doing this, I want to test out my new equipment. First of all, let's try to use the Fenra Coats Granted Effect. Godspeed Protection X. The effect is to gain lightning speed in exchange for magic power consumption. As soon as it was activated, my concentration increased to the limit. I felt as if time was flowing slowly, and only my body was moving as usual. No, it was much faster than usual. I ran hundreds of meters in an instant and jumped into a group of monsters. There were four black spiders and my past self would have had a bit of trouble with them, but not now. I swing down Gran. The quick slash cut the black spider in half on both sides. Next, in return, I cut off the heads of the second and third monsters and stopped their good speed protection X. This was all done in about two seconds. It's an amazing acceleration, but the magic power consumed is extraordinary. It took nearly 60% of my total magic power. My MP recovers 1% per second, but even so, I should think about how to use the good speed protection X. If I keep using it, I'm going to be in trouble when the time comes. Now, there is only one black spider left, and it let out a frightened B E E E E E and tried to flee the scene at full speed. I wonder what to do. The good speed protection X is good, but I should also try out Graham's granted effect. Yes. Thegard of War slash S plus. When I poured about 10% of my magic power into it. Graham's blade was enveloped in a silvery glow. Oh yeah. When I swung my sword down, silver flashes were emitted as if tracing my movements. Although the black spider is a monster known for its quick movements, it could not escape the blade of light. It was slashed from behind and fell to the ground. One hit, one kill. The experience value increases, and I am now level 72. HP 810 Northern Mariana Islands 30500. My MP is still exceptionally high, and it's getting to be a ridiculous number. In addition, Thagard Speed Protection X consumes 10,000 MP per second and can last for about 3 seconds. As for Thagard of War slash S+, it is possible to adjust the amount of magic power it consumes and the more magic power you put into it, the higher the range and power will be. As soon as I thought about trying full power next time, I suddenly heard a sharp metallic sound from Gran. What happened? What the heck is going on? As if to answer my question, full assist, was activated, and an inorganic voice echoed in my brain. The resurrection of the black dragon has been detected. This will activate a dragon slayer S+. Apparently, the real battle starts here. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 18 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Chapter 18 I tried to fight the Black Dragon. There are still some monsters left, but we should prioritize dealing with the Black Dragon. First, let's meet up with Iris. Looking at the surroundings, Iris was fighting against a pack of lonely wolves at a little distance away. While defending herself with the Dragon God's Shields Granted Effect. Dragon God's Barrier X, she was making sure to kill them one by one with precise counters. There is no waste in her movements, which shows her solid ability as an A-ranked adventurer. There were only six lonely wolves left. Iris would probably be able to defeat them in less than a minute. But even that time is too precious right now. It's time to go. I activated Thagard Speed Blessing X. In the blink of an eye, I close the distance, and in the next instant, I cut down all six lonely wolves. Iris was confused by the sudden event and blinked repeatedly. A hey, cuckoo. I'm sorry for snatching your prey. It's an emergency. The black dragon is coming. When I told her that, the gram on my right hand made a sharp metallic sound as if it was in agreement with me. A few seconds later, Iris's shield also made a similar sound. This one must also have sensed the revival of the black dragon. The delay in timing may have been due to the fact that she was fighting the lonely wolves. Master. An extremely loud electronic voice came from behind me. When I turned around, I saw the destroyer Gillum in the distance facing me and waving his right hand in the air. I'll take care of the rest of the monsters. Master, please concentrate on the black dragon. Good luck. In fact, it seemed that the great flood was almost over. There were still quite a few monsters left, 
but the destroyer Gillum alone would be enough to deal with them. Okay, I'm counting on you. I shouted loudly and waved my right hand back. Then Iris giggled next to me. You guys get along so well, don't you? Well, we're fighting together, you know. The destroyer Gillum is a very reliable ally. Even if he's against a high-ranked monster, he's not going to lose, and you can trust him to have your back. Dot now. I wonder where the black dragon is. For some reason, when I muttered that, it automatically triggered, auto-mapping. A pale blue window appeared and displayed a map of the surrounding area. Dot a red dot of light was shining in the western part of the Fatos Mountains. Could this be the point where the black dragon appears? Let's go there. Yes, let's go. Iris and I exchanged glances and nodded at each other. Keeping our guard up, we headed toward the point of light in the western sky. The setting sun was sinking behind the mountains. At that moment, a strange phenomenon occurred. The sky suddenly seemed to distort, and a huge black sphere appeared, blocking the setting sun. It was a scene like a solar eclipse. The black sphere expanded little by little, shaking violently once every few seconds. Eventually, cracks appeared on its surface. One, two, three. It was like an egg just before it was born. Gram and the dragon god's shield emitted the most intense metallic sound ever. And then the sphere bursts open from the inside. <laughs> After 4,000 years, the black dragon of calamity had returned. The huge body covered in jet black scales looked like a fortress floating in the sky. Its appearance was so ominous that it gave off a sense of intimidation that almost suffocated me. The red eyes, like boiling magma, glared at me. Gah! The roar was now a kind of attack. The tremendous volume shook my brain. A normal person would have fainted at this point. Dot fortunately, I'm safe. Thanks to their, transmigrator, all abnormalities have been shut out. But I am not the only one in this place. When I looked at Iris, she had a pained expression on her face but managed to hold her position. Are you okay? I'm fine. Don't underestimate the strength of the dragon folk. Iris smiled fearlessly. Her crimson. Pure eyes were full of fighting spirit. I think she can handle this. You're amazing, Ku. How can you keep a calm face after hearing such a loud scream? It's because of my skills. I answered shortly and turned my gaze to the black dragon in the sky. First, let's start with, appraisal. Black dragon of extreme destruction, a dragon of calamity that appears only once every 4000 years. Its flames are the flames of the apocalypse turning all civilizations to ashes. Its jet black scales contain a great curse that only a dragon slaying magic sword can wound. It seems that the black dragon's real name, is the black dragon of extreme destruction. But what's more important is the second half of the description. For example, even if I brought the destroyer Gillum here, it would not be an effective fighting force. Even the special power of the super high powered magic laser cannon would not work against the black dragon as it would be bounced by the cursed scales. The only thing that could defeat the black dragon is the dragon slaying magic sword. If I hadn't found Gram in the vault, I would have had to flee in a panic. The black dragon was positioned high in the sky so direct attacks were unlikely to reach it. But I have figured of war slash s plus. First, let's do a little test. When I put magic power into Gram, the blade is enveloped in silver light. The amount consumed is about 10% of my maximum MP. The value is around 3000. The magic power of an average magician is 100, so it's the equivalent of 30 magicians giving it their all. When I swung Gram down with spirit, a silvery slash was released. It reached the black dragon at lightning speed, carving a not so shallow wound in its torso. A splash of blood danced and poured down to the ground. The black dragon looked in agony for just a few seconds and then roared in anger. It opened its mouth violently and glowed red. A huge fireball was released. This is the hellfire that burned through the ancient metropolis. A direct hit would easily obliterate Iris and me. Dot of course. There is no way that we will just sit back and let it happen. Iris, please, leave it to me. Dot I'll protect you, I promise. In response to my shout, Iris raises the dragon god shield. The dragon god's barrier X was activated, and a huge wall of light appeared in front of us. The fireball crashes into it. A roaring sound shook the ground with the explosion, and a fierce wind blew through. The other side of the wall had been burned to the ground but we were unharmed. The wall of light was still intact. Apparently, the black dragon's fireball had been successfully blocked. You, 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 you. The black dragon roared irritably and then it flapped its wings and soared high into the sky, 
I wondered if it would just fly away into space. But unfortunately, my wish was not fulfilled. Gaewich the black dragon circled vigorously at a high altitude and swooped down towards Iris and me. I guess it couldn't break through the defensive barrier with the fireball, so it switched to a direct attack. The huge body of the black dragon, with its overwhelming speed, hit the wall of light. The wall of light shattered without any difficulty. Then the black dragon continued to plummet down to crush us with its momentum. I can't believe it broke through the barrier. Iris gasped. In this situation, if you think about it normally, you will be in a desperate pinch. But I have a way to turn the tables. I activated Thagard's speed blessing eggs and ran through the accelerated world. As much as 10,000 magic power were consumed per second, so I couldn't afford to be complacent. First, I ran to Iris' side and picked her up. If I were to apply the laws of physics on Earth, I would be moving at several hundred kilometers per hour, and I would have flipped Iris off, but that didn't happen. Is there some special law at work here? Well, I'll have to wait until after I survive to think about that. I took Iris in my arms and left the place. When I had gained enough distance, I lowered her to the ground and deactivated Thagard's speed blessing X. During these two seconds, it consumed 60% of my MP, but I can't risk my life. The black dragon noticed that we had disappeared and made a sudden stop in midair. This would be a fatal gap in the battle. I pointed my left arm technically, the black spider's gauntlet on my left arm at the black dragon. I have to stop it from moving first. I poured magic power into the gauntlet and activated black spider thread X. Immediately after, the sticky spider silk was spat out like a flood. The amount clearly exceeded the volume of the entire gauntlet. It must have been converting the magic power into spider silk. In a way, it's like a relative of the creation effect. An enormous amount of spider silk entangled the whole body of the black dragon and took away its freedom. Gugua, unable to move its wings due to the thread, the black dragon fell directly to the ground. With a thunderous roar, a cloud of dust rolled up. The black dragon tried to stand up immediately, but due to the spider silk, it was unable to move properly. At my side, Iris was looking at me with wide eyes. Hey, Ku, could it be that we're beating the black dragon? For now, it's all good, and I'm going to push through this if I can. I hold up the gram. Thagard's speed blessing eggs and black spider thread X consumed a lot of magic power, but in my case, 1% is recovered per second. My magic power had already returned to 40% of its maximum value. I poured all of it into Thagard of War slash S plus. Let's just push it through. I set up the gram as if carrying it on my right shoulder and swung it down with all my might. A flash of light like a cosmic supernova explosion, shot out from the blade. It was no longer a slash of light but a bombardment of light. It would be as powerful as, if not more powerful than, the destroyer Gillum's super high-powered magic laser cannon. <laughs> but the black dragon wasn't without resistance either. Struggling against the spider silk, it turned towards me, opened its mouth wide, and unleashed a fireball with all its might. The slash of light and fireball collided causing a huge explosion. Ku, get back. A barrier of light was deployed in front of me. Looking behind, Iris was holding up the Dragon God shield. Apparently, she reactivated the Dragon God barrier X. It was a close call. If Iris have not put up the barrier, both of us would have been caught in the explosion. Thanks, Iris. I told you I would protect you, didn't I? Iris muttered a little proudly. I wonder what happened to the Black Dragon. I hope we managed to defeat it. There was nothing to see beyond the barrier. The explosion had passed, but black smoke was still billowing from the charred ground. My vision was completely blocked. I checked my item box, but there was no black dragon corpse in there. This means that the battle is not over yet. As if to reinforce this perception, the gram emits a metallic screeching sound. Immediately after, there was a thunderous roar and all the black smoke in front of me was blown away. Gwaewa, the roar was the most violent yet and was followed by a shockwave. Several cracks appeared in the light barrier. The black dragon was staring at us from high in the sky. Its body was deeply wounded, but it didn't seem to be weakened. An aura like a black mist rose from its body, giving off an air of misery. The black dragon roared again. At the same time, something unexpected happened. The jet black aura seemed to swell greatly and the madder red sky closed in on abyssal darkness. It was as if night had fallen. No, it was even darker than night. There are no stars or moon in sight, 
only darkness, the abnormality had reached us as well. It's hard to put into words, but I felt as if something was slipping out of my body. When I checked my status, I saw that my MP had stopped recovering, and in fact, had begun to decrease. What was going on? Just as I was wondering, full assist, was activated, and an inorganic voice sounded in my mind. The black dragon of extreme destruction has activated the dark field. This is a skill that absorbs magic power from any living being within a radius of two kilometers. When I heard that explanation, I gasped, dot this is not good. My magic power recovers 1% per second, but the absorption speed of the dark field exceeded that. My MP is already less than 10,000, and I can't even retreat with Thagard's speed blessing X. The longer the battle drags on, the more disadvantageous it becomes. I should hurry up and settle this. I gave all my remaining magic power to Gran. Oh yeah. God of War slash S plus a silver flash of light gushed out and approached the black dragon. It's an attack with all my might. If I can't beat it with this, I'll never have a chance. The black dragon spreads its wings wide and deploys a dark colored barrier in front of it. The two opposing sides, light and dark, collided violently. In conclusion, the silver flash managed to break through the barrier. However, at that point, it had lost most of its power and was unable to do any damage to the black dragon. Gah! The black dragon roared as if it was proud of its victory and immediately began to counterattack. Its jaw opened wide, and its mouth flared red. What came out of it was not a fireball but a torrent of heat rays. My magic power is running out. I don't have any items that can turn things around and I'm completely out of options. Will I have to give up now? Coo. That's when it happened. Iris jumped in front of me and deployed a light barrier. I will protect you. That is what I promised. The walls creaked and squeaked as they received the heat rays of the black dragon. However, the confrontation did not last long. Kaya. The wall cracked here and there and eventually shattered into pieces. As a result of the aftermath, Iris' body was flung away. There is nothing to block the heat rays anymore. At this rate, both Iris and I would be burned to a crisp. I don't want that. I've just started new life, and I don't want it to end halfway like this. When I was working in Japan, I didn't have anything worth living for, and to be honest, I didn't care when I died. But now, it's different. Ever since I came to this other world, I've enjoyed every day. Iris, Milia, Chrome San, Relic, Chief Zitan, the old man of the Golden Bear Restaurant, the adventurers, the town residents. Everyone warmly welcomed me as a visitor. I felt very comfortable spending time with them, and that's why I don't want to let go of them. I don't want to die. I want to live. I'm going back to them. With my determination, my concentration increases to the limit, and my thoughts accelerate to the limit. In a second that felt like an eternity. I saw the ring on my left hand. It was given to me by Milia last night. It was a spirit ring. There are several letters like the alphabet engraved on its surface. Now, each of the letters was shining with a golden light. You who come from a far away land, if you challenge the dragon, empty your vessel. The blessings of the spirits cannot be placed there. There must have been something like that written on it. As I remembered this, I heard an inorganic voice. Kukauzika is a transmigrator. Second. Kukauzika is engaged in battle with the Black Dragon. Third, Kukauzika's magic power is zero. Since all of the above conditions are met, their spiritual blessing will be temporarily released. In the next moment, my body was enveloped in a warm, golden light. My magic power, which should have been exhausted, is now full, and in fact, it continues to increase beyond the upper limit. The number of my MP is 100,000, 200,000. 300,000. And eventually, it breaks through the 1 million mark. I don't know what is happening, but it is definitely an opportunity. Dot let's go. I activated Thagard of War slash S plus. I raised the gram high in the air and put all the magic I had into it, and swung it down. A golden flash of light was released. It pushed back the heat rays at a furious pace and finally attacked the black dragon. Gwa the screams of the black dragon echoed. The golden light burned its entire body and it began to crash to the ground. When the huge body eventually crashed into the ground, its feet trembled violently with a roar. G ah. But the black dragon was still alive. It opened its mouth wide and was about to release the heat rays again. Of course, I wasn't going to let it shoot me. I readied the gram. My magic power is still increasing, and the MP equivalent is over a billion. I channeled all that into the blade, 
converged it, and unleashed the final blow. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty one slash oh nine slash oh 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 two one dot jpg. The flashing blade cut through the black dragon. I cut it. I could feel it in my hand. The black dragon's body slowly tilted and fell to the ground. It never moved again. Soon, the darkness that surrounded the area had cleared up and the sky returned to a deep crimson. I've won. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Chapter 19 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, blast. Chapter 19 I tried to clean up properly. My body was wrapped in golden light from there, spirit blessing, but the glow gradually weakened and finally disappeared. An inorganic voice echoed in my head. The calamity the black dragon of extreme destruction has been defeated. The temporary release of spirit blessing, will be terminated. At the same time, I fell to my knees on the spot. My whole body felt heavy. I couldn't stand very well. I wondered if it was a reaction to the fact that I had used more magic power than I could handle. As I was breathing hard, the inorganic voice told me, you are now level 91. My previous level was 72, so I've gone up 19 levels at once. This alone was a surprise, but there was more to the message. First, Kukauzuka is an extraordinary being and possesses, creation. Second, Kukauzuka is over level 90. Three, Kukauzuka has experience in defeating a calamity. Since all of the above conditions have been met, their, calamity summoning, will be unlocked. Apparently, a new skill has been added. The effect is to summon and use a defeated calamity. I had just defeated the black dragon, so of course, it was included in the summoning option. Should I give it a try? No. Let's do it another time. I'm at my limit physically and mentally, and I have higher priorities. I wonder if Iris is safe. I stored Graham in my item box and looked behind me. Iris was lying some distance away. She was lying on her back, completely unconscious. Dot Iris, I start to stagger along, dragging my legs, which have become heavy with fatigue. I wonder if Iris is okay. It's not the heat rays that hit her directly but she was flung away in the aftermath from the breakdown of the protective wall. She probably just fainted because she used her magic to the limit. Maybe. Dot please let it be so. However, I have a bad feeling about this. I kneel down beside Iris and pick her up on her back. Iris, are you okay? I called out to her, but she didn't answer. Her eyelids were still closed, and her face showed no signs of blood. Iris, I shook her shoulders and activated my appraisal. Her status was listed as abnormal condition, lack of magic power, serious illness. It says that she is in serious condition, but is her life in danger? As I thought that, there, full assist, activated, and I heard a more detailed explanation. Iris note Fafner is suffering from a serious lack of magic power. If it continues like this, it may interfere with life support. Do you wish to transfer your magic power? Of course. Do it right away. I can't lose Iris after we've defeated the black dragon. Then transfer the magic power. 3, 2, 1, 0. For a moment, I felt as if something warm was slipping out of my body. When I used their, appraisal, again, I found that the abnormal condition was removed from Iris's status. Coo. Eventually, Iris slowly woke up. What happened to the black dragon? I defeated it. It's okay now. I see, that's good. Iris sighed in relief, then looked up at me and said, The reason I fainted was probably because I was running out of magic. Yeah, how did you know? The last time I put up the barrier, I felt a thread snap inside me. Dot I was in a very dangerous situation. Wasn't I? Dot yes. I don't know the details, but Ku helped me, right? Thank you. I owe you again don't I? Don't worry about it. Iris is an important friend for me. An important friend, huh? Iris smiled happily. It's a little embarrassing, but it's not a bad feeling. Dot I see. I gave a short response and turned my gaze upwards. The sun had already set, and the sky was turning indigo. The night will soon arrive. I don't want to stay out in the open like this, but I don't think Iris and I are going to be able to move. I wonder what we should do now. Will I be able to recover my strength if I drink a lot of heal potion? When I was about to open my item box, the sound of footsteps echoed, and a large object approached us. Master, you're safe. Thank goodness, thank goodness. It was the destroyer Gillum. As soon as he found us, he ran up to us, waving his right hand in the air. I've annihilated the monster, 
Mission accomplished. Thank you. You've done well. Congratulations, Master, on defeating the Black Dragon. Are you returning to the underground city? Yes, that's the plan. If that's the case, then by all means. The destroyer Gillum crouched down on the spot and reached out his both hands. Please don't hesitate to get on board. I guarantee you a comfortable journey. The destroyer Gillum's hands were just big enough for one person to sit in. I sat on the left, and Iris sat on the right. Then, we're off. The destroyer Gillum began to walk slowly. Of course, it shook, but the rhythm was constant and comfortable. It was the same feeling I get when sitting on a train seat. I looked to my right and saw that Iris had fallen asleep before I knew it. My consciousness was gradually fading and I was also falling into a deep sleep. Where am I? The next thing I knew, I was floating in the darkness. I was supposed to have been riding on the left-hand side of the destroyer Gillum a while ago, but what the hell happened? Dot somehow, I feel like I've been in a similar situation before. As I was thinking about this, a semi-transparent panel suddenly appeared in front of me. It looked like a message window from a game. But what was displayed there was no text but images. It was an event that happened 4,000 years ago. Black Dragon was destroying the city one after another, and the people who survived were building an underground city. Once the underground city was completed, the ancient people began a huge ritual. A magic circle over a hundred meters in diameter was drawn on the ground, and hundreds, if not thousands of people prayed within it. The ritual continued for three days and three nights, and finally, the magic circle was activated. One by one, the ancient people turned into golden particles, and finally, there was no one left. What on earth had happened? I don't know for sure, but I can guess. The golden particles I saw them when I used their spirit blessing. The ancient people involved in constructing the underground city may have been turned into spirits through a ritual. For what purpose? Perhaps to lend their power to their transmigrator will appear in the distant future. When I came to that conclusion, the video ended, and a text was displayed instead. We would like to express our utmost gratitude to you for fulfilling our long cherished wish of 4000 years. Master, wake up. Master, the voice of the destroyer Gillum woke me up. It was deep in the cello forest, in front of the entrance to the underground city. Ku, are you okay? It seemed that Iris had woken up first and was standing in front of the door that led to the underground city. I'm sorry. I fell asleep for a moment. That's understandable. It was such a fierce battle. I think I'll sleep better today. I jumped off the left side of the destroyer Gillum. Thank you for carrying me. You're welcome. Do you have any other orders? Well, I thought about it for a while and then decided to send the destroyer Gillum to the city of Arn. All the inhabitants had been evacuated to the underground city, so naturally, the city was empty. If monsters or bandits were to target it, it would be a disaster, and a guard should be provided. I understand. I'll do my best to protect the city. The destroyer Gillum saluted and headed towards Arn with a vigorous gait. The back looked big and reliable. I know he'll do well. When the two of us returned to the underground city, we found Milia standing at the entrance to the city. Kusan. Iris San. She looked like she was about to burst into tears as she rushed towards us. Hey, are you okay? Are you hurt? I was really worried. We're fine. Don't worry. You you. you. I'm so glad. I wondered what I would do if the two of you didn't come back. Hua. It seems that she was overwhelmed with emotion, and tears began to fall from her eyes. Eventually, she began to cry out loudly. I think this is the first time she's shown this much emotion. You were really worried about us, weren't you? Iris smiled and hugged Milia. They are like two sisters who are very close. It was about 10 minutes before Milia stopped crying. I I'm sorry. I was so overwhelmed. When I was about to say, that's fine. There were dozens of translucent, round creatures rushing towards me at once from the city. It was a horde of helper slimes. They stopped moving around me and bowed a bit vertically. Welcome back, Master San. You defeated the Black Dragon, didn't you? Yay, yay, yay. Our master is strong, 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 strong. The helper slimes swayed from side to side, and for some reason, they began to sing a chorus. They were singing a song in praise of me. To be honest, I was really embarrassed. As I looked away in embarrassment, I saw Chief Zitten some distance away. He waited for the slimes to finish their chorus and then slowly approached us. Kukun, Iris Kun, 
Thank you for your hard work. What happened on the surface? The Great Flood and the Black Dragon have been eliminated. The crisis should be over now. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I really thank you. Chief Zitan smiled happily and asked us to shake his hand. After we shook hands, I gave him a brief explanation of what I had done since I left the underground city. After listening to everything, he nodded deeply and replied, Without you, the city would have been destroyed and no one would have survived. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, dot I'll be sure to report this to the Lord, and he'll give you the honor and reward you deserve. You can look forward to it. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 1 Epilogue Sponsored chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Epilogue I returned to the city of Arn. After a few days, the safety of the area around Arn was confirmed, and the residents returned to the city. However, it seemed that life in the underground city was very comfortable, and the people seemed to regret leaving. This place is better to live in than Un, isn't it? There are also the helper slimes. When I go back, I'll have to do all the housework again. I wonder if I could move here in my old age. It's so nice and relaxing to live here. Judging from these responses, it would be a good idea to sell the residential areas of the underground city as lots. It would be a solution to the overpopulation problem in Un and it might kill two birds with one stone. In the absence of the residents, the city of Un was protected by the destroyer Gollum, but it seemed that the mercenary guild had come to cause trouble. Master, please don't worry. The mercenaries were all defeated. Would you like to see the video record? The destroyer Gollum's left eye is a video camera-like magic tool that vividly records the mercenaries' crimes. The faces could be seen perfectly. I plan to submit this video to the Lord later. The mercenary guild will be dealt with severely. Aside from that, thanks to the destroyer Gollum, the city of Un looked almost exactly the same as before, and the residents were pleased. Dot it was nice that they were happy, but I was surprised that they were planning to build a statue of the destroyer Gollum and me. Please don't do that. As for me, I'd rather not. At least just the destroyer Gillum will do. That won't work. I'm just following master's orders. Stop that. Dot well, I'll politely decline the statue. About ten days after the residents returned to Arn, a victory party was held when the city had finally regained its footing. The venue was the Fountain Square and is the center of the city, with stalls and tents lined up all over the place all of which were crowded with people. Most of the residents seemed to be participating in the event, making it feel like a festival. At the back of the square, a makeshift stage had been set up, and Chief Zitan was giving the opening speech. Thanks to the work of Kakun and Iris Kun, we were able to overcome a major crisis in honor of both of them. Cheers. Cheers. The shouts echoed loudly under the blue sky. Of course. The guest of honor at the victory party was Iris and me. Immediately after the party started, we were surrounded by adventurers, and we were in a frenzy of excitement. You did a great job again this time, bear killer. No, you killed a dragon, so it's the dragon slayer. Drink up, drink up. You are the star of the show today. Hey, Kukai, Kukai, good work. Yes, cheers. The blonde-haired adventurer seemed to have already had a drink and enjoyed herself with a tenfold increase in tension. After that, not only the adventurers but also various other people approached me. Milia, Chief Zitan, the old man of the Golden Bear Restaurant, the foreman of the expansion project, the dwarves in the workshop, etc. As night fell and the victory party was drawing to a close, the merchant Chrome San called out to me. It's been a long time, Kusama. Thank you very much for protecting the city. You have been just as good as I expected, or even better. Um. Well. Thank you very much. But I think I was just lucky. When I look back, I can see that in much of this battle I was aided by coincidence. For example, if Iris hadn't brought up the subject of ancient civilizations, I wouldn't have discovered the underground city. And when the Black Dragon returned, I don't think we could have won without Gram or the Dragon God's shield. Or what if I hadn't gotten the Spirit Ring from Milia? In the end, their Spirit Blessing would not have been activated and both Iris and I would have been burned by the heat rays. When I think about it, I feel like the only reason I could beat the Black Dragon was because I was lucky. I've been thinking about this inwardly, and then Chrome San told me with a serious expression. As I mentioned before, pulling a good card is completely different from using a good card, and those who can use a good card will be able to get a better deal. Dot you could say that fate is on your side. Does that mean that luck is part of my ability? That's a nice phrase. 
Exactly that, Kusama was able to pull off miracles and accomplish great things by using his good cards. That is something to be proud of. Please have confidence in yourself. I'll be looking forward to your future endeavors. After saying that, Chrome San left. I guess luck is one of my strengths. I didn't understand this when I was in modern Japan. But now I understand a little more. Maybe I can admit that to myself a little more. After the victory party, I decided to walk Iris home. It was fun, but it was hard work. Absolutely. Since we were both guests of honor, we were busy talking to people anyway. It would be an extravagant wish to enjoy drinks and meals a little more comfortably. Wouldn't it? Hey, Ku. What's up? If you don't mind, do you want to go out tomorrow? That sounds like a good idea. If I had to give it a name. I would call it the victory celebration party. Neither Iris nor I had any particular plans, so we decided to meet at the Fountain Square at 6 p.m. tomorrow. The place was Silver Stag Restaurant, a small restaurant that Iris had shown me around before. It has a relaxed atmosphere and is a good place to spend a leisurely evening. We arrived at Iris's house when we had reached an agreement. Then, I'll see you later. Good night. Yeah, see you later. Iris saw me off and I left the place. When I returned to my room at the inn, I immediately felt sleepy. I lay down on the bed to take a rest, and then I lost consciousness. Apparently, I was so tired that I finally woke up just before noon the next day. Thanks to a good night's sleep, I felt lightheaded. Dot I'm hungry. I thought I'd go out and get something to eat. I took a bath, prepared myself, and left the room. As I was descending the stairs to the first floor, I came across a tall young man with glasses it was Relic. Kokoko san That guy, Relic, seems awfully agitated. You are- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed the victory party yesterday. Dot speaking of which, I didn't see you there. I was actually going to show up at least, but I had too much to do. When I looked closely, I saw that Relic had dark circles under his eyes. His hair was shaggy, and he's obviously not sleeping well. What's the matter? Um. It's a long story. Can I come to your room for a minute? Apparently, he wanted to keep the conversation private. I took Relic and headed for my room. I led him to the living room on the right as we entered and sat down on the sofa facing each other. Relics began to talk with an unusually serious expression on his face. I'm a professor at the Royal Academy, and I'm personally close to His Majesty the King, you know. I remember that I had heard such a story before. I've been exchanging letters with His Majesty from time to time and he seems to be very interested in this case and has asked me for a detailed report. Did you have to stay up all night to make the report? Yes, that's pretty much it. I've also written down all the details of your activities, so you might get a prize or a medal from the country. I'm looking forward to that. Dot by the way, Relic, can I ask you a question? Yes, what is it? The mention of the country reminds me. What does the lord of this place do? It had been about ten days since the residents had returned to Arn. The lord must have heard about this incident. The Great Flood and the Black Dragon. The city was on the brink of extinction, and shouldn't the residents at least be comforted? Dot when I asked Trelloc about this, he answered. I've been wondering about that too. The lord of this place is named Count Maillard, but he is a serious man, and normally he would have rushed to Un right away. I think I'll go to the Lord's Mansion tomorrow. Is it really that easy to meet him? My parents' house. The Duke of Hubert has a long-standing relationship with Maillard House. At least I don't think they'll turn me down. If I find anything, I'll let you know right away. All right. I'm counting on you. Maybe something is happening to the Lord without my knowledge. Well. Let's just wait for further news. Relic seemed to be going to sleep now and went back to his room. I had a quick lunch at a nearby restaurant and decided to wander around the city until the meeting time. It's so peaceful. The city was enveloped in a calm atmosphere, and the people's expressions were very cheerful. Carriages came and went in the streets, and street vendors shouted cheerfully here and there. Cheers and applause flew every time a street performer performed a trick. It was the same lively scene as on before. If I had been defeated by the Black Dragon, this would have been lost forever. It may be an overstatement to say that I saved everyone's smiles. But I'm sure I can be proud of that as an achievement. As I was walking around the Golden Bear restaurant, thinking about this, I happened to run into Milia. Hello. Kusan. Thank you for your hard work at yesterday's victory celebration. Good work too, Milia. It's unusual to see you here. Are you on your way home from work by any chance? No, I had a town management meeting today, 
so I was just there. Now I'm going to go back to the Adventurers Guild to do my normal work. Phew. It's tough being an assistant branch manager. It's a lot of work, but it's also very rewarding. Milia smiled softly. I'm sure she loves her job at the Adventurers Guild. By the way, Kusan, I have an important announcement to make. What is it? I have decided to return to the guild headquarters in the royal capital in the near future. You mean you're moving there? Dot I'm going to miss you. I'll feel the same way, Kusan. Dot so, let's go to the capital together. Huh? Wait a minute. The story is too abrupt, and I am a bit confused. I think you'll receive an invitation from the Adventurers Guild headquarters tomorrow or the day after. They will also provide you with the money to travel to the capital so don't worry. Invitations? Is it like a party? When I reported Kusan's achievements to the guild headquarters, they decided to give you a big award in the royal capital. Of course, Iris-san was also invited. If your schedule allows, the three of us can go to the royal capital together. It'll be fun. Milia told me that and walked away with a light step. The royal capital, huh? I wonder what kind of place it is. It's the center of the country so I'm sure there are many good restaurants there. I'm looking forward to it. I arrived at the Fountain Square at 5.50 p.m. just before the appointment, and Iris was already there. She was not wearing her usual attire but a white, neat dress. Iris was looking around in a somewhat nervous manner, but when she noticed my presence, she rushed over to me with a bright expression on her face. Ku, take care of me today. Yes, me too. Dot I know it's a little early. But do you want to go to the restaurant now? Yes, let's do that. The Silver Stag restaurant was about a five minute walk from here. It seemed to be empty today, and we were taken to a private room in the back. Iris and I both ordered the restaurant's signature dish, the to beef stew. Just like last time, the beef was thick and tender. The sweetness of the beef stew soaked into our tired bodies, dot delicious. Just like last time, I have no complaints. Come to think of it. It was in this restaurant that I told Ku about ancient civilizations, wasn't it? That brings back memories. With a slight chuckle, I activated the auto mapping. A translucent window appears in front of me, and a map of the area is drawn on it. This skill helped me to find the location of the underground city, didn't it? It's a crazy skill to find the entrance without doing any research. I was really surprised. So we actually went there and found the Orichil Kumgulum. Ku played a big part in that. Too. If I had been alone, I never would have won. As a result of defeating the Orichil Kumgulum, I was registered as a master of the underground city. Thanks to it, I was able to secure shelter for the people of An, and I was able to obtain various items from the vault. If any of them had been missing, the city would have been badly damaged. Aside from the Great Flood, the Black Dragon was a truly formidable foe. Dot honestly, I wouldn't want to fight it again. I agree with you. I only want to deal with that monster once. If I were ever to be challenged to a rematch, I would run away with every fiber of myself. I'm not the kind of character who enjoys battling for my life. But there are more calamities than just the black dragon, aren't there? Dot that's right. The slime in the underground city was saying that. There are several calamities that have destroyed ancient civilizations. It's also possible that the resurrection of the black dragon may be the catalyst for the awakening of the other calamities. Dot when that happens, I'll have the black dragon do its best with, summoning calamity. A. Eh? At this point, Iris had finished her stew and was wiping her mouth with a napkin when she stopped moving for a moment. She froze for a few seconds and then asked me, Ku. Did you get another new skill? I guess I haven't explained it to Iris yet. Sorry. I apologized lightly and then told her about their summoning calamity. It's a skill that was released when the black dragon was defeated. It can be used to summon a defeated calamity by consuming magic power. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and a calamity for a calamity. If another calamity appeared, I would attack it with the black dragon. So you can increase the number of calamities you can summon. Could it be that Ku is the true calamity? You have it all wrong. I'm just an ordinary human being. Foo foo. I'm just kidding. Iris chuckled happily. Whether you are a normal person or not, I know you are not a bad person. While we talked about that, the meal was over, and a glass of sweet wine was served instead of dessert. The wine was made from iced grapes and was very sweet yet very refreshing. It's the kind of wine that you can get into trouble for drinking too much of. I'll be careful. Iris and I continued our conversation with a glass of wine in our hands. Maybe we're trying to make up for not being able to talk at the victory party yesterday. The topic of conversation soon shifted to the future.
about the matter of going to the capital. An award at the Adventurers Guild headquarters. It's getting awfully big, isn't it? That's how much work we did, I guess. I don't really feel it. Yeah, me neither. You never know what's going to happen in life. When I left my homeland five years ago, I didn't expect this to happen. Iris muttered and let out a sigh. She seemed to be looking back at the distant past and her crimson eyes were gazing into the distance. I've told you before, I've always been treated poorly in the land of the dragon folk. Can I ask you the reason? Yes. It is a long story, but I don't mind telling it to you. Then Iris began to talk about her past. I've never told you this, but I had a twin sister named Felice. She also had the Dragon Shrine Maiden. Dot isn't that pretty rare? Dragon Shrine Maiden is a rare skill that appears only once every few hundred years and it would be unthinkable for two people to own it at the same time. Yeah, you're right, Ku. Iris nodded. When the twins were born, not only the parents but also the elders of the dragon folk were surprised. How should they treat the two shrine maidens? It was on the evening of the day they turned six that they came to a conclusion. The elders spoke to Iris, Felice, and their parents. The elders told them that Felice was the rightful priestess. It is only a coincidence that Iris has their dragon shrine maiden because they are twins. They didn't tell me any of the details, but I think it was probably based on our skills. I had, spearmanship, in addition to, dragon shrine maiden, but that girl had, foresight. Foresight, is a skill that allows you to experience future events in your dreams, and although it cannot be activated at will, its accuracy rate is over 90%. In fact, Felice seems to have been able to predict the arrival of natural disasters on numerous occasions. On our sixth birthday, the atmosphere in our house changed completely. My mother and father were obsessed with Felice, and I was completely ignored. That's a terrible story. Didn't any of the other adults say anything? Some people tried to warn them, but it didn't have much effect. Her mother, in particular, was very arrogant, saying, I gave birth to the Shrine Maidens and you're going to oppose me? After about three years of this situation, Felice and Iris were sent to live in a temple in the country. The elders decided that it would be bad for the Shrine Maiden's education to grow up with such parents. The treatment at the temple was not bad. As a backup in case something happened to Felice, I was trained as a Shrine Maiden too. That's when I learned about the law of the dragon folk. I see. That is why Iris knows so much about the past. The next change happened six years later when I was fifteen. Felice died. What happened? The temple was attacked by a horde of monsters. I was in a different part of the temple, so I survived, but she was. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have made you talk about it. No, don't worry about it. It's just one of the stories I wanted you to hear. Iris lowered her eyes for a few seconds and then looked at me again. Felice had a cheerful personality and was loved by many people. Everyone mourned her death. The problem was what happened afterward. With Felice's death, Iris was suddenly treated as an official shrine maiden. However, there was a great deal of opposition from the dragon folk, and she was heavily criticized. I wasn't planning on becoming a shrine maiden at first either. Dot but Felice had left me a will. If something happened to her, she wanted me to fulfill the mission of a shrine maiden instead. There were two missions for a shrine maiden. One was to find the dragon god's shield. The other was to gift the red jade to the transmigrator. In order to fulfill this mission, the Shrine Maiden was required to leave the country at the age of 16. In accordance with this rule, Iris left the land of the dragon folk on her next birthday. However, it is said that she was met with strong criticism and was almost exiled. Originally, a Shrine Maiden's journey is accompanied by three guards. In my case, they were all women, but on the third day, they all disappeared. What a bunch of scumbags. And then they ran away with the money for the trip. So I almost lost my mind at that time. But Iris didn't give up. She decided to take the registration test at the Adventurers Guild that day and raise money by defeating monsters. Fortunately, she possessed, spearmanship, and she has never lacked training since she was a child. She defeated one monster after another and rose to the rank of A-rank adventurer in just three years. How many years does it usually take to become an A-rank adventurer? The average is ten years. The shortest record is two years but I think we could easily break it. No, I don't think so. There are a lot of conditions to be met when moving up the ranks, and there is also a promotion test for C rank and above. With that in mind, I think I should work steadily on a long-term plan. In any case, 
the Iris of the Past continued her journey to fulfill her mission while continuing her activities as an adventurer. In the end, she ended up here in Arn. Thanks to you, I was able to fulfill my mission as a Shrine Maiden, and now I can finally show my face to that girl. Thank you, Ku. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Iris smiled quietly and drank the rest of the wine from her glass. Her face looked radiant. Can I ask you something? What is it? What is Iris going to do now? Now that your mission as a Shrine Maiden is over, are you going back to the land of the dragon folk? It's a complicated question. Iris sighed as if she was troubled. I'll write to them about the mission, but I'd rather not go back. Ku, what about you? Are you going to continue to be an adventurer in Arn? No, I'm going to travel sooner or later. I want to travel around the world. Hey, Iris narrowed her eyes with interest. I wondered if it was because of the alcohol that we were both drinking that her gesture seemed so sexy. If you don't mind. Can you take me with you? I don't mind, but it's almost like sightseeing, it might be boring. Don't worry, it'll be fun. She giggled. Compared to when I first met her, I think she's become a different person and more expressive. Iris has changed too, hasn't she? Is that so? Dot maybe I did. She nodded a few times and then lightly lowered her eyes. Nobody is going to help me. Nobody in this world is on my side. So I'm going to live on my own. Dot that's what I've been thinking until recently. That is an extreme form of distrust for people, but it may be natural considering her circumstances. She's been treated poorly in the land of the dragon folk, and just as she set out on her journey with her sister's dying wish, she was betrayed by the women who guard her. It's really a terrible story. But I'm not that desperate now. Thanks to Ku. Dot me. When I was almost killed by the black spider, you came to save me, didn't you? I was really, really happy and you saved my life again and again in so many ways, not just my life, but my heart. And then, Iris stared straight at me and said, I'm so happy to have met you, I hope we can stay together for the rest of our lives. After paying the bill, we left the Silver Stallion restaurant. I'm in the mood to talk some more tonight, but I'm not sure about Iris. Dot hey, Ku. What's up? About our conversation earlier. I hope you can forget it. Iris was red up to her ears and covered her face with her hands in embarrassment. It's because of the alcohol. I slipped up in the heat of the moment and, well, you know. Don't worry. I was so drunk that I don't remember much either. Really? Yeah. Actually, I remember everything, but I think it's human nature to pretend to forget. What do you want to do after this? Do you want to stop by at least one more place? Yes, let's do that. I'll leave it to Ku. Okay. The two of us walked down a narrow alley under the starry sky. I was on the right, Iris was on the left. Suddenly, the back of my left hand and the back of Iris' right hand touched. Dot. Dot. HTTPS colon slash slash Nike's translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2021 slash 09 slash 28 dot jpg. Iris and I kind of looked at each other and giggled. HTTPS colon slash slash Nike's translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2021 slash 09 slash 22 dot jpg.